A lone moon illuminates the populous city at night. Yawning, the guy walks out of the store, heading towards his dorm. He puts his bag in a special basket and gets on his bike. He rides down the empty street, hoping to get back to the dormitory early, so he can do his homework. Suddenly, a truck comes around the bend at breakneck speed. He's speeding right at the boy who's crossing the road at the same time. The collision was inevitable. A truck hits a guy and throws him off his bike, sprawling him on the road. The young man suffers non-life-threatening injuries and dies on the spot. The driver sitting behind the wheel of the truck informs young Mr. Lin that the mission has been accomplished and asks him to transfer a million dollars to the account. The man is surprised that the young master of the Lin family spent so much money to buy this scum's life. Moving to another car, the killer promptly drives away from the scene. At the same time in the head of the breathless body of the kit an unknown force is instilled. When he opens his eyes, the boy is surprised that he escaped a catastrophic accident. When he looks around, he doesn't understand what this place is and why it hurts so much. The young man's mind tries to realize what this body is and who he is now. But as soon as he thought about it, the memory of the deceased was immediately transferred to him. Memories remind the mind that the man who lived in this body before was the dregs of society. He didn't stand out for anything but his excess weight. Even his test scores were abysmal. He was bullied at school by bullies. These people told the boy that all he knew how to do was eat all day long. On his last day of life, the boy confessed his love to the most beautiful girl of the school. For this, the hooligans beat him severely right in the canteen, at the same time offering the fat man to look in the mirror. However, the mind, which had been instilled in this body, was absolutely unconcerned about what had happened that day. He was dissatisfied with the fact that none of the hooligans who had beaten up the boy had even given his name. The man who got into the schoolboy's body is named Lin Yun. He cultivated the medical arts to the cleaving stage of disaster. He escaped the calamity, but as a result, his consciousness came to this planet and entered this body. The mangled body's consciousness asked to be allowed to use the kai it had accumulated to heal it. At the same moment the guy is lifted into the air and the healing process begins. Uh, no. Wait a minute. The brat's meridians were destroyed. And it's never been treated. He definitely won't live to be 20 years old. At such a young age, he already has so many enemies. In any case, even though the man had taken over the guy's body, he would only need to absorb the kai and improve it. Consciousness promises to avenge the boy, whatever it costs him. It's been 10 minutes. It's been an hour and the guy's still sitting in the road. What the hell is this place? Why is there almost no Kai in the neighborhood? That's right. Now the invader has two choices. He has to drag this useless body to move on with his life. Or at worst, he would have to cultivate all over again. But he was a figure that no one dared to mess with in the almighty cultivation world. A little thing like this wouldn't be able to stop him. The guy, covered in his own blood and with broken bones, gets up off the ground and walks in an unknown direction, approaching the suburban river. The cultivator from the other world is once again convinced that this fat body is just awful. After paying attention to his reflection in the river, he notices that his body is very dirty because of the blood. The water in this body of water is very clean, and so the young man takes off his clothes and decides to take a bath and clean this dirty body. Walking into the river, he washes off the blood, but suddenly he hears the sound of an engine. A car is approaching the river. A beautiful white-haired girl in high heels gets out of the car and then rushes to the river. She was drunk. So when she came to the water body she immediately threw up in it. When the girl is done with it, her heel suddenly slips, and she falls into the river where the boy is resting. As soon as the young man noticed the girl falling into the river, he immediately rushed to rescue her. When she fell into the pond, the beautiful woman immediately sobered up and started calling for help. She can't swim, so she panicked and went underwater. When there was no hope of rescue, the girl was grabbed by the stranger's arm. The boy pulled the drowning woman out from under the water and cradled her against him. The girl was astonished by such actions. She looked at the boy with contempt and slapped his face with her palm and started begging the pervert to let her go. The only thing the young man was thinking about at that moment was how he could calm her down. He instantly changes his disposition towards the panicky girl and comes in behind her. 
He twists the girl's arms about covering her mouth to stop her screaming. Miss, I saved you, and I don't wish you harm. I was just swimming in the river nearby the boy said, looking her in the eyes. But he thought he sounded stupid, considering the position they were in. The guy asks the girl not to scream and talk quietly, after which he releases her mouth. To begin with, he offers her to get ashore. When she agrees, the boy takes the drunken beauty in his arms and carries her to dry land. When she tries to object, the boy says he'd rather carry her himself and then asks her if she wants to swim again. The girl refuses such an offer and quietly thanks her savior, bringing her to the shore. The young man places the girl on the ground, and even though his belongings are lying on the shore, the guy turns around and walks in the other direction. The victim asks the rescuer if he is going to get out of the water. The young man explains that a man and a woman alone in the middle of the night would look strange. Suddenly she will be scared again if the boy comes near. He then offers to let the girl take his clothes so she doesn't catch cold, but asks her to keep her pants. Bell puts on his jacket, somehow completely oblivious to the blood, and asks the guy what about him. The pompous young man replies that a grown man is not afraid of the cold, especially he is not thin, so he will not freeze. The girl, enchanted by such words, standing in her bloodstained jacket, thanks the hero, and then asks his name. One of the great cultivator Ling Yun's main mottos is giving goodness to people without reward, doing good deeds without being boastful about it. The young man, without looking at the girl, asks Miss to leave quickly or she might freeze. Agreeing and a little embarrassed, the girl notices that the boy called her a very strange name. Stepping back to safety, she shouted that her name was not Miss, but Lin Mengen. The guy gets out of the river, puts on bloody pants, and yells back at her that her name doesn't sound bad. Then the young man smells a familiar odor. Leaning over and looking closely at the grass, he notices something and utters. Found it. Grass of the seven rays, a spiritual herb. It grows by absorbing the rays of the sun. When ripe, it can be processed into seven pills of light. This herb will wither in seven days, but the guy won't be able to process it with his current abilities. Fortunately, it won't mature until two months later. However, the boy notices that the seven rays grass is brimming with energy. He makes the decision to swap Kai energy for spiritual energy. It was good that the talent of absorbing all kinds of energy was still with him. After sitting in the lotus posture, the young man proceeds to the second stage after the body hardening stage, the Kai cultivation stage. Yang Jiao Meridian is one of the eight additional meridians of the depression. After finishing the second stage, the guy jumped up and started doing somersaults, as if he were a 70-kilogram athlete, not an overweight schoolboy. He's got the body of a normal human being, and that's two months before the grass matured. He needs to cultivate to the first stage of Kai, before the flowers matured. Only then can he create pills and restore his meridian. Appear in pairs and consist of yin and yang vessels. Both originate at the ankles and run parallel lengthwise. The anger of the deceased was transmitted to the one who was infused. All those who humiliated and hurt him will pay for everything. As he approached the dorm gate, the guy realized that if he went through the main entrance, he would be put on the list. Then he decides to climb over a low fence. The young man sprawls and jumps the fence in one leap, surely landing on the ground. He grinned and chuckled, pleased at how cool he was. The excited kid ran to the entrance of the dormitory. The boy walked to the entrance of his room 305, but the door was closed. Then the guy started banging inside with all his might, asking for the door to be opened. The man living inside is about to walk up and open the door. His name is Hanlin. The boy is stopped by the other roommates. Tangan, the head of the room, threatens the young man that if he opens the door, he will beat him every day like Lin Yun. Yuan Long asks Hanlin why he is so worried about Lin Yun. He ran after Shan after his evening classes. He deserved it, he shouldn't have come back to the dorm so late. Then Meng, lying on the lower bed, explained that he was pissed off that the school flower wasn't looking at him and pissing his underpants at the mere sight of him. Tangan still remembers the main character trying to woo the school's main beauty. He wants to make him suffer. The dormitory began to erupt with disgruntled screams from neighbors who were awakened by loud banging. The head of the room felt superior when the fat man stopped knocking on the door, thinking the man had given up. 
At the same second, the door rattles open, the guy standing on the other side just kicked it open, breaking the lock, and then with fury in his eyes, he told him to give him the man who had closed the door. Hanlon walked up behind him and calling the guy Lin Yun, asked the guy why he was late. Lin Yun replied that everything was fine, and he just went to the river to bathe. The other roommates began to mock Yoon, did he really go to the river to play chop suey, on the double bass? Out of anger, Yoon shrieked that this was utter nonsense, and playing chop suey, was much better on the violin, then asked again who had closed the door. Tangan was surprised at the audacity of the object of bullying, and admitted that he was the one who locked the door. Before he could think of anything, the head of the room felt a strong hand on his neck. Lin Yun grabbed his opponent, and in one move, he fell the bastard to the ground and sat on his chest. Then, standing up, he swung his leg and kicked his assailant in the stomach with such force that blood spurted from his mouth. While the poor guy was calling for help, Yun put his foot to his face, threatening to step on his muzzle with a sinister smirk. Hamlin, shouting, warns his friend of the danger. At the same moment, one of Tangan's comrades punches Ling Yun in the back with all his might. He breaks his hand on the guy's back. When the young man turns on him, he asks his attacker if he wants to scratch his back. After stretching his fists, Yun asked his opponent how he was going to fight with such negligible strength. Looking at the fatty with horror, in the last seconds of his life, his opponent tried to understand where Lin Yun had gotten such tremendous strength from. A crowd of people immediately gathered around room 305, the noise kept them all awake, and tomorrow was the exam, when they entered the room, they saw Tangan lying on the floor, crying out for help from his comrades, he shouted that if they did not subdue the fat man now, they would be pathetic weaklings, Ling Yun explains to the people standing at the doorstep, that they have been bullying him for the past two years, and he has tolerated it, but now they've crossed the line and decided to lock the room so the boy can't come in, if the boy doesn't resist, the next time will be even worse, when the guy with a stern look asked those standing behind him what they thought about it, all those who came to watch agreed with him and decided to disperse to their rooms, asking them to finish quickly. As the door closed, Lin Yun laughed at the bunch of cowards watching the fun, then, looking again at the head of the room lying down, he asks the man if it's time to settle the score. Tangan begins to make nice with the young man, calling him Brother Lin. He admits that it was his fault and offers to forget the whole thing. Lin Yun isn't going to hit him this time, just asking if he realized his mistakes. With a relieved sigh, the head of the room recognizes that Yun is a great person who doesn't need to care about such small things. The guy orders the guy lying on the floor not to suck up, let bygones be bygones. But he was not the kind of weakling to be so easily taken advantage of. The young man made a condition that they would live under the same roof, and if they did not annoy him, he would stay away from them. And if anyone chooses to betray him, he will give an answer. Then, still holding his foot against Tangan's neck, the young man turns back and asks the guy on the top shelf if he heard everything. Yes, heard that, Brother Lin. The guy from the upper tier replied with a huff, taking out a towel from under his bed. Lin Yun walked to the front door and turned around and asked his housemates to hurry up and fix the door, otherwise no one would sleep tonight. All right, brother Lin, I'll fix it right now so as not to delay your sleep. One of them obediently replied, those stinking brats wouldn't dare bother him anymore. Now the guy can take the next step with peace of mind. He decides to say goodbye to that fat body tomorrow. Picking the chapter up off the floor, Hanlon reminds the victim that they are classmates and roommates. He suggests they stop fooling around and get along with each other. The top shelf guy replies that with that evil look of Lin Yun's, no one would dare to tease him anymore. Tangan, on the other hand, won't let Yoon get away with it. He wants to take revenge on the young man. The very next day, there were already rumors all over the school that Lin Yun from the sixth grade had beaten up all the guys in the dormitory yesterday. Of course most people didn't believe this information because this fat guy is a total loser. There were also rumors that Lin Yun had stalked Shan Chan last night and was later apprehended undressed. No one knows where they got that information from. No one could believe that the school's first beauty had been defiled by that pig. At the same time, a girl approached the gossipers. This surprised them greatly, but also frightened them. This girl was Shan Chan, 
the first beauty of the school. But most people openly called her a goddess. When the goddess sat down at her desk, her roommate, Lin, asked if she had really been with Lin Yun last night. The girl angrily replied that it was all just gossip, she hadn't even seen the idiot last night. Then a classmate told her that the whole school thought it was true. The girl jumped up from the table and angrily shouted that she would nail this Ling Yun. However, Shan Shan is not the only one who is ready to finish the guy off. Tengen, who's sitting behind him, is also up to something. Jumping up from her desk, the goddess went to find out where that fat pig was prancing around during class. When Lin tries to ask her friend where she was going, Shan Shan stops abruptly as if realizing something. She realized that if she went to look for Ling Yun, the rumors would only be confirmed, and then it would be pointless to prove anything. The girl decides to just stay cold to Ling Yun. In that case, even the stupid will realize that they have nothing with each other. Then Lin explains to her relaxed friend that the only one spreading rumors must be Lin Yang. Thus she assumes the guy is trying to get Shan Shan's attention. The friend replies to her classmate that this guy is not even worthy of her attention. She asks her friend to stop gossiping and decides to start doing her homework. At the same time, Tangan, who was sitting behind him, repeated the same phrase over and over again. Ling Yun, it's not over yet. An incomprehensible noise begins to rise in the hallway. People wonder why this fatty is running around with bags of sand. What is he trying to do? Students throughout the school mock him. What is he trying to do? Does the pig want to become a bull? Has the pig gone mad? For his part, Yun doesn't pay attention to how the others are looking at him. Right now, he's concerned with something else entirely. This body is so weak. Even a run like this is tiring. And how should he cultivate? The girls around here don't know what's going on. Is this his way of trying to lose weight? But does the way he walks qualify as running? From the school window, a girl with pink hair watches a boy running with a 25-pound bag of sand on his back. She is very proud of her brother. His sister is approached by a young couple, laughing along the way at the fact that the useless pig is making a fool of himself again. The girl's name is Mena. She's the third prettiest girl in the school. The guy next to her is called Jun Yang. He is the son of one of the four richest families. Then the girl with pink hair angrily cries out that her brother is not a useless pig. Yun's sister's name is Lin Yu. She is the smartest student in the school. Mena replies to the girl that she didn't know that the fat guy was her brother too. She then asks her boyfriend if he knows about it. However, he does not respond. The only thing Jun Yang is thinking about right now is how beautiful Lin Ju is when she's angry. In turn, Lin Ju warns Mina that she won't let her get away with saying anything bad about her brother again. The blue-haired girl asked Lin Ju if her brother was beaten up every day. He also studies the worst, doesn't he? If such a person is not useful, then what kind of person is he? Jun Yang grabs his girlfriend's hand and says she should stop. A guy walks up to a girl with pink hair and asks her not to get mad. After all, Mena is not the kind of person who knows how to express herself properly. His girlfriend doesn't like this turn of events. She indignantly asks the guy what he is saying and tries to remind him who his girlfriend is. Jun Yang doesn't say it out loud, but he's fed up with Mina. As soon as he conquers Lin Ju, he will immediately break off his relationship with his girlfriend. A cheer can be heard in the hallway. Tanman's taking bets again. The show is about to start. The people in the crowd bet on the number of laps Lin Yun can run. Tired of their arguments, Jun Yang asks them to stop fighting and offers to go watch. Mina finds another reason to bully Lin Yu's brother in this situation. The whole school knows that her brother is useless trash. And since her sister has a lot of faith in him, the blue-haired girl offers her a bet. Lin Yu agrees. As they pass by, the two friends also see what's going on outside. Lin Yun doesn't look like himself today. Lin notices that Tanmin is gambling again. No sooner does she tell Shan Shan about it than a strange force pulls her with it. The goddess snapped out of her seat, forgetting to let go of her friend. They ran together to see what was going on. This is Tanmin. He's the little gambling god of this school. And part-time one of the big four bullies, smirking. He asked what he owed to the presence of all three campus beauties and Lin at his little gambling event. That's right. Sister Lin Yuna is the school's second beauty. 
Without answering anything, Mena immediately places a bet. She bets $2,000 that this loser will only run a lap at best. Tanman accepted her bet, then asked the others. Jun Yang bet $5,000 that Lin Yun would run four laps. In turn, Shan Chan responded with $1,000 that the guy would run between five and ten laps. Everyone sitting in the class was greatly surprised by such a statement. After all, even young master Jun Yang is a betting expert in horse racing betting that the fatty will run four laps. Why are the goddess and Jun Yang so confident in him? An excited Lin approaches her friend and explains to her that the sandbag weighs about 25 kilograms, even an ordinary person would have a hard time. Shan Chan explains to her that she has calculated everything. The third beauty of the school is very unhappy that Jun Yang doesn't support her. It's like getting slapped in front of everyone. Then she approaches the last person who hasn't bid yet. The blue-haired woman asks Lin Ju how high her expectations are for her useless brother. The girl bets 500 yuan on Lin Yun, running more than 10 laps. Is she crazy? Mine found it amusing to see what Lin Yu really thought they were in some fantasy novel. Then my sister simply suggests we wait a bit and see what happens next. Bets have been placed. It was decided to go to the field. What the result will be, everyone will see very soon. While they were discussing all of this, Ling Yun was already at his last breath. He was very tired to train the body. One must temper the heart. However, compared to what he had gone through in the cultivation world, this physical fatigue was only a drop in the ocean. In that time, the guy had already managed to run two laps. Jia is a student at a sports school, lighting a cigarette. He explains to his friend that it looks like Lin Yun has already reached his limit. After gathering his strength, Yun decides to show everyone what he can do. The students around were greatly surprised that even after walking two laps with such a heavy burden, panting, the guy was able to speed up. His footsteps grew larger. Had he not used all his strength? No, replied the unperturbed Jia, smoking a cigarette. This young man is already at his limit. As it was, the guy couldn't keep up, stumbles and falls. On his knees, he spits up blood. Since Jia is an athlete, he understands what this sign might indicate. Shouting that the foolish boy might die if he continues, he rushes to help him. However, taking him by the shoulder, he is stopped by a friend. He informs Jia that something is wrong. His aura had finally activated. Getting up and throwing the bag behind his back, Yun tore off at a speed, as if he had been lounging on the beach all this time, not running around with a heavy bag. After spitting out the accumulated blood, the spiritual power of the seven luminaries' grass finally spilled into his veins. Now this is getting interesting. Jia stands there with her eyes bulging at this strange young man. One of the detractors who bet on Lin Yun running four laps decides to stop him with his own hands no matter what. Someone in the crowd asks a fat man to run. If he completes the fifth lap, that person will become rich. Hearing this, the guy realizes that five laps won't be enough. It's not his style. It's a bad place with no spiritual energy. So the only way to break the shackles of the body is through extreme exercise. When this body reaches its limit, it will be able to stimulate the spiritual power of the seven luminaries' grass and gain a whole new level of strength. And once he exhausts the energy of this herb in his body, he will continue to go to the river to absorb spiritual power. Day by day he will get rid of that fat, and then he will reach peak body hardening. Ling Yun suddenly became so strong. No one understands why he's getting faster every second. Some people are already resigned to losing money. Looking at the guy with surprise, Jia informs her blue-haired friend that this Ling Yun is a sports genius. Suddenly, a man appears on the field, not far from the running young man. He pounces on the fat man, asking the man if he's tired of running. Before the attacker could blink, Yun was no longer in front of him. Lin Yun flees the scene, leaving the victim lying on the treadmill. The girls watching were fascinated by how cool Lin Yun was. The guys, on the other hand, we're laughing at Li Lei's screw-up. The unsurprised Jia already just stared blankly at everything that was happening. The moment Li Lei tried to push the guy, Yun sped up and dodged. There's definitely something wrong with him. However, Li Lei is not in the habit of giving up. He is determined to thwart Ling Yun, shouting in the guy's wake that he will take revenge on him for embarrassing him in front of everyone. Li Lei tries to catch up with the young man. 
Tanman is very unhappy that Li Lei is trying to interfere in the betting. He doesn't put him in anything at all. The blue-haired guy asks Jia not to stop him. He wants to beat the crap out of that bastard. The athlete explains to a friend that Li Lei is the younger Xie Junyang. It's best not to mess with him. Tanman replies that he doesn't care. He will kill anyone who wants to interfere in the betting. However, it is no longer possible to stop him. Li Lei is already literally stepping on Lin Yun's toes. Looking around, the young man spots the pursuer. Concentrating his spiritual power again, he places both hands on the sandbag. Li Lei pushes himself off the ground and in a leap tries to pounce on Lin Yun in order to bring him to the ground with all his weight. But it was exactly what Yun had been waiting for. He grabbed the bag by the strap with both hands and without slowing down his running pace, smashed his opponent's face in a U-turn. Li Lei instantly loses consciousness and falls to the ground, rolling his face on the treadmill for a few meters. What a piece of trash you are. You should be ashamed of yourself, the guy said, hanging the bag behind his back without stopping. Tanman and Jia no longer have words to describe what is happening. They are no longer surprised by whatever happens next. An hour later, after the bell rings from class, everyone runs up to see how the fat man is doing. Even after all this time, the guy was still running with the bag behind his back. After learning that the boy was already running his 11th lap, the betting enthusiast also lit a cigarette to pair with Jia. A cheerful sister came down to the tired brother. Considering how much he had run, it appeared that only Linju had won the bet. 11 laps, was he even human? Or did he just want to play chop suey on the violin in such an elaborate way? No, he wanted to take his body outside in this way. And apparently, he succeeded. Lin Yun appeared before everyone in a different image. Some praised him, calling him a real beast. Some people wanted to become his fans. Gaping, Yun thought about what kind of ignorant people were gathered here. To him, this was just a walk. The guy makes the decision to sit down and rest a bit for now, and then go and take a shower. Running up to her brother, Lin Ju asks if he's okay. When he looks at her, the young man immediately realizes that it's probably his little sister. Taking a seat next to her brother, the pink-haired girl pointed to the stain on his t-shirt and asked where the blood was coming from and if he was hurt. However, the guy took his time answering, that girl, that's an innate spiritual body. In the cultivation world, an innate spiritual body is extremely rare. The speed of refinement of such people is a hundred times faster than others. Leaning over to his sister, the guy starts sniffing her. How great, the innate spiritual body is too nice. Such a discovery caused the young man to fall out of reality for a while. The perplexed sister asks her brother what he's doing. It is at this moment that Yoon comes back to reality from his reverie. Realizing what his enjoyment of this scent looks like, the boy jumps away from his sister. Hoping that Lin Ju won't mistake him for a pervert, he explains to the girl that she looked very sad. The charmed sister sincerely thanks the guy for trying to comfort her. She found herself very happy to see her brother do this. It meant that he was changing. Her mom picked up her brother at the temple entrance as a baby. The girl has known since childhood that they are not blood relatives, but even though they weren't siblings, their relationship was better than that of real siblings. Until one incident. During one of the fights, the guy finds out they're not siblings. He's just a foundling her mom picked up on the road. Since then, the brother became quiet and uncommunicative. He began to avoid and ignore his sister. In tears, Linju pounced on Yoon, saying that she thought she would lose him forever. After hugging his sister, Lin Yun promises that this will never happen, and he will always be by her side. Wiping away her tears, the guy says he's going to go wash up, and afterward, he'll take his sister out for a hearty dinner. When the two of them walked into the cafeteria on the second floor, the sister told her brother that she shouldn't have come to a place like that. Reminding the girl that he had promised to treat her to a delicious meal, Lin Yun asked her to look at the menu and order what she liked. Brother must be really hungry after his run. I hope he eats well Linju thought as she prepared to write down the order on a piece of paper. But looking at the menu, the girl was literally stunned. Why is it so expensive? This is pure robbery. Yoon, on the other hand, had a bigger problem. He invited his sister to have dinner at an expensive cafeteria. But he only had 20 yuan in his pocket. 
The only option to get out of this situation is to borrow money from his unsuspecting sister, still even so, the one who paid for the meal would be him. Without betraying his excitement, the young man makes a move. He asks his sister if she has any money with her. He asks his sister if she has enough to spend. Looking at her brother fearfully, she remembers that she put all the money on Tanman's bets. However, she can't tell him about it, as he will get angry. The sister lies to the guy that there is enough for everyday expenses, but today she lent all the money to her roommate. She got very lucky with her brother, who decided to buy her a treat. Okay, in that case, there is nothing to do but sneak out after they eat. Not having money is a hassle, but how do you make money in this world? Tanman walks into the cafeteria, who was just looking for Lin Yu. Noticing him and realizing what his being here could lead to, Lin Yu yelled at him that she was having dinner with her brother and asked him not to disturb them. However, Tanman didn't want to give up. Taking Yun by the shoulder, he pulled aside a nearby chair and sat on it. He then said that he hadn't eaten in a while either, asking for permission to join them. Looking into the blue-haired guy's eyes, Ling Yun angrily said to stand up. After all, his sister was not happy about his presence. He ordered the intruder to get out of here, or else he would not be ceremonious. Looking at Yun, Tanman realized that the rumors about this young man getting bolder were true. After realizing that it wasn't their fate to chat, the blue-haired guy explained that he was really only here to give Lin Yu the money, shouting out that she didn't know what he was talking about. The sister also asked the guy to get out of here. Sincerely not understanding what's going on here, Tanman reminds the girl that she won 10,500 yuan in the bet. Then Yun's strong hand took the blue-haired boy with a firm grip. Surprised by this prank, Tanman had already decided that the kid was going to fight him. However, contrary to everyone's expectations, Ling Yun pinned Tanman down and asked him what he was saying about money. The blue-haired guy narrated that he was taking bets on how much Yun could run, and Lin Ju alone had bet 500 yuan on him surviving more than 10 laps. The odds exceeded a little over 20. When Lin Ju opens her mouth to apologize to her brother, he interrupts her and accuses her sister of not believing in him. Why did she only bet 500 yuan? Next time you take a bet like this, go all in, we'll wrap this. I don't know what his name is guy. Ling Yun hugged Tanman even harder with naive joy. The blue-haired guy is very annoyed by this attitude towards him. Stop pretending he's not here. And his name is Tanman. He's one of the four bullies of King Shui Middle School. Why does that guy pretend he doesn't know him? A blonde athletic guy gets a phone call from someone on the phone informing him that his record has been broken by someone at their school. The man doesn't realize which of his records we're talking about. After all, he has set countless of them. The voice on the phone reports the record for running with a load that he set. When he was a member of Shenmi's squad, he was also beaten by a fat man from the caller's class, who used to be out of breath after two steps. The guy clarifies with the girl. Does she mean to say that this young man has pushed himself to the limit of his physical capabilities? Shan Shan confirms it. She saw it with her own eyes. The guy explained that those who push themselves beyond their limits begin to evolve at a rapid pace and asked the girl to be more careful. When the girl was still talking, Lin came up to her and asked her to stop talking and then called her friend to eat lunch on the second floor because she was already starving. When his friends went to eat in the cafeteria on the second floor, a very strange picture appeared in front of him. Lin Yun is extorting money from one of the school's four bullies while sitting in an expensive establishment. The angry Shan Shan snapped out of her seat and headed towards the guys. When the goddess approached the two from behind, they were a little surprised to see each other. The usual trip to the cafeteria with my sister suddenly turned into a round table dinner together. It's awkward. Ling Yun picked up the chopsticks and began to put meat from his plate into his sister's plate. Everyone at the table was thinking about something different and reacting to this situation in their own way too. Shan Chan glared intimidatingly at Tanman, who was trying his best to figure out what was wrong with her. He asks the school's first bell what's wrong with her. Then the goddess holds out the very thousand dollars she lost on his bets. With a sigh of relief Tanman asks the girl to talk about such things in advance, or his heart won't be able to take it next time. As soon as the blue-haired guy reaches out his hand to take the money he's earned, that money mystically disappears from the table. 
Turning his head to the left, Tanman noticed Yun already sitting down and counting his newly earned money. Under the piercing gazes of the girls sitting behind him, the blue haired guy asks Ling Yun what he's doing. Yun replies that Tanman has already given all the money to his sister. But what about the ones due to him? Clearly annoyed by this behavior, Tanman asks the young man what he should pay him for. Ling Yun explains that since the stakes involved him and he had to run so much, the blue haired guy should share with him for his efforts. Tanman thinks to himself that this is utter shamelessness, and he didn't force Yun to run. But the young man interrupts his thoughts by putting his hand on his shoulder and adding that if he doesn't like it, he can go to the sports field and run 11 laps with a bag on his back. Then Lin Yun would give him his money back without objection. Stunned by such stupid logic, Tanman looks on as Yoon eats his lunch. At the same time, an equally important issue was raised on the female side. Lin noticed that since Shan Chan had sat here, Lin Yun hadn't looked at her once. Suddenly the goddess jumped up from the table and shrieked and asked the young man why he was pretending like she wasn't here. The moment Yun asked Shan Chan who he was, poor Tangman was caught in the crossfire. Lin Yun asks Tanman with a startled look if it's his girlfriend. The guy replies that it's not. A blue-haired boy tells his neighbor that this is Shan Chan, the daughter of the cow family, the most beautiful girl of King Shui Middle School. He asks the boy if they are in the same class. The boy replies that he doesn't know, as he is not interested. The goddess doesn't understand why Lin Yun, after standing out once, has completely lost his fear. The girl tries to push Yoon's manhood and suggests that he come to the East Alley tomorrow night. She's going to make him regret what he said today. On this day, the Cao family's daughter looked like she was ready to explode. Lin Jiu is starting to worry about her brother. Shan Chan is very angry and going to that place tomorrow night is very dangerous. Putting his hand on his sister's shoulder, the boy told her not to worry. After all, he is not going to go anywhere. He offers the girl something to eat and goes back to class. Dumbfounded by what he heard, Tanman was surprised that Ling Yun wanted to return to class. Did he really want to catch up on the curriculum? At the same time, Lin tries to calm Shan Shan down. In turn, the goddess yells at her friend, saying she can't just calm down. Who does that bastard think he is? He's not interested, you see. In anger, the school's first beauty notices that her friend is looking at her strangely. Lin asks Shan Shan why she's so obsessed with this Ling Yun. Does she have plans for this guy? Embarrassed by her friend's words, the girl replies that it's all nonsense, and she hates Yun more than anything. She said, I hate it. And where does hate come from without love? A classmate passing by Ling Yun's desk noticed the guy sitting at his history textbook and asked him in surprise what he was doing here. The young man explained that he had come to class, but in the meantime he was sitting and reading a book. The surprised classmate thought that Yun had come here just to show off. Suddenly the boy notices something interesting in a history book. A teacher enters the classroom with a bottle of water in hand. Once inside, he announces to the class that the lesson has begun. Everyone immediately stood up, greeting the teacher with such a gesture. Lin Yun is the only one who didn't get up. His roommate is trying to bring him to his senses, but he's reading something in his textbook. Yun is so engrossed in absorbing the information that even when a classmate grabs his arm, the young man doesn't stop reading. During the Qin Dynasty period of antiquity, there were hundreds of schools of thought, such as Taoism, Lao Tzu and so on. Tao gives birth to one, one gives birth to two, two gives birth to three, and from three, all beings are born, heaven follows Tao, Tao follows nature. This is clearly the highest method of spiritual practice. The canon of the way and virtue is a scripture for cultivation. A fellow decides to study this book properly, except that the density of spiritual energy in this cursed place is so low that such scriptures are almost useless. No, it's not like that. Even in the cultivation world, most mortals don't know about the existence of cultivators. Just because you can't see them doesn't mean they don't exist. He stood out too much lately and could be targeted again by the people who ruined his meridians. He needs to speed up his training. At this moment, the angry teacher shouted Lin Yun's name, setting the water bottle on the table with a clatter. The teacher tells the guy to leave the class because he jumps up from his seat. Everyone has a state exam coming up and he's disrupting the class. Teacher Wu has always disliked Ling Yun, 
he just couldn't let a chance like this go. Oh, and the guy is good too. Is it really possible to put himself in the crosshairs like this? Did he really dumb himself down after running around? Then the young man asked the teacher what exactly he had done wrong and was interfering with him. He sits when the students stand up and stands when everyone is seated. What is this if not interference in the conduct of the lesson? The boy apologizes to teacher W, explaining his behavior by saying that he was reading, so he didn't pick up on the general rhythm. With a smirk on his face, the teacher called this excuse silly and asked the student to tell him what he could remember from the reading. The young man replied that he had memorized everything from the ancient period to the Qin era to the hundreds of schools of thought. Chan Chan, who turned to look at him, didn't realize what the hell he was talking about. This is not the time to brag at all. Teacher Wu would definitely not let him go now. Got it all memorized. Good, just great. Then today we'll have a review of the contents of the first volume. Teacher Wu said with a sinister smile. Surprised by this reaction, Lin Yun looked at the teacher with a cringe. Would he be paid to give a lesson by himself? Looking at his student with a smirk, teacher Wu was ready for the upcoming performance. He was curious to see how he would retell the story from beginning to end. Well, the boy said thoughtfully, looking down at the floor. The bullies sharing a room with Lin Yun are teasing the guy. They're really looking forward to it too. While the young man is thinking about where to start. The whole class starts cheering him on, as if mocking him. Then the boy puts his hand on the back of his head and confesses to the teacher that he won't be able to tell the whole story. There isn't enough time, because it's a lot of content, and one or two hours won't be enough time to recount it. This statement made the teacher laugh so much that he spit out the water. The satisfied teacher, wiping his mouth with a handkerchief, reminded the boy that they would have two more history classes after lunch so there would be plenty of time. Walking up to the student, he complimented that it would be uncomfortable for others to listen to the guy from behind the desk. The teacher asked Yoon to stand at the blackboard. Cunning teacher Wu has thought of everything. No one will be able to tell Ling Yun while he's at the blackboard. When Shan Shan gets up from her desk and tries to call out teacher Wu, Ling Yun grabs her arm and sits her back down asking her what she's doing. The girl explains that she's trying to stop Ling Yun before he embarrasses himself. The friend reminds the goddess how she herself recently said she hates him. Now all of a sudden you feel sorry for him. No way. It's just that as the head of the class, she can't sit back and watch everyone waste precious time just to teach Yun a lesson. As he passes the girl, the guy puts his hand on her shoulder and tells her not to worry about him. Although Lin doesn't think he can't retell it either, but somehow her sixth sense tells her that he'll be able to pull it off. When he came to the blackboard, he took a mug of water and drank a little from it to wet his throat. Teacher Wu laughed quietly at this. After coughing a bit, Lin Yun looked at the class and said, So, Chapter 1. 40 minutes later. Chapter 6. Not for nothing did the guy wet his throat before he started. After all, he'd been talking non-stop for a full 40 minutes now. As he speaks non-stop, the class sits in absolute silence. Surprised by this turn of events, Shan Shan notices that not only has he really learned everything by heart, but he's telling it word for word from the textbook. While the student conducts the lesson for him, the teacher removes the glasses, wipes them with a cloth, then puts them back on. Then he picks up a microphone where did he get a microphone from, anyway. He's very surprised that Ling Yun has such a basic memory. When the bell rings, teacher Wu immediately takes the guy by the hand and leads him into his office, asking him to talk about something. Before he is led away from the classroom, upon turning around, the guy notices that Chan Chan is actually in the same class as him. As soon as the two came out, the class immediately started a heated discussion. This can't be happening. It's impossible. What's impossible? Someone had calculated the number of pi to 6,000 decimal places, but Ling Yun retold half of the book without missing a word, and anyway, why compare scientists to the penultimate in the class? As cool as it was, the state exam wasn't limited to history alone. Maybe all he did for the last three years was memorize that book. Yeah. He must have prepared in advance. Only his desk neighbor noticed that Yun really hadn't prepared in the slightest and had only started reading this book before class started. Teacher Wu rattled and placed a huge stack of various documents and papers on the teacher's desk. 
The teacher explains to the boy that of course memorizing moments in history is important, but it is much more important to understand them. Teacher Wu has personally prepared these repetition materials and past exam versions. He advises the young boy to focus on them before the exam. The boy agrees. This was immediately followed by a warm teacher's embrace. The teacher used to think that the young man had no desire to learn, which was why he was so often angry with him. Now that he had come to his senses and had such talent, teacher Wu would never abandon him. The man promises Yoon to assign a couple of people to help the boy with his lessons. Now the boy can come to teacher Wu himself if he doesn't understand something. Lin Yun thanks the teacher for his help and looks at the material and says that it will take him all night to get through it. The only thing teacher Wu regrets is that he found out too late. Given Li Yun's grades, even if he worked hard, he would only pass three subjects at most. Everyone in the class has already changed the subject and is discussing who is going to go where to party after class. The moment Lin Yun walks into the classroom with a pile of papers in his hands, all discussion is immediately silenced. Walking over to his desk and putting his papers on it, the boy looked at his roommate. The classmate told the young man that he was amazing, straight up shocking teacher W. He asked Yoon why the teacher had called him to his desk. The satisfied genius boasted that his teacher had praised him and given him a bunch of material to prepare. Tonight he would have to stay up all night to study them all. In the next class, geography, the teacher didn't stress Lin Yun in any way. But the boy noticed that every now and then someone would turn around and look at him. He realized that they didn't expect to see the same thing from him as they did in history class. But unfortunately, their wishes were not destined to come true. In the evening, when leaving school, his roommate suggests that Ling Yun go to the dormitory together. But the boy replies that he is going to stay and study. History helps him understand how the world has developed. And geography helps him understand the structure of the world its natural features and its people. But the Great Wall of China, whose head looks toward the East China Sea, and whose tail looks toward Kunlun, any way you look at it, it must be the place of dragon veins, the terracotta statues of warriors and warhorses in Qin Shai Huang's tombs, obviously yin warriors, were used to cultivate the Tao of longevity. If you combine all this with the Chinese legends of Fu Zai, the fire deity Zhuzong and the water god Gong Gong. Now the guy was 100% sure that there must be cultivators in this world. When the time came, he would explore these places himself, and I'm sure he would find something. In the past, he could visit these places in an instant. But right now, he hasn't even reached the first level of body hardening, so he can't even protect himself. Still sitting on the front desk, Lin noticed that Yun really didn't miss any class today. It's not clear what this is about, but it's surprising. Shan Chan replies that it's not clear to her what's on this guy's mind. Then the friend gets up from her desk and goes to the guy to ask him everything. Lin walks up to him and leans against his desk, asking him to remember to invite her to dinner tonight. The young man looks at the girl with confusion and asks her why. Lin explains that she has been asked to help Yoon with his history homework, as she is the representative of the history class. In return, she gets a treat. The young man really has a lot of questions piling up, and so he agrees to treat the girl to dinner. When Lin asks if the boy is okay with her taking the headman, Shan Chan, with her, Lin Yun replies that he is. An offended Lin asks him why, and the guy explains that the goddess has such a temper, and plus he's too troublesome. Good thing Shan Chan didn't hear that, otherwise she would have been furious. A sly friend notices an open page in Lin Yun's book and decides to take advantage of it. Pointing to the book, she says that Shan Chan has been to these places before. Perhaps she can tell something interesting about them, so it's best to consult about them directly with her. Since Yun wants to learn more about the Chinese wall, he lets him take Shan Shan with him. The goddess herself was very curious about what they were talking about for so long. She would have loved to join them, but her pride didn't allow it. After finishing talking to the guy, Lin calls Yuan Yuan restaurant to book a private room. While the girl was talking, at the entrance to the classroom, she accidentally bumped into a tall guy standing on the aisle. There were two tall guys standing at the entrance of the classroom. One of them had heard that Chan Chan was going to go to the restaurant. He wondered to Lin why they hadn't informed him. 
The goddess jumps up from her seat and asks Junfa what he forgot in their class again. She asks the boy to get out of here. This is Junfa, number one among the four hooligans of King Shuihai. His father is the head of a real estate company. He runs a muck at school, and no one dares to do anything about it. Walking into the classroom, Junfa decided to look around a bit, and then found something to his liking. It looks like the bully has been targeting Ling Yun from the beginning. What should we do? Walking up to the goddess, Junfa asked her not to worry, he would go to the restaurant with her when he finished here. Calling Yun a dumb pig, the bully pounded his palm on the table. He explained that he'd heard the kid had distinguished himself at school today. Still engrossed in his book, Ling Yun pays no attention to his aggressor. When, shrieking in anger, Junfa orders the young man to raise his pig head, the boy still responds. He just had a few questions for Junfa. Outraged by this attitude, the bully grabs Yun by his shirt. Junfa warns him that after the question, he won't leave a mark on the guy. Let Chan Chan see how good he is. Ling Yun agrees to these terms. He asks the bully how many times he has beaten him in the last three years. And how much money did he take from him? Laughing, Junfa replies that he can't even remember how many times he's beaten him. He always takes on Yun as soon as his hands start to itch. As for money, he robbed the guy a couple times, took probably three or four thousand yuan. You're a beggar, you couldn't have more. Pointing his finger at Ling Yun, the bully laughed, but he heard that his sister had won 10,000 from Tangmen today. Also the guy had embezzled the thousand that Chan Chan had brought. Junfa hopes that Yun will be a smart boy and hand everything over to him himself, otherwise he will take the money himself, when the young man can no longer move. Shan Shan jumps up from his desk and yells at the bully to stop his rampage. He's no different from a mugger. Ling Yun in turn asks the goddess to stop worrying about him. Continuing to talk to the bully, the guy said that he understood him, and then asked one last question. How much money does Junf have with him now? The bully replies that he has enough money. What does Yun care how much he has, if he's going to take his money anyway? Or is this pig going to hold out until the end? The guy sighs with relief. Opponent doesn't understand what it is that has Yun so relieved. Pulling back his chair and bailiff, Lin Yun explains that he was afraid if the bully didn't have money, he wouldn't be able to pay the bill. Medical bill. After saying that, the guy jumps up and instantly gets in front of Junfa and delivers a right hook to the bully's face, breaking the bully's nose. Then, before he falls to the floor, Yun grabs him by the tie and pulls him up to him. He strikes again. This time with a left hand to his opponent's stomach. The attack was so powerful that Junfa flew across the classroom, imprinting himself into the blackboard. While everyone is standing there, stunned by what they see, the bully who crashed into the wall starts vomiting blood. A mangled Junfa manages to stay on his feet with these injuries. He yells for Hiji, one of his suck-ups, to get his ass over here and help him. Bravely, he pointed his finger at Ling Yun with confidence and shouted out that he didn't dare to hit his boss, and he would deal with him. He was actually trembling and said this in a whisper. Angry Junfa shouted at his subordinate to stop messing around and come over to help him. However, the first to approach him is Lin Yun. When the bully asks the guy what he wants, the young man asks his opponent to calm down. Didn't he want his friend to come over and help him? The noble Lin Yun decided to help someone in need. He kicked his opponent in the solar plexus sending him to his ward with a quick delivery. After that punch, the two of them fly out of the classroom. There was no way to recover from such an attack. Ling Yun comes out and stares bloodily at his victims, to the rapturous cheers of the people watching the fight. However, in three years of bullying, Junfa couldn't get off so easily. Walking over and looking disdainfully at the bully lying down, Ling Yun decides to continue the beating. He kicks the sucker in the chest with all his might. So kid, why don't you say something inhuman already? Lin Yun asked the victim, keeping his foot on his chest. This guy had just actually called one of the four main bullies, Junfa, a baby. Why don't you say anything? Does it really hurt? Yun continued. And this wimp dares to call himself a campus bully. Even the Tangan in his room is better than this scumbag. Tangan, who is watching the fight, sincerely doesn't understand why Yun brought him here. With a threatening look at his victim, 
The young man asks Junf to repeat how much he has stolen from him in these three years. The beaten bully recalls that three to four thousand dollars, thinking that three or four thousand is three plus four. Yun asks Lin how much interest the bank will earn on seven thousand in three years. The girl replies that she can't say for sure, but if it's a fixed deposit, the boy should get at least ten percent. The guy decided to consider that Junfa owed him 15% on top, and from 7,000, that was 1,050. Nobly informing him that he didn't want to get cocky, the guy decided not to take the excess and demanded only 8,000 from the bully. With trembling hands, Junfa took out some money from his sinus and held out $10,000 to Ling Yun, saying that he wasn't as shameless as the bully sitting across from him. The guy said that he only wanted his money back. After that, he counted out 2,000 and threw it in Junfa's face. At that moment, Lin notices that the young man appears to know how to stop in time. Shan Shan remarks that it's too early to draw conclusions. However, Lin Yun noticed that he didn't just beat him for nothing. He had to put a lot of effort into it. Squatting down and holding out his hand, the guy asked Junfa to pay for his efforts. The friends were shocked. That's the most shameless person you could find. Like a vacuum cleaner collecting money and holding it out to his patron. Junfa asks if that amount is enough for him. But this was just another intellectual move to belittle the bully's self-esteem and authority from Ling Yun. With a disdainful glance at the kneeling man, the young man said that it was too much. Would it take so much money to beat such a low life? Taking half of what is offered, the guy says they are now even. You just wait, you fat bastard. I'll have someone beat you to death. Junfa pondered to himself as he tried to get up from the floor. Even though Yoon says they're even, the bully gets his shoe flown into his face. The guy would explain to Junfa that he didn't allow him to get up. He's already beaten him up and taken his money. What more does he want? You can't bully people like that. Placing his foot on the bully's forehead. Ling Yun asked the one how did he get today's injuries and facial wounds. Junfa immediately recalls how when he bullied the young man, he always told him to keep quiet about the beatings. And if anyone would ask him about the mutilations, he had to lie. The bully replies that he hurt himself. He accidentally hit the wall. At this moment, Ling Yun asked the others if they had heard. Junfa said that the wounds were self-inflicted. None of this had anything to do with their class. Classmates shouted that they heard everything clearly and could witness it in case of anything. Lin Yun asks the bully to be more careful next time. It's a very bad habit, banging your face into walls. Junfa struggled to get up from the floor and thanked his comrade for his concern, promising to be more careful in the future. Hugging his opponent, Yun reminded his opponent that he wouldn't be so soft on him next time. Then he let the guy go and sent him and his friend away. As soon as the two men left, the crowd around them began to cheer. They were happy that someone dared to teach the school's first bully a lesson. Someone was greatly surprised at how Yun had burst into tears at the very beginning of the fight. It was so fast that it was almost impossible to see his movements. Shan Chan in turn noticed that this was no ordinary punch. The guy attacked the bully with some mysterious trajectory. As Ling Yun walked into the classroom to pick up his things, the goddess wondered how many secrets he still harbored. Paying no attention to anyone, the boy who put the money on the desk and began to think. He needs to buy silver needles for healing, sandbags for running, and sports clothes. He also wants to buy his sister that thing called a cell phone. He's coming home tomorrow night. So he'll have to buy a present for his mom. That amount of money just won't be enough. A frustrated Yoon lay down on his desk and thought about what other excuse he could find to get in trouble. This was the only way he could make money. Suddenly, someone rushes into the classroom, angrily saying Ling Yun's name. To a guy, it could only mean one thing. More money. Angry Tanman stands on the doorstep and shouts to the guy. How dare he fight Junfa. His father is a real estate tycoon in King Shui City. The young man is going against the heavens. Although outwardly arrogant Tanman is well aware of the overall situation and often speaks to the point. Ling Yun asked Tanman not to worry and coughed. The young man was very sorry that the blue-haired guy was late for the performance. If you had come earlier, we would have beaten that sucker together. Yun hugged Tanman and said cheerfully. The blue-haired guy hugged him back and said with the same expression on his face that the bastard really deserved a good beating a long time ago. He'd never liked him, 
They laughed together. Suddenly, Hanlin flies into Tanman from behind. He was looking for Yoon to clarify if it was true that he had defeated the school's first bully in a fight. Dumbfounded by this surprise, Tanman begins to berate the kid. Why does he act so recklessly every time? You should at least look around once in a while. Lin Yun is really surprised that the guys are coming here one after another. They're really worried about him. The sister came running after them. The girl had also heard about the fight. After catching her breath, she first of all asks her brother if he is hurt. The guy reassures his sister, telling her that everything is fine. Then he promised the girl that he would take her out to dinner. Then he turned to the guy standing and arguing behind him. Lin Yun is paying for everyone tonight. He suggests we have one big dinner together. The place they came to dine in resembled not a restaurant but a palace. I mean, they're only high school students. Isn't it a little pathetic to come here for dinner? Zhuanyuan Restaurant is one of the best restaurants in Jiangnan province. That's not too cheap of you, Ling Yun, Tang Ming said contentedly, while placing a hand on his friend's shoulder. If only you knew. He thought this place was like a cafeteria on the second floor. A, hey, luckily the 20,000 he got today was still on him. In turn, Tanman is jealous of Ling Yun. He is the only guy in the whole school who is accompanied by two major beauties at the same time. Lin orders two shrimp and oil, one boiled fish, one roast duck, and one large dish of chicken pieces. Surprised at such a menu for just one person, Ling Yun stops Lin and asks where she can get so much. After all, the others haven't ordered yet. The girl remarks that it's a rare occasion when he's a treat and she wants to take full advantage of it. Tanman didn't expect that two months before graduation, Yoon would become the school's biggest celebrity and be the center of attention. Junfa is a troublesome type, but the young man even managed to embarrass him. However, the blue-haired guy warns that the bully definitely won't leave it like that and will try to take revenge. Chewing his dinner, Yoon asks if he has the courage. Tanman explains that he's never lost like this before so he'll probably hire some sports guys to give Yoon a good beating. Unsure of what to do, Linju asks Tanman to help his brother. The blue-haired guy asks the girl not to worry. Although Lin Yun has caused a lot of trouble this time, but as long as he's around, Junfa won't dare to make a move. Lin suggests that maybe Yun won't need any help at all, and then asks Shan Chan for her opinion. The goddess replies that it doesn't matter how strong Lin Yun is. There are times when two fists can't defeat four. Shan Shan is right. If you want to live a comfortable life, you must seize enough power. This is an immutable truth in any world. And it just so happened that Yun had the right candidate in front of him. Turning to his right, Tanman notices that Lin Yun is looking at him strangely. The blue-haired guy was scared shitless by the sight of this bloodthirsty bull. Overeating makes Lin feel sick, and she goes to the restroom. Her sister decides to help the girl sort things out, and leaves Shan Shan alone with Tanman, Hanlin and her brother. That's great. This is a good opportunity to elicit information from Shan Shan. Yun asks the others if any of them have been to the Great Wall of China. Hanlin replies that he'd been there once as a kid, and he clarifies with Yoon why he's asking about it so suddenly. The guy replies that he's just curious how people in ancient times built such an impressive structure. Did they really know any spells? When he said those words, Shan Chan twitched very suspiciously. Then, looking at the girl, Lin Yun asked her if she knew anything about it. At that very moment, Lin and her sister begin to be accosted by some gentlemen, offering the girls to spend the night with them. Hearing the woman screams, Ling Yun and Shan Chan look around and jump out of their seats worriedly. Before the guy could even blink an eye, the girl immediately rushed to his aid. She's fast. A couple seconds later Tanman and Goddess were already standing in front of the three perverts, covering their girlfriends with their hands. One of those bastards looks at Shan Chan and rather remarked that they were having a lot of luck today. Another beauty, blocking Yuna's sister, the blue-haired guy asks the frightened Lin Ju if she's alright. While Lin is yelling that these rascals are trying to take advantage of them, Yun and Hanlin are already running up from behind. Grabbing one of the aggressors by the arm, Tanmen demands an apology from them, and if the girls forgive them, he will be merciful and let them go. Sucker, are you sick of living? You want to die. The pervert grabbed by the arm said angrily. The man in the leather jacket, kneading his fists, says with a smirk. 
that it won't be difficult for them to scatter a bunch of brats. They have already graduated from Jiangmen University of Technology. Standing imperiously in front of Tanmen, the bastards order the guy to kneel down and bow to his elders, and then they'll consider sparing him. Bo, lowering his eyes angrily to the floor, the blue-haired boy said, you're not worthy of this, Tanman shouted, raising his leg sharply, delivering a powerful knee strike to the chest of the nearby bully. Such a strong attack made the man's mouth bleed. How dare he? He muttered quietly, trying to regain his breath. Holding his chest, the pervert orders his friends to get rid of the blue-haired guy. Where are you looking at that? Stealthily running behind the back of his leather-jacketed opponent. Ling Yun inquired. At the same moment, the guy kicked his opponent in the back with all his might. As a result of this blow, the man rolled several meters face down on the floor. The last pissed off man of the group, kneading his fists, angrily preparing to beat up this bunch of brats. But at that moment, something went wrong for him. Hanlon, who had come up behind him, gently tripped his opponent. The pervert's legs buckled and he fell face down on the floor. A surprised Tanman praises the shy guy for doing such a great job. Well done, you guys did a cool job on them, Lin shouted out excitedly. How dare those bastards dare to outrageously represent the name of their university. Looking at the guys lying underfoot, Tanman wondered if Jiangmen University of Technology only produced such animals. Who's talking trash about our university? Suddenly there was an outraged shout from nearby. At the same moment, a crowd of stout men, clearly not in the mood for a peaceful resolution of the conflict, approached the friends. Turning around, Shan Chan asks the girls to get away from here, or they might accidentally hurt themselves. The goddess herself has no intention of backing down. Shan Chan, are you going to fight too? A worried Lin shrieked in surprise. Suddenly someone grabbed the girl's arm tightly, taking it. Ling Yun looked at it confidently, while Shan Chan stares at the place where their hands touch in surprise. Still holding her wrist, stepping back a bit without looking at her, he asks the goddess to go and watch the two behind him. The girl doesn't belong here. Walking forward and standing in front of the crowd of angry people, Ling Yun asked his friends to stand behind him so as not to get hurt. Is he crazy? There are seven of them. Tanman excitedly tells the guy that no matter how good he fights, he can't go up against them alone. In response, Yoon tells his friend not to make a fuss. When the guy comes closer to them, grinning mockingly and tapping the bottle on his hand, the boss of the scum mocks Yoon. Since you can't win, you've decided to play the hero for the last time, haven't you? But none of you will get away unscathed. The man shouted furiously, swinging the bottle. Brother, watch out. Frightened for the guy, Lin Ju shouted loudly. However, Ling Yun doesn't even pay attention to all of his opponent's pathos. He dodges the attack in one move without even taking his hands out of his pockets. Looking around in bewilderment, the enemy can't understand how such a fat sod could be so agile. However, unlike most opponents, despite the miss, the man does not give up. Without stopping the movement of his arm, he throws a punch with a U-turn. But to Ling Yun, this all looks no better than a normal back warm-up. He dodges the second punch in one motion, stone-faced, without making any attempt to counterattack. This turn of events makes a tense opponent very worried. While this jock's partners watch their boss's ridiculous punches with shame, Yoon, without taking his hands out of his pockets, continues to perfectly dodge every punch his foe throws. Are you done? An ominous voice came from behind him. The boy ran behind his tense opponent's back in one motion. Immediately after saying those words, Yun grabbed the man's wrist and in a single motion, snapped his opponent's arm and disarmed him. Curling his arm behind his back, the guy fell the jock chest down to the ground and crushed him with his knee, locking him in place. The bottle that flew out of his opponent's hand fell to the floor and shattered. As Yun pinned the man to the floor, the man closed his eyes, ready to say he was accepting defeat. But at this moment, in front of his eyes, he saw the sharp broken bottle that Lin Yun brought up to his face. Buddy, mercy, shouted the once pompous bully in desperation, stammering. Holding the man by the neck and clobbering his arm, the guy turned around, pointing the broken bottle at the first three perverts. Someone else. What? You only know how to show off. Yun shouted intimidatingly, such a bottle at them. 
Frightened bullies try to find the right words to try to save their boss. Dot well, even I didn't see that coming. Bro, we're sorry. It's our fault we didn't realize who we were dealing with. Have pity on us fools. Bro, the crying boy is cried out on their knees, begging and pleading. Do you have to apologize to me? Ling Yun said angrily, looking at them with disdain. Frightened by such a scary look, these perverts did not dare to cross the mighty bro. Standing up in front of the girls, the guys bowed and apologized to them. They had too much to drink and were talking nonsense. The three allowed them to beat and scold them as the ladies wanted. While Lin is embarrassed by such strange words, Chan Chan notes with disgust that this apology is not sincere at all. One dude in the crowd walks out to Ling Yun holding his boss by the head pinning his face to the floor. The man points out that the guys have already beaten them up. And yes they have apologized. He asks them to forget about everything and part ways peacefully. Yun in turn is very surprised that this bespectacled man can talk. This guy, rubbing the back of his head, replies that he's the deputy headman of the group. If Yun has any conditions, he can safely present them to him. It's no big deal. It's only a matter of compensation. Ling Yun uttered, looking back at the man. When the guy let go of their boss and stood up and put his hands in his pockets. This dude started saying they already apologized. Yeah, and it was their side that got hit harder. With a fearful look and literally crushing his confidence with his presence, Yoon angrily explains to his interlocutor that they scared his little sister and ruined their dinner. He wonders to the bully how much he thinks it will all cost. What if someone then can't go to university because of the fear? What would be the damage then? Trying to appease the angry boy. The deputy headmaster asks how much they have to pay for it. Well, since you've admitted your mistakes, we'll agree that you'll just pay our table bill and compensate those beauties for the moral damage with one or two thousand. Lin Yun explained with a friendly smile, pleased with himself. The girls standing behind remembered that they had seen a similar situation somewhere before. The bully standing in front of the guy asking for a slightly reduced amount and exasperated Yoon looking at him with disdain, says that if he pays the money, it will all be over, otherwise, our fight will continue. He put the broken bottle to his opponent's throat and added, Lin admiringly notes that Yoon is getting more skillful at extorting money from bullies each time. The frightened man in a trembling voice asks the guy to calm down a bit. Taking a couple steps away from the armed man, the bully reluctantly agrees to just pay. Not only did he beat these guys up, but he also made them pay restitution for it. Ah, Lin Yun is so cool. The green-haired girl shouted enthusiastically as she looked at the guy. At this moment, apologizing, the bully holds out 2,000 to Yun. While the boy is counting the bills, the deputy headman looks pitifully at the money given away. Don't feel bad, son. There are just some people you can't mess with, Yun says to the depressed bully. The guy himself realizes how lucky they are to live in such a peaceful world. After all, if they were in the cultivation realm, there would already be several corpses lying here. Handsome, tonight's dinner doesn't count, Lin pronounced, walking beside the guy as she left the restaurant. Lin Yoon doesn't understand this joke. Why? She ate her fill. And what's with this strange treatment? The green-haired girl replies that the young man didn't spend a single yuan. Therefore, it can't be called a treat. It's a strange logic. However, the girl promises to forget about the promised dinner if he promises her one thing. When the guy asks what that thing is, Lin reminds him that he recently started running to lose weight. Taking him by the tie and snuggling up to him, the girl, embarrassed, asks a surprised Yoon to be her boyfriend when he loses weight. Everyone around them was shocked at this turn of events. Tanman, who was standing behind, smiling rather smilingly, remarked that this prank was worth coming here today. Coughing slightly, Ling Yun asks the girl who suddenly grabbed his hand to talk about it a little later. Angry and clinging tightly to her, Lin demands the guy to promise her right now. A long pause followed after these words. Puzzled, Yun doesn't know what to answer her. He can't make a decision so quickly. Lin, it's getting late. The evening self-study will start soon, so it's time to go back to school. Shan Chan sat angrily, turning to her insolent friend, not about to let go of the guy. The green-haired girl turned around, giving the indignant goddess a strange look, as an exasperated Shan Chan pulls her along, reluctantly unhooking herself from the dazed young man. Lin says she'll let him go this time, 
the goddess, without looking back at her now ex-girlfriend, accelerated like a race car, with the goal of getting this girl away from here. When the two suspicious individuals left, the shocked Lane Yun still stood staring into the void for a long time, unable to understand what the hell that was just now. At that moment, the sister coming up behind him, brings the boy out of his senseless musings on the futility of existence. She excitedly asks her brother if he will return to school with them today. Soon it will be time for the evening self-training. Yoon replies to his sister that he has to go out for some errands. He'll come back later. Hugging his bro, Tanman, smiling, asks Lin Ju not to worry. He'll go with this dude so nothing will happen. Yoon responds by saying that he doesn't need him to accompany him. While the young man looks at him bewildered, the blue-haired boy explains that no one knows the neighborhood of that school better than he does. Whatever the friend is going to do there, he will help him. Turning around and walking off in an unknown direction, Ling Yun reluctantly agrees to go along with Tanman. Standing next to Hanlin, the pink-haired girl is angry that her brother has started skipping classes again. He said he was going to study hard just a little while ago. However, despite this, Hanlin, smiling and looking at the guy leaving, observes that Lin Yun has really changed a lot lately. Also looking at her brother in the distance with fascination, Lin agrees with the young man. She has a feeling that her brother will get better and better in the future. Late afternoon of the same day, the classroom where Lin Yun's sister is studying, a distraught girl with pink hair leaning on her arm, sits sadly at her desk. Lin Ju lay down on the table disappointedly, not understanding why her brother still hadn't returned. He had promised to come for self-training. At that moment, a classmate runs into the classroom and calls for the girl. Her brother and Tanman came to see her. Walking into the classroom in his new gym clothes, the guy is holding a heavy bag in his hand. Standing next to him, Tanman asked the surprised Lin Ju if she had missed them. The girl immediately pounces on her brother, hugging him. She asks Yoon why he was gone for so long. Still standing in the doorway, the blue hair guy, while Lin Ju hugs his friend, disappointedly realizes that he has been completely ignored. Holding out the bag to his sister, Ling Yoon says there's something inside for her. He asks her to open it and see if she likes it. Having laid out the contents on the table, the girl notices a lot of different expensive equipment. A new phone, headphones, a camera, a laptop and some other strange thing. Write in the comments what it is, I do not understand. Brother, so when you said you were going on business, you went to buy me all these things. Looking at these things in surprise, the girl uttered, confirming. The guy replies that his sis must have everything that others have and don't have. The surprised classmates don't understand how Lin Yun managed to buy the latest models. It's not cheap. What's going on? Isn't their family so poor that they can't even afford to eat at the school cafeteria? Is it really true that this guy took a lot of money from Junf? Brother, sister said quietly, lowering her eyes, looking at her worriedly. The young man doesn't realize what he did wrong, doesn't she like it? The girl explains that he has misunderstood her. In fact, she is happy. Raising her head and wiping away tears of joy, her sister says with a smile that he shouldn't have spent so much on her. She doesn't use it all anyway. You don't use all of these. You don't even know how to use them. Mena said mockingly as she walked up with her boyfriend. Pointing a finger at her, Tanman asks the girl to watch her tongue. Waving the blue-haired guy away, she continues to taunt. She reminds Lin Ju that their family is poor. So who knows where her worthless brother got it all from. Such insolent words infuriate Tanman. Clenching his trembling fists, he decides that today he must teach her a good lesson. But at that moment, a young man in a sports coat grabs his friend's arm, calming down the blue-haired guy. Lin Yun asks him to stay out of it. So you're the one getting in my sister's way. Yun asked irritably, walking over to the offending girl and folding his arms. Lin Yun, what do you want? Blocking his path. Looking at him coldly, Jun Yang asked. The surprised boy looked at him suspiciously, pointing his finger at him. Ling Yun asks the guy who he is. Tensing up, the interlocutor introduces himself as Jun Yang. Coming up behind him, Lin Ju asks his brother to stay out of it and forget it. Hiding behind him and grabbing his arm, his sister explains that the guy is probably already tired today. She asks him not to waste his energy on people like that. All right, have it your way. Yun exhaled, looking at his sister, pointing his finger at Jun Yang again. 
Ling Yun gives a small speech to everyone in the classroom right now, looking him in the eye, I'm warning everyone, if anyone dares to bully my little sister or hurt her in any way, I'll make him pay for it, shouted the boy across the office. Hearing this, the classmates start discussing something again. They are shocked at what is happening here. Fatty is no longer a weakling. He has the strength to fight. He started acting like this after he beat up little Junfa. Little Junfa I think the fat man called him that during the fight. Walking out of the classroom, Tanman wonders to his friend why he didn't do anything. The blue-haired guy would have loved to beat up that bastard Junyang. You would have lost to him. Warming up, Yoon explains confidently. Tanman wonders why the guy is so sure he can't beat the brat. Ling Yun wouldn't tell him this, but just now, when he pointed his finger at Jun Yang, not only did he not twitch, but he was 100% ready to attack. This guy, he is definitely a skilled warrior, and his strength is considerable. Without answering Tanman's question, the young man asks him to go home and he goes to practice. The blue-haired boy doesn't understand why his friend is going to train so late. Until this day, a cultivator had yet to meet a worthy opponent in this world, and so he wasn't particularly motivated to train hard. He barely dragged the heavy 25-kilogram bag with sand and threw it on the ground, the guy exhaustedly waddled to the river where he had been at the beginning of his journey, and came to the flower, taking a seat next to the seven rays grass. He prepared to retemper his body with Kai cultivation. Now things were finally getting more interesting. Seated on the grass in the lotus posture, concentrating, the guy uses the secret technique of the 50 stars. At the initial level, it allows one to absorb the essence of heaven and earth to strengthen one's body. If you practice it to the extreme, you can even feel equal with the sky and the earth, and use all the power of the sun, moon, and stars to your advantage. However, at this moment, a significant problem occurs, preventing the secret technique from flowing. The cultivator had forgotten that the meridians in this body had not yet been restored. This caused him to tense up a lot and begin to ooze sweat profusely. Overwhelming himself, Lin Yun tries not to let such a small problem give him a hard time, especially since he now has all the time in the world. Stabilizing the tense situation, the guy continued to absorb the flower's energy. Finished with that. He looked at his hand. Great. The absorption rate had become much faster, and the body could hold twice as much spiritual power as before. Finally, Lin Yun had managed to reach the first level of body hardening, grabbing the handle of the sandbag that the guy had barely dragged to the river before, with a single movement of his hand. Yun tossed it a dozen meters above his head, then, stepping back a little, he took a long stride and swung his leg and kicked with all his might at the 25-kilogram sandbag. The bag flew several dozen meters away, bouncing off the ground a couple of times. Although Ling Yun had not broken through to the second level as he had hoped, it was enough for now. What's really needed right now is a handy weapon. The capital of China, Beijing, a huge villa of some rich man, beautiful girl vulgarly dancing on a pole. Quite hugging the two girls and holding a glass of expensive champagne in his outstretched hand, the golden-haired man asks the dancer to spread her legs even wider. At that moment, a couple of messages arrive on a phone lying nearby. The irritated man takes it in his hand and looks to see which bastard is interrupting his rest. I got a funny fatty here, wrote an unknown person and uploaded a video of Lin Yun running with a bag on his back on a treadmill near the school. This message greatly shocks the man. Damn it, he shrieked angrily, pushing the girls sitting next to him away from him in anger. In the middle of the night, the phone rings. A sleepy man reaches out his hand to accept the incoming call. Hello, bringing the device to his ear. The man says questioningly without opening his eyes. Chen Sen. Didn't you tell me that you killed that bastard? Why is he still alive and well? The golden-haired man shouted angrily into the phone. Jumping out of bed, the surprised hitman doesn't understand what alive and well means. How is that possible? He hit that fat guy himself with a truck. Do you want the video? I paid you 20 million, and this is what you do. The golden-haired man said disappointedly. In an attempt to justify himself, the hitman tells Mr. Ling Xiao that it would be a piece of cake to kill this brat. Would he cheat? He really should be dead. If he's still kicking, someone must have saved him. The assassin tells the young gentleman that he has heard that there is a doctor of Chinese medicine in King Shui City, 
who is rumored to be able to put even the dead back on their feet and is known as Master Shu. The golden-haired man says in surprise that this is impossible, no matter how good Master Shu's skills are, he definitely can't resurrect a dead person. This bastard could come back to life unless the person who saved him was not an ordinary person at all. Not wanting to believe it, the hitman asks him if he really thinks the guy was saved by those people. The Lin and Chen families are at the absolute top of the pyramid in this country. Therefore, they know much more than ordinary people. For example, the fact that there are cultivators in this world. Some of them belong to ancient Chinese families who study martial arts and hide in the city. And some are secretive sects nestled in the mountains. But after all, these people are mysterious and secretive, and ordinary people have no way of encountering them. Even Chen Sen's grandfather, the hitman, would respect them if he met them. He excitedly asks Lin what they will do now. They've messed with those big uncles. They're finished. Lin Xiao, fixing his hair, asks him not to make a fuss. This fat pig is of no interest to them. Anyway, he asks Chen Sen to stay out of it from now on and says that he will arrange everything himself. Dropping the call, the golden-haired man tosses the phone onto the couch, sipping champagne again. Xiao recalls the conversation with his father and uncle at the table. Remember, son, even if you are the eldest grandchild of the Lin family, it doesn't mean that the position of the future head of the family will necessarily be yours, explains the father, instructing his son. After hugging his nephew, his uncle asks him not to be upset by being the eldest grandchild. If anyone is hurting, it's him. After all, he has to watch his second brother's three sons fight amongst themselves. Ling Xiao agrees. The third uncle has an easier time of it. He has only one daughter who can't become the head of the family. So you'll support me, third uncle. With a sinister smile, Xiao inquired of the man. The man who hugged him confirmed. Still, this guy was the only one who remembered to keep him company from time to time. However, after a while, Ling Xiao heard a quarrel between his third uncle and the head of the family, his grandfather. Shameless man. How dare you secretly raise a child out of wedlock? Slapping the man. The head of the family shouted angrily. The third uncle objected. He didn't raise him. He left him in the wilderness as soon as he was born, chasing the man out of the house. The head of the family ordered him to find and return the boy. His grandson, whoever he is, must not be allowed to grow up on the streets. The third uncle asks his father to calm down. He promises to send someone to find Ling Yun. Shattering the glass with anger, simply clenching his hand, Ling Xiao can't understand why the wholesome bastard's life even matters. Rewinding his wounded palm, he makes a phone call and orders to immediately send an assassin to King Shui Middle School to kill a man named Ling Yun and deliver the body to him. This time he wants to personally verify his death. The night of the same day, the dormitory. Lin Yun has the flying needle technique. And at his current level, it can easily hit without missing at a distance of up to 10 meters. With his knowledge of the meridians of the body, silver needles can also be used to heal and save the sick. It's the best weapon for him at the moment. There's just one problem. Where can he get silver needles that will fulfill his requirements? Sobbing and holding the useless pens in his hands, Yoon thought. Hanlin asks his restless friend to go to bed because it's very late. Saturday morning, high school stadium. Over the past few days, the guy has developed a general understanding. The common sense of mortals in this world has acceptable limits. Therefore, Lin Yun will no longer be able to practice during the day in this stadium. The people standing around are looking at the guy suspiciously. Is that Lin Yun? Has he lost weight? He looks much better now. However, the young man will now try to keep a low profile and not draw much attention to himself. Noticing Lin Yun coming to the sports field, Li Lei, who tried to stop the guy from running a lap last time, yells at him that he didn't allow him to be here. Looking at this jerk, Yoon doesn't understand why he's still here. His friends don't seem to be happy about his foolish friend's antics either. Stupid pig, stomp over here for a slap, shouted Li Lei, snapping out of his seat. Not wanting to spoil his mood, the bully, taking pity on the guy, decides to go with just a couple of punches. He put his hand behind his back and threw a swinging punch. But Lin Yun simply stopped his hand by grabbing the retard's wrist. At the same moment, he swung around and made a retaliatory attack to the face. The slap was of such force that the opponent, 
having been struck on the cheek, flew a short distance away and fell on his ass. Did you call me for a slap? Trust me, I'll provide you with them. With a menacing look at the opponent below him, the angry Ling Yun said. When the young man brought his palm up to Li Lei's face, the frightened bully cried out in fear, asking what Yun was going to do, and demanded not to walk any closer. For the next few minutes, loud slapping noises echoed throughout the stadium. Lin Yun was slapping his palm on the bully's face like a true heavy metal band drummer. Everyone watching this virtuoso percussionist's magnificent performance noticed that Li Lei, who was practicing karate, didn't have a chance to fight back. He will be beaten to a pulp if this continues. At the same second, the guy struck the final blow of this magnificent symphony. The bully's nose and mouth bled. Without even grouping up, the karateka falls backwards onto the treadmill. While a battered Li Lei tries to get back on his feet, Yoon tells him to get the hell out of here so he doesn't get hurt even more. Or does he want the guy to switch to wind instruments? Despite such a huge number of missed punches, Li Lei, practically losing consciousness, still jumps off with a scream, trying to grab the guy with both hands around his neck. The annoyed Yun is surprised that this weirdo still can't get enough. Without straining, the young man grabs the bully's arm, then with a sharp motion, topples the karateka over his shoulder with his back on the ground. Immediately afterward, the guy gives a loud speech for every student in the school to hear. I, Lin Yun, I'm always kind to the good, mean to the bad. As long as I'm not attacked, I won't respond in any way. But if someone decides to hurt me, I will repay them a hundredfold. Lin Yun, he's an interesting dude, said aloud the girl who was watching the fight nearby. Late afternoon of the same day, city center, returning to the dormitory last night, Yoon saw a pharmacy. He decides to make a quick stop by and see if he can buy silver needles there. Lin Yun, wait a moment, a girl approaching from behind said, turning around. The cultivator saw an interesting display. He had never encountered such a thing before. Not even in the cultivation world. So big, so thin, so long. The girl asked the guy if he'd had enough, or if she could wait a little longer. Scratching the back of his head, Yoon replies that that's enough for today. He asks the stranger why she called out to him. The girl replies that her name is Shu Mining, but the young man is allowed to call himself Ning. She is in the second grade of middle school. She suddenly wonders where the boy is going. He replies to the strange girl, looking her in the eye, that he was going to buy something. Grabbing his hand, Ninji tells the guy that she's going with him. Lin Yun, grinning asks if she's afraid the young man will kidnap her. Abruptly turning around and hugging the guy, the girl replies that the odds of her kidnapping him are much higher. Trying to get the burden off his back, Lin Yun explains that he's going after the silver needles, and the girls are hardly interested. Silver needles, what do you need them for? Approaching face to face, Niney inquired. Whenever, sometimes to stab so it doesn't hurt, sometimes to make it hurt. Without taking his eyes off her, the boy explained, Neen, do you want me to try them out on you first? Grinning eerily, the guy offered intimidatingly, stepping away from him, the girl tried her best to hold back her laughter. Then left Yuna puzzled. In that case, Nine suggests that the guy come with her. Their family has not only silver needles, but also a bunch of golden needles. He will be able to choose whatever his soul desires. Ling Yun looked at the stranger suspiciously. Golden needles, this is the mana of heaven. No, how could it be so lucky? Who are you? And for what purpose have you come to me? The young man asked incredulously with a change in his face. Nine didn't understand why the boy was angry all of a sudden. Exhaling, she explains that her grandfather happened to see Yoon running around in a circle with a sandbag, and he was curious to meet the guy. If the young man pleases him, perhaps then he can pick up any needles for free. Of course, Lin Yun can't refuse the free buy. He asks for more details from now on. Since her grandfather is a doctor of Chinese medicine, the number of different needles after treating patients he keeps accumulating. Trust me, since you need silver needles. Turning around, the girl said, after a few minutes, the two of them are already in a cab. Naturally, Ling Yun couldn't refuse the free silver needles. However, he cannot understand one thing. Why is Nina clinging to him like that? There's plenty of room. When he asked her to sit down a little, she looked at his face and flatly refused. She explains to the young man that she needs to hold him back. He might run away. At that moment, 
The girl noticed something interesting outside the car window. Lin Yun, are you seeing this? Pressing against the glass, Ning inquired. Pretending to be curious, the guy tries to look out the window. However, there was one small problem that hindered him greatly. How insidious. How can you use such a trick? As if I could move while you're sitting like that. Realizing that he was trapped, the young man thought. Late evening of the same day, Cottage Village clean stream. A car with passengers stopped at the entrance to the property. Just as the girl decided to open the door and get out, Ling Yun stops and asks where she's going. Ning replies that they have arrived and it's time to get out. Or do you want me to sit next to you some more? The girl turned around and looked at the guy, but reality is cruel. No, it's just that you didn't pay the fare. And there's more than 40 yuan there, by the way. Looking stone-faced at her, Yun replied. There was a loud silence. Immediately afterward, he was perplexed to see Nani cast a strange look at him. It was as if he had become repulsive to her. The girl simply opened the door and stepped out of the car. Slamming the door shut, she said she had no money, and he had to pay himself. Left alone with the agitated driver, the boy looks perplexed at Nani. Why did you take a cab if you don't have any money? At that moment, the cab driver thanked him for using their services and asked him to scan the code for payment. Can I get a discount for the first ride? The guy awkwardly asked the infuriated driver. In the next second, Ling Yun is standing on the street swallowing dust from under the wheels of a quickly departing car. Well, no, so no. Why get angry at once? The boy said with a frightened look. Yuna is surprised by this place. There is such a dense spiritual energy here. You can also smell the precious medicinal herbs. Now he was even curious to meet Ninja's grandfather. Abruptly turning around at the entrance to the house, the girl warns the boy that when he enters, he must behave respectfully toward her grandfather, and not argue with him in any way. The young man replies that he is not some rascal. He gets along easily with everyone and almost never has a conflict, but Nini doesn't agree with that. He's been at her for a while. Once inside, the girl informed her grandfather that she was back. In turn, the elderly man replies that he has known about it for a long time. Her lectures under the door could be heard even from here. Nine, embarrassed, explains that he must have heard her. So you are the Ling Yun that my precious granddaughter praised so much. With a satisfied look at the young man, the old man said. At this point, his speech slurred and he coughed, coughing. The elderly man asks his granddaughter to prepare tea for the guest and use his best lunging. He invites the guest to take a seat across from him. He explains that his granddaughter has been pampered since she was a baby so she grew up a bit urchin-like. The grandfather asks the boy if she's given him any trouble. Yoon replies that nothing of the sort has happened, but she's just too spunky, which makes it hard to deal with her. Taking a seat at the table, Ling Yun notices something strange. From the looks of it, this old man is strong and alert, but there's something wrong with his lungs. Sitting across from him, the guy notices that Master Shu just coughed. He wonders if the man has a lung problem. The old man replies that it's an old problem, and it doesn't bother him in any way. He actually really wanted to see Ling Yun in person. The grandfather explains that he saw a young man running on a sports field with a 25-kilogram sandbag, spitting blood out of his mouth. He, you could say, flew the second half of the laps. The old man wondered how that had happened. He's also very concerned about the guy's physical condition. He asks permission to feel his pulse. Leaning over the young man. The old man touches his wrist with his fingertips. Weird. Very strange. Frowning. Master Shu whispered. He then shifted his gaze to Yun without removing his hand from his pulse. Puzzled, the healer tells him that the guy's life force is much more than that of a normal person. But the pulse in the Yang energy meridians confuses him. Obviously, Ling Yun's body must be very weak. The astonished guy doesn't understand how the old man was able to find out so much just by touching him once. If even an ordinary Chinese medicine doctor is so good, wouldn't the one at the peak be on par with Yun? A long dialogue followed. The old man asks the guy if he has met any special people lately. Ling Yun replies that he hasn't seen anyone like that. Maybe he ate something unusual. That's out too. The young man eats at the school cafeteria like everyone else. Then the doctor asked what time he got up and went to bed, and if there were any abnormalities in his body. To all this, the young man did not answer anything supernatural. 
coughing again. The old man remarks that in that case, it must have been the blood the boy spit out while running with the bag, but that couldn't have caused such an effect, it just doesn't make sense. Awkwardly scratching the back of his head, Ling Yun doesn't know whether to tell the doctor that it's all because he absorbed immortal Kai and purified his bone marrow, except he's afraid that Master Xu will be scared to death. Walking over with a tea set in hand, Ning asks her grandfather how things are going with Ling Yun's body. Is it curable? The old man reassures his granddaughter, explaining that the guy's physique is now several times stronger than a normal person. The recipe he had originally prepared would be useless. When Yun inquired about the recipe in question, Ninj, setting the cups on the table, explained that her grandfather had found out what had happened to the young man, he had specially prepared a recipe that would restore Yun's body. She tells the boy that he has no idea what he's missing. How many people in the world begged her grandfather to take care of their treatment? After coughing a couple of times, the elderly man asks his granddaughter to choose her words carefully. A healer's duty is to treat and save sick people. Yes, whatever you say, grandfather, leaning awkwardly towards Master Shu. The girl apologized, looking at the elderly man with a good-natured smile. The boy is surprised that this old man has such a good heart. He decides to help the man. Master, I came here today to ask for something. Getting down to business, Ling Yun said. The surprised old man didn't expect that the young man had come to ask for something. He didn't have anything special except things related to Chinese medicine. Turning to her grandfather, Ning explained that Ling Yun wanted silver needles. The guy tells me that he doesn't need a lot of needles, just nine, but they have to be a slightly unusual shape. One is a thin needle, one inch long. The second is a round tip needle, also one inch. The third is a blunt needle three and a half inches. Fourth. At these words, the old man dropped the teacup from his hands, spilling the drink. The canon of the mysterious essence of the nine kinds of needles. The grandfather and granddaughter shouted in surprise in a voice. The girl asks Ling Yun if he knows what he's talking about now. When the guy sipping tea confidently confirmed, Master Xu asked his young friend to honestly say whether he really possessed the canon of the mysterious essence of the nine kinds of needles. Without speaking aloud and looking at Yun hopefully, the old man can't believe that he has met someone who is proficient in this canon. Still, he's basically one of the most advanced needle techniques. The Yellow Emperor's treatise on the innermost states that there are nine unobstructed organs in the human body, which are the nine major spiritual centers in the body. They are the key to crossing the work of the twelve major meridians and unpaired meridians in the eight veins of the body. The canon of the mysterious essence of the nine kinds of needles, is the method of inserting needles into these nine points. With this method, if a person is still breathing, even the most serious injuries can be saved. But this method was lost long ago, and no one has ever seen it in person. Master Shu, the shout of the guy whose hand the old man had clutched in shock, brought the older man out of his deep thoughts about the cannon, letting him go. The old man apologizes for his loss of possession, looking at him. Ling Yun doesn't understand why Master Xu is so excited. Isn't the canon of the mysterious essence of the nine kinds of needles the most common needle technique? In the past, a cultivator had stopped using it even since he had reached the Kai melting stage. In turn, Ning, looking suspiciously at the guy, realizes that the canon of the mysterious essence of the nine kinds of needles can only be used with innate true Kai. How could Lin Yun, an 18-year-old middle school student who had just overcome his physical limitations, have such a level of cultivation? Lin Yun, that bastard, you're lying about everything, the girl shouted angrily in the young man's face, grabbing him by the scruff of the neck. Rascal, decided to mess with my grandfather's body, Naini continues to shout without calming down. At this point, after yelling at his granddaughter, the old man asks to let the guy go. Lin Yun asks the girl if she'll believe him if he tells her exactly what's wrong with her grandfather. Intrigued, with a disdainful look in the guy's eyes, Nin agrees to give him one chance to prove everything. The young man begins to explain, Master Xu has a cough that won't stop. At first glance, it seems to be a lung problem, but the root of the problem lies in the heart. The surprised old man asks how the guy could tell with one look, he didn't even feel his pulse. While the elderly man coughs out, 
Ling Yun explains that the heart and tongue among the five elements belong to fire. Master Xu's tongue is purple in color with a dark greenish tint at the tip. This is a clear result of excessively strong heart fire. Fire suppresses iron, and the lungs belong to this element. When heart fire is too strong, it begins to harm the yin energy meridians in the lungs. This naturally leads to lung insufficiency and constant coughing. When a concerned Naini asks the guy why her grandfather's heartstrings are so strong, Yoon replies that it's quite simple. He's been using too many strengthening agents. Coughing again. The old man says that he believes Ling Yun. He asks the boy to get ready to insert the needles. In turn, the granddaughter wonders why her grandfather is taking so many strengthening herbs. She tearfully asks the young man to tell her. After all, her grandfather almost eats them instead of food. The boy appeals to the old man to tell her everything himself. After all, she is his own granddaughter, and Yoon can see that she cares about her grandfather. After thinking for a bit, Master Xu didn't mind talking about everything. Ning, the reason why your grandfather uses so many herbs, is because he has a living being in his body. Ling Yun said, looking at the worried girl's face. She asks the older man how there can be anything alive in him. What the hell is this? Grabbing her grandfather's hand, Naini asks dazedly. Frowning and glaring at his granddaughter, the old man asked her not to panic. The living thing inside me is a poisonous parasite. Forty years ago, when a man traveled to the Miao territories in search of a higher path of healing, by coincidence, he saved a girl from the Miao tribe. It turned out that she was the holy maiden of Miao territory. She was a great master in the art of healing and perfecting parasites. The time spent talking to her was one of the happiest times of his life. However, when his medical skills stopped improving, he decided to leave the Miao territories. The man didn't realize that Miao Fenghuang had already fallen in love with him and wanted him to stay with her forever. But he was already married to Nine's grandmother and he had a son, her father. Could he just forget about them? However, Master Xu did not expect her to have a hand in his food. The granddaughter immediately realized where her grandfather was leading her. So that night, they. Yes, she planned it so that I couldn't avoid it. Scratching the back of his head awkwardly, the old man confirmed his granddaughter's guess. Except, looking at this old Cossack, Lin Yun feels like the man didn't even try to resist back then. Alas, she had planted a love parasite in him. After making love, this parasite penetrates into the body of another person and does not allow him to forget his partner for the rest of his life. And if someone forgets, the parasite will eat away at his heart and the pain will be so intense that death will seem the only way out. A surprised Ning wonders to her grandfather how beautiful this Miao Fenghuang was. Coughing, the old man replies that she was indeed a beauty the likes of which are rarely seen. Then why did you give her up? Why didn't you take her home? Dumbfounded by her grandfather, the girl inquires curiously. Yoon, in turn, looks at all this awkwardly and silently notes how stiff and straightforward her words were. Laughing and coughing more and more each time, the old man asks his granddaughter not to make him laugh. He couldn't take her with him. After all, he already had a loving wife. Yoon realizes, However, that it's unlikely the man hadn't thought of that option. Continuing to narrate, Master Xu narrated that one day, because Miao Fenghuang had relaxed, the effects of the parasite had weakened. That was the day he had the chance to escape from the Miao territories. But the man couldn't get the parasite to leave his body, so he had to find a way to suppress it. And so you had to take all the medicinal herbs to strengthen your heart and spleen to increase the firepower in your body and suppress the pain from the parasite. Lin Yun concluded this monologue, inserting his sentence on top of the old man's words. The young man observes that Master Xu has really had a hard time living for the past 40 years. Ninj wondered to her grandfather why this girl didn't start looking for him later, if she was so persistent and loved him so much. And she was looking, the old man said grimly. Except your grandmother met her before I did. A surprised Nin wondered what had happened when they met and what they had discussed between them. Master Xu said that he didn't know what they had talked about that day. But after that, Miao Fenghuang returned to the Miao territories, and he never saw her again. The granddaughter asks what about the parasite. Couldn't the grandmother have asked the girl to rid the man of it? The old man replies that his wife said that he himself provoked the affair. 
and this love parasite and suffering is the price he has to pay. Yes, her grandmother was obviously a very cruel person, but fair. Master Xu told the whole story, coughing. He asked Ling Yun's young friend to start inserting the needles, bringing a small wooden chest from the house. The old man placed it on the table and slowly opened it. Inside lay another small box filled to the top with spiritual energy. Ling Yun was very much surprised by what he saw. Well, he keeps the golden needles in a box made of spiritual jades. Taking out a jade box from the chest, the old man opened it. Then I'll begin. Asking permission and glancing at the older man, the boy said, running up to Ling Yun. A worried Ning hugs him and asks the guy to take care of her grandfather. Choking up, the young man asks the girl not to worry and just rely on him, leaving the house to stay out of the guy's way. The girl gives him one last warning that if anything happens to her grandfather, Yoon will be hunted by a lot of people. At this moment, the old man noticed how the guy just immediately took the needles in his hand. Young friend Lin Yun washed the needle. What is it? Turning his attention to the man. The lad asks indifferently without letting him finish. The frightened old man says it's nothing much and wonders to the young man if he forgot to do something elsewhere. Yoon replies that it's fine and it's light outside as it is. What about disinfection? Eh, hey, never mind. Master Shu thought doomfully. Immediately afterward, the man takes off his shirt and sits down with his back to the guy. Right now, Ling Yun only needed to use these needles to transfer spiritual energy to Master Shu's acupuncture points. But what's going on? Why can't he engage spiritual energy? The Kai Movement Technique of the 24 Gods. Illusory True Kai Movement Technique. Supreme Kai Movement Technique. Heavenly Circle Kai Movement Technique. After trying all these methods, Li Yun tries to fill the golden needles with spiritual energy. Nothing has changed. If he stops there, that girl will definitely explode with anger. Shaking his head around, the guy tries to find any way he can to solve the problem. How about going outside and running a couple of kilometers to expel the spiritual energy? But in that moment, looking down, he finds a solution. This is it. He could just absorb the spiritual energy of this jade box and use it to stimulate the flow of energy in his body. If he sacrifices this spiritual energy for the benefit of the old man, he still won't give him his strength and will go to zero. Lin Yun's special talent, the ability to absorb the spiritual energy of all things. In the same second, the guy absorbed all the spiritual energy of the jade box and poured it into the golden needles. It really worked. With a needle in hand, Lin Yun tells Mr. Xu that he is using acupuncture to suppress the parasite. Though it will only stop affecting the old man for about two months, the man will have to settle the meridians in his lungs during that time to temporarily get rid of his cough. The guy warns the elderly man that the process will be very painful and asks him to be patient. The young man stuck the first needle into Master Shu's back. The pain made the man clench his fists hard and sweat. After sticking eight needles into the old man already, Ling Yun warns that only the last one is left. Stabbing it into the last spot, all the golden needles connected with each other with spiritual energy. From the unbearable pain, Master Shu screamed, then spat out a clot of blood from his mouth. A worried granddaughter runs out of the house and fearfully asks her grandfather if he is okay. Why did he vomit blood? So this is the canon of the mysterious essence of the nine kinds of needles. It's incomprehensible. The old man is incredibly surprised by what has happened to him. He feels like he has a brand new body. For his part, Ling Yun still doesn't understand what the elderly man is even surprised about. Looking at the guy, Master Shu allows the young man to take those golden needles for himself when he pulls them back from his back. Lin Yun can't believe that Master really wants to give them to him. Laughing, the old man explains his decision by saying that even if you search all of China, Yun is the only one who can use them properly. So who else but him? Obedience is better than politeness. Then I will gladly accept them, the boy said enthusiastically. Standing next to him and taking her eyes away from him, Ninj remarks that she has never seen such people who can't even say thank you after receiving a gift. It's true. I cured your grandfather, but I never heard a thank you. It's the first time I've met one of those two. Catching on to her sloppy words, leaning over to the dumbfounded girl, Ling Yun said, after saying how the guy is a fool. The girl, embarrassed, still quietly thanks the young man. 
What what? I can't hear you. Scoffing at her, the guy shouted, an angry Neen, grabbing him by the ear, yells that she won't say it twice. If he didn't hear it, let him forget it. The old man watching reminds his granddaughter that Ling Yun is her grandfather's savior, and so she should be nicer to the guy. The girl grudgingly agrees with her grandfather, while Yun standing behind her laughs discreetly. However, that wasn't all. The boy still had one more request for Master Xu. I knew it. Give you a finger. You'll bite your whole hand off. Looking at Yun, the girl grinned. The young man asks the old man for a set of regular silver needles in addition to the gold needles, so that he won't have to look for them later. Laughing, the old man says it's not enough to repay. There's no need to talk about one set. He could give him all ten, placing a set of silver needles on the table. Master Xu asked the fellow how he felt about these. An indignant Nin notices that it's a set used by Grandpa himself, scratching his head. Ling Yun explains that he will only need these needles for an emergency, so something simple will do. Grasping the young man's hand in admiration, the old man explains that these needles will gain maximum effectiveness only in his hands. He is sure that with their help the boy will cure a large number of sick people. Awkwardly looking at Master Xu. The guy wouldn't say it, but he needs the needles more for self-defense. The girl wonders when Lin Yun will be able to completely remove the parasite from her grandfather's body. Guy explains that about two months later, Master Xu's body will have recovered enough at that point. Taking a strange look at the young man and not letting him go, the admiring Master Xu says that he is counting on him. Same night, somewhere in the Miao territories, an elderly woman, kneeling, expectorates a clod of blood onto the floor. Her lover's parasite. Who the hell is it? Who could suppress the heart-eating parasite? Shuzhenki. Do you really think you can run away from this just because you found some expert? I'm not going to let you go. Sitting by the riverbank, a group of girls try to find out from Miao Xiao, who has been to the city once, what the world outside the mountains is like. Are the men on the street handsome? Are they better than brother Jun from their settlement? Xiao tells me that there are tall buildings outside, even taller than the mountain in the distance. And there are also cars there that drive fast. Suddenly she hears someone scream. As she runs away from her friends, she anxiously explains to them that her mother is calling her. She promises to tell them the rest tomorrow. Running into the room, the girl notices her mother sitting in lotus position on the floor. Blood is dripping down her clothes. The daughter is horrified and asks her how she hurt herself. The mother asks not to worry about her. She tells her that her love parasite has been suppressed, causing her to be affected by the recoil. Looking pitifully at the woman, Xiao reminds her that it's been decades. Why does she continue to suffer? The girl suggests simply bringing the parasite back. An angry mother yells at her daughter asking her to shut up. The woman angrily explains that since she put her parasite on him, it means he's the only one she likes in this life, and she'll never get the parasite back. Trying to calm her mother down, Xiao admits that she blurted it out without thinking. After calming down, the woman explains that the man who suppressed her parasite is very skilled. She can't deal with him from this distance, but he's already marked with the aura of a heart-eating parasite. Miao Xiao had inherited the voodoo curse technique, and so she must go looking for him tomorrow. The worried girl reminds her mother that this man was able to take control of even a heart-eating parasite. Will she be able to deal with him alone? The elderly woman responds by explaining that although this person is very skillful, his cultivation level is extremely low. With the voodoo technique, the daughter can easily crush him. When he is in a very agonizing position and starts looking for a way to save his life, the girl must force him to release the parasite. In addition to this, the mother asks Miao Xiao to remember that there are no good men on the outside. She asks her to remember her mother's lesson, asks her daughter not to give in to temptation when outside the settlement. Xiao convinces the woman that she will never like outsider men. A red sports car comes to a stop on the road. The door opens, and the driver puts his left foot on the ground. The doorman standing at the entrance notices a luxury car and a beautiful woman driving it. Who's the big shot here? A. A flower in cow dung. Lingyun, who got out of the passenger seat, 
noticed that this car was much better and more comfortable than the cab. He asks Nang what this beautiful place is. The girl replies that it is King Shui restaurant. Grandpa earlier said that she should personally take the guy to the restaurant and treat him to a good meal. Oh, so it's also free. Great. The young man admiringly muttered as he looked around. The doorman is shocked by this strange conversation. There is an incredible amount of delicious and expensive food on the table. Nine tries to call out to Yoon. While the guy is eating everything on the table at supersonic speed, the girl, looking at him shamefully, asks if it's too much. The satisfied guy replies almost exactly as Lin once told him, if someone gives you a treat, you have to eat to your heart's content. Otherwise, there's a lot to lose. Not at all surprised by this response, Nin realizes that this is indeed his nature. As the young man continues his merciless battle with the food, the girl asks him why in that case, he didn't ask for anything when he cured her grandfather. Ling Yun is perplexed by such a question. What do you mean you didn't ask for anything? What about the sets of gold and silver needles? However, that was not what Ning had in mind. While the guy reaches for the potatoes with his chopsticks, the girl, without saying so, is perplexed as to how his greedy nature can settle for only two sets of needles. Shouldn't he be asking for more at a time like this? Ah uh, Ling Yun, you probably still don't know what my grandfather's status is, right? The girl mockingly said while looking at the foolish guy she thought. At that moment, he placed the chopsticks on the table. No, of course I do. The young man replied confidently, finally noticing Niney sitting next to him. The pleasantly surprised girl wonders what the guy knows about her grandfather. Yun tells him that Master Xu is a skillful practitioner of Chinese medicine. Oh, and he's also a heartbreaker who dumped his sweetheart. Lin Yun addressed the guy an exasperated girl, closing her eyes. The angry girl shouted at the young man at the top of her voice, not to dare to talk about her grandfather like that. Stepping closer and swinging his fist, he yells that if he continues, let him not blame her for being rude. But at that moment, Lin Yun takes her hand. Then he yanks her wrist and pulls the surprised girl against him. Why don't you start by keeping your promise? The guy reminded her, saying it in her ear. Embarrassed, Ninj looked him in the face and asked what promise was even in question. Have you already forgotten? Yun asked her, leaning even closer to her. Half an hour ago, until Lin Yun held a cannon of the mysterious essence of the nine kinds of needles. Thumbing her finger at the guy, Ninj tells him that if he doesn't cure her girlfriend after bragging so much here, she'll strip him naked and throw him into King Shui Lake to feed the fish. It's cruel, of course, but the guy wonders what will happen if he does cure him. How will you repay me then? Smilingly asks Lin Yun to the girl. Embarrassed, Naini promises that if the young man can really cure her grandfather, she will let him kiss her. Counting on that answer, Yun naturally agreed. Pulling Ning close to her, Ling Yun looked into her eyes, wondering if she had really decided to renege on her words. In response, the girl quietly mouthed that she always keeps her promises. Then I kiss, utters the boy. However, unable to stand it, Nin, pushing him away, asks him to stop. She recalls that they made a deal for Yun to completely cure Grandpa, before kissing her. The girl demands of the guy that he completely remove the parasite from the old man's body. Smiling, the young man replies that in that case, he would have no problem waiting two months. Blushing again, Ning doesn't understand how this dumbass Lin Yun can talk about her first kiss so lightly. At the same moment she jumped off his lap and sat down at the chair opposite. And then, still embarrassed, she began to devour the food on the table at a great speed. Looking at this, Ling Yun didn't expect this trick to be so effective. Now she was in no mood to ask him about anything else. Of course he knows that Master Xu has an unusual status. Not everyone can afford to live in such a large mansion on such an expensive land. Besides, his speech has the grandeur of a high-ranking person. How can he be an ordinary person? If Lin Yun just took a bunch of money from him, their relationship would end there. But since the old man will remember him as the man who almost gratuitously saved his life, he will always look for a way to thank the guy, and will come to his aid at any time. That's exactly the kind of reward a young man needs. He was brought out of his musings by Nina, who grabbed the boy's shoulder sharply. With a wink, she turns to Ling Yun. She explains that she'll have to wait another two months anyway. 
And so the girl asks to be taught the canon of the mysterious essence of the nine kinds of needles. What the hell? She's just recently calmed down, and now she's at it again. Unfortunately or fortunately she can't use the cannon without spiritual energy. Out loud, the guy says he can't teach her. After all, it's a unique technique that can't be passed on to others. Then, hugging Ling Yun, Ning begs the guy to teach her secretly. That little witch is annoying. If the guy doesn't go for it, I don't think she'll let him go. The young man agrees to train the girl, but only on the condition that she passes a test. An excited Nin agrees and asks the guy how long it will take him. Two years. Pointing his fingers. Ling Yun narrated to her. Perplexed. The girl asks why it took so long. The guy replies that it's because the canon of the mysterious essence of the nine kinds of needles is a legendary technique. He had to master it for nine years. Well, it looks like we'll have to go through a lot of trials. Ning said in surprise as she looked at the young man talking nonsense with a serious look. Legacy has to stick to the old rules. If she doesn't, Yoon suggests just forgetting the technique. Two years is so two years. The girl lets him check himself out as much as he wants. Well, let's see how you handle it, Ning. Lin Yun said after fooling the girl again. Some time later, night. City center. A red sports car is speeding down the highway. Where are we going? Sitting in the passenger seat. The boy asked Ning. The girl explains that they are heading to King Shui's most upscale shopping center. What is a mall? Based on this body's memories, is it a place where all sorts of things are sold? When Yoon warned Ning that he didn't have any money, she asked him not to worry, she wouldn't need his money. She secretly took Grandpa's card. There's no limit. You can buy whatever you want. Lin Yun was fascinated by this kind of behavior. This girl is not shy to take advantage of her family. It's right in his style. After a while, there was a huge traffic jam on the road. Looks like they're stuck here for a long time. What happened out there? Getting out of the car. The guy notices a bunch of people ahead blocking the road. There seems to have been a terrible accident there. It seems serious. The young man suggests we stay in the car for a while. It'll probably be a while. As they get out of the car, the girl says they can't just sit there. They're doctors. We need to see if anyone needs help in there. As Ning pulls him along, Yun can't understand when it was that ordinary students had time to become doctors. As we got closer, conversations began to be heard in the crowd of people. The car that provoked the accident was traveling too fast, the person behind the wheel was likely drunk. He ran a red light, hit three passersby and crashed into a white car before stopping. The two schoolgirls were not seriously injured, but that old man was thrown into the air. I don't know if he's still alive. Ling Yun, what are you waiting for? Hurry up and get busy saving people. Stepping out from the crowd, Ning said confidently, addressing the guy walking behind her. However, something greatly stressed the turned around Ling Yun. Shake it off, this feeling. Someone in the crowd is following me. Looking around at the people in the crowd, Ling Yun tries to spot the person following him. That feeling was gone. Was it only his imagination? Suddenly the guy hears the screams of a man asking the girl not to touch the old man, as he is badly hurt. But I wanted to help. Kneeling in front of the injured man, a concerned Naini said quietly. However, she's useless in this situation right now. She is only good at recognizing herbs, feeling the pulse, and simple acupuncture. The bewildered girl doesn't know how she can save a person in this situation. I'm a surgeon. Let me examine him. A man came up behind her and asked for her permission. Kneeling down in front of the elderly man, the doctor leaned over and opened his eyelids and checked the victim's pupils. An agitated surgeon reported that his injury was very serious. His pupils were dilated and his breathing and heartbeat were weak. Turning to the girl to the policeman, the man asks her if she has called an ambulance and when they will arrive. In turn, the girl replies that it is the weekend and the nearby streets are clogged with cars, so the ambulances cannot pass. The surgeon explains to a crying Naini that this elderly man must be operated on immediately, or his life could be in danger at any moment. Lin Yun, this old man is dying, please help him, shouted the girl, unable to hold back her tears, crouching down next to the injured man. The guy came up behind her and put his hand on her head telling her not to panic, since I'm here. He won't die. Leaning towards the injured elderly man, Ling Yun said confidently. When the guy tried to touch the victim's body, 
he was grabbed by the hand by a surgeon sitting nearby. Youngsters, haven't you played yet? This is an accident scene, not a playground. The doctor shouted angrily at them. Hearing such words for himself, Yun immediately looked at the surgeon with disdain. All right, then, save him yourself. Standing up on his feet, the young man said indifferently. As he turned around and tried to leave the scene, he was grabbed by Naini's arm from behind. The crying girl holding his hand, can't believe that Lin Yun is really going to just watch this old man die. Looking into her eyes, smiling, the guy asks her not to worry, this old man's condition is stable for now. He just decided to go and check on the rest of the accident victims. He asks Nin not to just sit there, but to stand up and help him, kneeling down next to the injured schoolgirl. Yoon warns her that he will stop the bleeding with acupuncture, and then set the bones. Ning, who is next to him, asks the guy how he can stay so calm when he sees so much blood. I'm used to it by now. Examining the girl's wounds, the young man calmly replied. The cultivation world is a place where the strong eat the weak, and where fighting for your life is commonplace. There, you make every move you make by pointing your sword in front of you. So Lin Yun has seen many scenes of blood pouring out in rivers. Having set the schoolgirl's bones, the guy said she could take it easy now. She'll be all right in no time. He then asked the victim how she was feeling. The surprised girl replies that she is really no longer in pain. After that, Lin Yun climbed into one of the cars that had been involved in the accident. He checked the pulse of the woman driving and said that there was nothing wrong with her either. She had just lost consciousness, taking out the golden needles that Master Xu had given him from his pocket. The guy carefully gave this woman an acupuncture. He explained to Nin that she would wake up shortly after the needles were inserted and asked the girl to stay here and observe the victim. The dumbfounded surgeon, still sitting next to the injured old man, was surprised to notice how Lin Yun, with the help of Chinese medicine, had managed so many wounds in such a short period of time. This young man is just something. Yun approached the surgeon and asked him if he would allow him to treat the old man's wounds. After seeing his skill, the surgeon did not refuse him. After giving him a seat, the medic asked if there was anything he could do to help the young man. Taking the needles out of his pocket, the guy asks the man to just keep outsiders out of here. While he does the acupuncture, Yun again tries to fill the golden needles with spiritual energy. But it's no use. In this case, since he can't engage his spiritual energy, the guy decides to rely on exposure to acupuncture points. The surgeon standing behind is shocked to notice that the entire process from probing the points to inserting the needles is done without hesitation. It's like this young man has decades of experience under his belt. But he's clearly just an ordinary teenager. People watching the Chinese medicine process don't understand what this guy is doing. Does he want to drive the poor old man to his grave? This man has brain damage, and if the needle is not inserted now, he may remain paralyzed or may never even wake up. The point on the parital. The surgeon heard that even the best doctors of Chinese medicine don't dare to use needles there lightly. Did this guy really put the needle in there without any hesitation? Inserting the last golden needle. Yun finished the acupuncture process. The old man was still lying motionless. But suddenly the old man gave a signal of life. He raised the index finger of his left hand. The gawkers who were watching this miracle shrieked in delighted amazement. This young man is simply marvelous. That old man's fingers moved. With a sigh of relief, Ling Yun sat down on the cold ground. It was really hard without spiritual strength. He had only used the nine needle technique four times, but he was so tired. While the guy was relaxing on the road, not far away from him, a drunken man, who looks a lot like a gangster, gets out of the car that caused this terrible accident. A policeman standing nearby asks the man not to resist and to cooperate with the investigation. How dare you question me? I have a lot of money. I can even afford to outbid all of them. Pointing his finger at the policewoman, the drunken man shouted furiously. Then, grabbing her by her uniform, he yelled in her face that if she talked too much, he would have someone strip her naked. After pushing her away, the inadequate man ordered her to get out of here. Zhuang Maifeng, how was it? Did you like it? Kicking the car where the injured girl was sitting, the man shouted angrily. The moment Maifeng is recovered holding her head, the inadequate man chisels his fist into the windshield of the car. A drunken man yells at the girl, 
telling her not to think that if she hides in King Shui City, he won't dare touch her. This marriage was begged for by her family, so she can't just give it up. If I don't teach you a good lesson, how will I be able to live peacefully in the capital? The inadequate man shouted angrily, reaching his hand toward the frightened Maifeng. At that moment, he was grabbed by the wrist by Ninj, who was watching the injured girl. The girl angrily explains to the drunken man that Maifeng just regained consciousness and said she wouldn't dare let him touch that woman. As he pressed himself against her, the inadequate man remarked that people were right in saying that King Shui's city had some real beauties. Looking into her eyes, he offers Ninga to fondle her tonight. Shameless. Get out of here. The girl shouted irritably, closing her eyes. As the drunken man gets even closer to her, he notices that girls in the capital used to call him that all the time. It's been a long time since you had your face cleaned. Lin Yun, who had come up from behind, asked. The inadequate man turned around angrily, glaring fiercely at the calm guy. He stared at the young man for a few more seconds, not understanding how he dared to say something like that to him. Oh, fatty, you're showing off for a pretty girl, aren't you? The man said, smiling and kneading his fists, swinging with all his might. Without hesitation, his opponent delivers a right hook to the guy's face, screaming that he's going to kick his ass. As usual, without taking his hands out of his pockets, Lin Yun dodged his opponent's first attack without straining. The next second he grabs the drunken man by his fist. The opponent screamed in unbearable pain. Yun coldly clenched his fist in his palm with all his might. Immediately afterward, letting go of his opponent, the fellow with the same hand strikes a not strong blow on his enemy's left cheek. The dumbfounded man stammering can't understand how this guy dared to hit him. He is a young gentleman of an influential family from the capital. They won't just leave Yun after what he has done. However, the young man was in no way embarrassed by this. You're making too much noise, Yun said, looking at his opponent with disdain. At the same moment, he delivers a powerful swinging leg kick to the inadequate man's chin. He doesn't give a shit who this dude is. He doesn't even know where the capital is. The young gentleman falls to the road, hitting his head on the ground. Stop fighting. The policewoman shouted angrily as she ran up to the scene of another incident. But suddenly she stopped. Her legs gave out and she couldn't even move. What's going on? Suddenly her legs were numb. Had she been so frightened by the brat's aura, Mifing, who was sitting behind the wheel of the car, stared dumbfoundedly at the guy. He even let himself beat up a son family man. What is the origin of this young man? The delighted crowd cheered as they praised Ling Yun. This rich son deserves a good beating. Fainted already. Weakling. Lin Yun grimaced as he approached the drunken man lying on the road. But I'm not done yet. The boy shouted furiously, swinging his arm for a punch. But at that moment he heard Naini shouting. She asked the young man to stop. Lin Yun stopped in surprise, looking shocked at the girl. Turning around on her. He can't believe that Naini is just so willing to spare a scumbag like this dude. Looking at the boy in bewilderment, Nine replies that she had no such idea. I just wanted to ask you to give up your seat for me. The girl explained angrily, her hands ringing, her eyes burning with anger. I remember you were going to fondle me, Naini said with a bloodthirsty smile, looking at the man grimly. While the desperate man is lying on the ground, the girl screams that she will finish him off so that he won't be able to fondle himself. As he looked at her, the young gentleman saw a fist flying at him with great speed at his face. The next few minutes were unforgettable for him. This evening he was playing the role of a punching bag for nine. After a while, the girl calmed down, venting all her accumulated anger on him, shaking her hands off the dirt. She relaxed and reported that she felt better now. Looking at Lin Yun with satisfaction, the girl asked him admiringly what he thought of her performance. The dumbfounded guy points a finger upward, awkwardly praising her. Angry women are too horrible. From now on, it's best not to provoke her. At that moment, someone behind him called out to the young man. Maifeng, still sitting behind the wheel of the car, asks Yun to come over to her for a moment. Walking up to the car, the guy looks out the window and asks the girl how she's feeling. Maifeng says she feels much better and thanks Yun for his help. The guy is very happy that she is feeling better. He asks the girl for permission to take the needle away from her now that she is conscious. Opening the car door, Yun leans over to Maifeng, trying to find the golden needle. 
He snuggled too close to her. That kind of movement makes a girl very uncomfortable. But why doesn't this young man react in any way? All the men she had met before, without exception, always looked at her with a lustful gaze. Only this guy's different. After taking the golden needle, Ling Yun looked into the girl's eyes and asked her to rest for now. He still has to remove the needles from the others. Closing the car door, Yun calmly walks away, while a surprised Mifing stares after him. Damn, she had such a gorgeous body. The view was amazing. I could hardly resist, he thought in admiration as he stepped away from the car. At that moment, a girl running up behind him grabbed his arm. Lin Yun can't understand why she was so attracted to him. Was she so fascinated by the way he pulled out the needle? Turning back to her, the young man inquired what had happened. My name is Zhuang Maifeng. By the way, could you leave me your phone number? Looking at him, the girl asked charmingly. In turn, the surprised guy explains to her that he doesn't have a cell phone. The disappointed Maifeng understood immediately. So that's how it is. He says there's no phone. He probably just doesn't want to contact her in any way. But I'm studying at King Shui High School. My senior year. So if you need anything, you can find me there. Smiling candidly, Lin Yun explained. The surprised girl asked him if he really studied there. The guy, perplexed, confirms, and then wonders what's the big deal. Waving it off, Maifeng explains that she didn't expect that Yun is still in school, since she's so knowledgeable about Chinese medicine. Awkwardly looking at her feet, the girl realizes that she has escaped from her marriage and therefore cannot return to the Zhuang family. But the thing is, the third beauty of his school, Mina, is also from the Zhuang family. She decides not to tell Yun about her relationship with this girl. Taking the boy's hand, Maifeng takes a pencil out of her pocket and writes her phone number on his wrist. She asks the young man to call anytime he wants. She then worriedly explains that the Sun family is one of the most powerful in the capital. Since Yoon had beaten their heir, they would surely want to retaliate. Suddenly, she makes a sharp movement towards Ling Yun. As she hugs him and looks into his eyes, the girl promises to do her best to protect him when the time comes. The boy looks at Maifeng in surprise. Do all the girls in this world take the initiative? Taking her hands in his, Yoon replies that he certainly appreciates her willingness to protect him, but the guy asks her to take care of herself for now. Looking at her, he remembers that he's not the only one who beat up that dude. There is another little devil, Nine, and she's got a lot of clout too. Lin Yun, you're such a good person. Admiringly looking at the warmly smiling guy in the eyes, Maifeng says. Ning, standing nearby, realizes how much of a womanizer Lin Yun is. There is already a beautiful woman next to him, and he is flirting with others. Running up and snatching the guy out of Maifeng's arms, the girl looks at him and informs him that the ambulance is already here. All right, I'll get the needles out of the old man now, and we can go shopping. After paying attention to her, Yun replied. But as much as they wanted to, a police officer blocked their way and explained that they couldn't leave now. Blocking their way, the policewoman explained that the two had jointly assaulted a man in the street. And now they should proceed with her to the station. The outraged Ning yells that when this Sun Sheen tried to attack a harmless girl, the policeman didn't even pay attention to it. Ling Yun and I may have saved her life, and you want to take us away. What kind of logic is this? She asked angrily. The surgeon coming up from behind explains that it was wrong of Ling Yun to hit someone, but he was trying to protect this girl. And besides, it was only with his help that the old man was saved. Maifeng agrees with the doctor. It's not their fault. She promises to go to the station herself and explain the situation. The policeman, looking at them tensely, can't get over it. The partner who came up behind her called the girl Wang Min and asked why she wouldn't turn a blind eye. It's unlikely that Sun Xing is seriously injured, and these guys are just high school students. Let's let them go. Putting a hand on her shoulder, her colleague suggested. A concerned Min whispers in her partner's ear, asking if he remembers what Sun Xing said earlier. His family is clearly not an easy one. If they don't arrest these two now, they might be in trouble later. It's no use defending them. If you have anything to say, say it all at the station, shouted the policeman, pointing her finger menacingly at them. Ah so, then come over here and try to arrest me. I promise you'll regret it, shouted back an angry ninja, rolling up her sleeves. 
Am I right, Ling Yun, turning around to the guy standing next to him, the girl asked his opinions, however turning her head, Ningan noticed that this dude hadn't been here for a long time, where did he go? After looking around a bit, she notices Yoon sitting next to an old man injured in the accident, opening his eyes, talking a little, the older man quietly asks the guy what his name is, the young man says his name and asks the old man not to worry, when he is well rested, he will be able to return to his old life, thank you, smiling, the man spoke slowly, looking up into the face of his savior, people in the crowd noticed that this old man had spoken, this guy is amazing, he really saved his life, gawkers, outraged that the police are trying to arrest the two men, shouts that it was Sun Sheen who first started with threats and got into a fight, Wang Min, ah, the policeman looked at his tense partner, unable to find the right words, at this time, Ling Yun, grabbing Ning's hand, asks her not to say anything stupid, and suggests that she just leave, the two decided to head to their car, still stuck in traffic, passing by a tense man, no, stop, shouted the policeman, blocking their passage with her hand, she doesn't understand at all, does she, Lin Yun looked at her with shame, at the same second, he touched her foot with two fingers, after that touch, Wang Ming felt bad, her body no longer obeyed her, she leaned on her worried partner to keep from falling, what happened, suddenly she couldn't feel her body anymore, let's go, Lin Yun, my Audi R8 is still parked there, in case someone scratches it, Ninj said mockingly while holding her boyfriend's hand while looking at the police officers, hearing these words, Wang Min fainted, how could such a young girl have such an expensive car, what a stupid thing I've done, shouted the policewoman, looking desperately up into the sky, Holding a huge pile of bags and bags of various purchases, Lin Yun is exhausted. After putting all the bags in the back seat, trying to catch his breath, the guy realizes that this little witch is a shopaholic. Taking a seat next to her at the driver's seat and inspecting her brand new shirt, Nin happily tells her poor companion that it's been a while since she's been out shopping. She doesn't understand what her friend is tired of, since she picked out her own clothes and phone for him, he basically did nothing and just walked around, it doesn't make sense, and it was all his own fault that they'd been in the store so long, because he was so fat, she couldn't even find him a suit that fit, it was a nightmare to find any clothes that fit him, what, I'm not losing weight, look at me in two months, I promise, by then I'll weigh 75 kilograms at most, putting his hands behind his head and looking at the girl, Ling Yun promised, Nine noticed that the young man now weighed at least a hundred pounds, does he mean to say that he will lose thirty pounds in two months, I can't even believe it, looking away, embarrassed, she says that the guy isn't bad looking right now, she tells him not to worry about it, Nine has nothing against being overweight, snotty, I'm going to be even better, so don't be surprised when I lose weight, thought Lin Yun with an angry look at her, at that moment, a call came in on the cell phone lying in the car. Looking at him, an annoyed Nini doesn't understand what he wants again. Lee Kingchu, didn't I tell you not to call me? The girl said irritably after answering the call. Lee Kingchu is the number one major in Kingshui City. Upon hearing such a strange answer, the guy explains that he doesn't call that often. After all, it's only his first call today. He explains to Nine that he can't decide on a present for her upcoming birthday. The guy asks her what she likes. The girl irritably replies that any gift he gives her will not be to her liking and asks him not to waste his time. I don't care if you like me or not. I just care that I like you. Okay, then I'll just send everything I bought, said the guy in response to this dismissive attitude. Taken aback, the girl asks King Chu to just tell her what he likes about her and then she'll try to change that about herself. At this moment, hearing their conversation, Lin Yun, who was sitting next to him, couldn't hold back his laughter. Hearing his quiet laughter, King Chu shouts into the phone. He asks the girl whose voice it is, and why there is a man beside her. Why shouldn't he be? We had dinner and went shopping together tonight. We also did a lot of different things that you don't even know about. Ning explained with a mocking smirk. While Yun stared at her in a stupor and stone-faced, not believing his ears, King Chu nervously asks who this guy is, and what their relationship is, with a sly glance at Ling Yun, the girl immediately answered the question, 
Him, my boyfriend, a reply came from the phone. Hearing this, King Chu immediately dropped the call. Nine has a boyfriend. He's been chasing her for two years and she has a boyfriend. Where on earth did he come from? The boy said angrily aloud. During the night, the phone rang. Annoyed, Tanman picked up the phone and asked who was calling him in the middle of the night. Oh, good evening to you too, brother King Chu. Aren't you in Beijing? Why did you call all of a sudden? The blue-haired boy shouted in delight, forgetting his desire for sleep. When he explained the situation to him, Tanman promised brother King Chu that he would find the bastard who had dared to get close to Nine. He asks his friend to be calm, explaining that he'll take care of it. Sneezing, Ling Yun rubs his nose with his finger. Why does he feel like someone is cursing at him behind his back? Turning to the boy, hopefully, Nin begs him to pretend to be her boyfriend for a while. No, I can't, the young man replies indifferently. This Hellcat's family is pretty powerful, but Li Qingxu is following her without any fear. Which means that this guy's family is unusual too. Yun's best tactic right now is not to get involved in all this, or else there will be trouble later. Well, Ling Yun, I bought you so many things. Why can't you do me a small favor? Pressing against the hand of the embarrassed guy, the girl continued to plead. She promises the young man that she will buy him something else. After all, her boyfriend can't lose at anything to Lee Kingchu. Hearing such an incredible argument and realizing what he would be able to afford as a result of this deal, the guy smiled lustfully in delight. Coughing, Yoon agrees to help her and at the same time asks how long it will take him to do it. An overjoyed Ning explains that it won't take long. She asks him to just make sure this Lee Kingshu guy gets away from her for good. Remembering her recent conversation with this guy, Yun realized he wasn't going to get away with it. A stalker like that wasn't going to give up quickly. Suddenly, glancing at the girl pressed against his arm, the young man realized something. Wait a minute, so I'm supposed to pretend to be this girl's boyfriend the whole time? Oh shit, I was tricked into getting on a pirate ship. King Shui Middle School. The evening of the same day. Looking around the classroom, Shan Shan was concerned that Ling Yun had missed the entire evening self-training. Is he deliberately avoiding her? Running into the office, Lin yells to her friend about Yun showing up. Approaching her panting friend, the goddess asks where he is, trying to catch her breath. The green-haired girl replies that the guy was found a few minutes ago near the dormitory. He was seen getting out of a red Audi R8. The dumbfounded Shan Chan can't believe his ears. How could he have risen so much in one evening? Lin Ju stands alone outside the dormitory, waiting for his brother. Suddenly, out of nowhere, she is approached by Lin, who is cheerfully greeting her and Shan Chan, who is making an indifferent appearance. Noticing them, she, smiling, asks what they are doing here. Chan Chan, have you come to see my brother? The pink-haired girl inquired. In response, the goddess simply nodded. At the same moment, Lin Yun came out of the dormitory door, greeting his sister. Ignoring the remaining two girlfriends, he walks past them indifferently. Walking up to Lin Ju, her brother informed her that he was ready, and now they could go home. Lin Yun, an angry Chan Chan shouted at the guy. She ran up to the young man and grabbed his hand tightly. Follow me, pulling him away. The goddess said angrily, smirking, the boy grinningly asks the headman where she's dragging him to. The concerned girl, taking him a little farther away so no one could hear their conversation, reminds him that he skipped class to go shopping. He bought a lot of different things, scratching the back of his head. Ling Yun is surprised that the headman already knows about this. In fact, he himself thinks that it all cost him too much. But the guy couldn't stop the person next to him when he decided to buy something. The person you're talking about, was it a guy? Shan Shan inquires with hope in her voice. In turn, the young man replies that she is wrong and it was a girl. Even more angry, the goddess asks the young man if he realizes what he is doing. She asks him if he wants to go to university at all. Withdrawing his gaze, Yun replies that he of course wants to do well in the exams. However, something puzzled him a bit. Headman, what does what I do have to do with you? The boy asked indifferently to the girl who was worried about him. Such words greatly offended Shan Chan. Ling Yun, apparently, you need to be taught a good lesson. Swinging her leg, the Madden goddess shouted. But once again, something she didn't expect happened. Yun easily grabbed her leg. From what she saw, Lin Ju, who was watching this, gaped in surprise. 
Holding the school's first beauty by her foot with a few fingers, Ling Yun voices his concerns to the head teacher. They were just standing there chatting. Why is she kicking all of a sudden? The next second the guy yanked her leg and pulled the trembling girl against him. The goddess tries to push Yuno away, asking him to let her go. So you can try to kick me again. Pulling her even tighter against him, the boy asked. Looking around Chan Chan doesn't understand why more and more gawkers are gathering. The people in the gathered crowd were surprised that Yun managed to catch Shan Chan's punch. She's been practicing. There aren't many guys in the school who can beat her. Even the school's first beauty wasn't spared. That's what you'd expect from the boss. He's got a daring air about him. Tangman, who had appeared in the crowd like a script, shouted while looking at Yun with admiration. A surprised Lin Jiu asks the blue-haired boy where he came from. Tanman replies by explaining that he came to watch the fun too. Oh, well, we also live in the Matrix, and his appearance was written into the source code. What? In fact, he found out yesterday that she and Ling Yun were going to go home. He saw this as a great opportunity to accompany her, pointing his finger at those two. Lin asks why Lin Yun still hasn't let go of Shan Chan. He's not addicted to hugs there by any chance. The guys in the dormitory started shouting for everyone to go downstairs quickly, so they wouldn't miss the performance. They began to cheer Lin Yun up with their voices. Lin Yun, can't you just let me go already? The goddess asked quietly, no longer trying to push him away. In response, the guy takes a moment to notice how many disciples have come to see this. Therefore, he decides to wait a little longer, exhaling, Shan Chan says she won't resist in that case. She asks the young man to come closer so she can tell him a secret. Which one? Moving closer and placing his palm on her head, Yun inquired. At the same moment, the goddess grabbed his arm and bit him. What the hell? What are you? A dog. Why are you biting me? Holding his hand, Ling Yun shouted after the fleeing girl. Wiping her mouth, Shan Chan promises the boy that she will remind him of today. She warns him that if he skips class again, she will bite him hard. Walking away and not looking back at him, the goddess tells Lin to get out of here. Ah, uh, good, muttered the green-haired girl, catching up with her friend, running up to Yoon. The concerned sister asks him if his arm hurts. At this moment, the cultivator notices that Lin Ju's body is emitting a huge amount of spiritual energy. Looking at her admiringly, the young man remembers that his sister has an innate spiritual body. At the same second, the guy starts absorbing energy with his special cultivation abilities. Ah, that feels good. I spent a lot of spiritual power today. So I need to take this opportunity to replenish it. Yun thought, enjoying the absorption process. Linju, let me help you support the boss. Shouted the running up Tanman joyfully. Stay away, Lin Yun said menacingly, giving him a stern look. Such an abrupt change in his mood greatly frightened the blue-haired boy. Got it, obediently, shouted Tanman, striking a pose as if he were a British guardsman. Not abandoning his attempts to spend this evening with Lin Jiu, the blue-haired guy standing aside offers his boss a ride in his car. He knows that their house is most likely far from the school, and the last bus trip has already passed. Hearing those words, Yun looked at the blue-haired guy suspiciously. Tanman, I don't get it. So what are you standing there for? Come join us, friend. With a drastic change in demeanor, smiling in a friendly manner, Ling Yun said. Pulling into the yards, Yun asks Tanman to stop here. Their house is here. Getting out of the car. The guy looked around the alley with a disappointed face. As he looked at the building in front of him, he realized that this house was completely different from the one Master Xu lived in. Noticing her brother's worried face, Lin Ju approached him and asked him what was wrong. With a smile, Yun replied that everything was fine, but someday he'll move his little sister and mom into a big house. The young man informs Tanman that he and his sister will go first, and he asks the blue-haired guy to carry the stuff from the car. When Tangman approached the trunk, he noticed a huge pile of bags. He asks Yoon if he has to carry it all by himself. His friend in turn suggests that he should go back if he can't fulfill such a simple request. No boss, I'll carry it all, replied the faithful Tanman in obedience. This man's name is Tian Baidao, and he is the head of the street organization department. Slyly looking at Xiao Ken, the man tells her that this clinic has many problems in all areas. If an inspection comes soon, they will be shut down immediately. Badao explains that, of course, 
things will be different with his help. The woman sitting across from him does not react to his words, typing something on her computer. The man is greatly pissed off that Ken dares to ignore him, fixing his glasses. He tells me that the place will be demolished soon. However, he knows the developer very well and can help if needed. Abruptly opening the door, Linju runs into the room. She happily tells her mother that her brother has also returned with her. The moment the girl runs past Badao, the man casts a lustful glance at her. A man comes up with a plan to get Xiao Qin to cooperate with him. The woman tells her daughter that she already told her daughter about their arrival yesterday on the phone. A happy Linju explains that she is just very excited. Mom, I'm home, walking into the house, smiling, Ling Yun said. As his mom greets him, the boy passes by Bado as well. Xiao Qin, is this your daughter? The man sitting across from me inquired. As he rises from his chair, he notices how beautiful Lin Yu is, fixing his collar. He asks the girl to come over to him to get to know him better. But at this moment, Lin Yun stood in front of the man at full height, looking at him with disdain. Hey, are you sick? Throwing a look of disgust, the guy asked him. An angry Bado interrogated the young man on what he had just said. I'm saying you're kind of weak, quite possibly due to excessive drinking and sexual activity. Walking closer and looking down at him from above, Ling Yun said. The man doesn't understand what kind of nonsense this insolent boy is talking about. Does he even know who he's talking to? Bado demands an apology or else. Without letting the uncle speak, Yun immediately blows his face off with a powerful punch. The concerned sister tries to quiet her brother, while the mother just watches this beating. Boss, shouted Tanman, who flew into the room. Leave him to me. The blue-haired boy yelled angrily, looking at him. Lin Yun did not expect his friend to take such a sudden initiative. In the next second, the enraged Tanman, without stopping, began to deliver blow after blow to the man's face. After launching several hard attacks to the face, the blue-haired guy punched Badao's chest with all his might. The blow was so strong that blood spurted from the man's mouth. Looking at the infuriated Tanman in surprise, Lin Yun can't understand what it is that made his friend so angry. Trying to crawl away from the blue-haired guy, Badao asks in desperation how the man dared to hit him. Not listening to his victim, Tanman grabbed him firmly by the collar. As the man begs to be let go, the blue-haired guy drags him across the floor and carries him out of the room. Get out, and never show your face to me again, shouted Tanman, throwing the fat man out of the house with his face in the ground. Walking back in and exhaling with relief, the blue-haired guy said contentedly that the interference was finally gone. Looking at his friend fearfully, Ling Yun asked Tanman if he really knew this man. Nope, he actually just saw Yun hit that fatty. So he rushed over to join in. My friend didn't expect to hear that. He thought Tanman had a beef with that dude. Exhaling, Lin Yun realized that today's youths were overly irritable. Yun put his hand on his friend's shoulder and introduced him to his mother and told her that this was the guy who had taken them here. Smiling sweetly, Xiao Kim thanks the blue haired guy for helping her aunt chase that rascal away. You're welcome. I just did what I had to do, shouted Tanman, admiring Yuna's mom. Slapping his friend on the back of his head with the palm of his hand, Ling Yun asks him to calm down a bit, or he's about to drool. Holding his hand to the back of his head, the blue-haired guy apologizes to his boss. He explains that it's because his aunt is too young and beautiful. The mother asks her son to stop treating the guests like this, and hurry up and invite his friend into the living room for tea. You really are the kindest aunt in the world. Tanman sat in tears, enchanted. She's nothing like her two children. He didn't say that out loud, lest he be slapped again. Grinning at this reaction from her friend, smiling, Linju asked Mr. Tang to come to the table. Finally unable to contain his admiration, Tanman cried out as Linju smiled at him. He had finally made it. At this moment, while his tears were flowing in streams from behind, a hand was placed on his shoulder by Lin Yun standing beside him. Hugging him, Yun glared menacingly at his face, explaining that if the blue-haired guy wanted to eat with them, he should go and cut up the lobster. After saying that, Tangman smiled even more happily. He's also staying for dinner. As he chuckles, he realizes that he has indeed successfully joined their family. Some time later, standing in the kitchen with her mother preparing dinner, Lin Yu asks her why she didn't stop the guys, 
when they were beating up that man. The woman replies to her daughter that there was no need to interrupt them. That man deserved it. Concerned Linju asks what they will do if Tian Bada wants revenge. In turn, Kin asks his daughter to remember something. Running away and being patient will not keep you out of trouble. With a glance at Linju, she explains that if someone bullies her in the future, she should act like her brother. The woman asks to always fight back to protect herself. With a disgruntled look at her, the pink-haired girl reluctantly agrees. Afterward, she asked her mother why she never called on her brother to fight back, even though he had been bullied all these years. Kin explains that Ling Yun is a very intelligent boy, however, his worries are too heavy, and some truths can only be understood by him. Besides, with a chagrin lowering of her gaze, the woman did not finish. This kind of mother's behavior greatly surprised Lin Ju. Smiling, Kin asks her daughter to forget, and reminds her that the lobster will be ready soon. She asks the girl to bring her two large plates. As he leaves to get plates Lin Ju looks back at his mom, and can't figure out why she's so weird today. When her daughter left, Kin had something on her mind. She hadn't eaten lobster since Tianya her husband disappeared. She never would have thought that today. Ling Yun would buy it for her again. It would be fine from now on. After looking around the apartment, Tanman turns to his boss, who is wiping down the kitchen table with a rag. Based on what he saw around him, he realized that Lin Yun's family was having a hard time. Still wiping the table, Yun agreed with that. That was why he needed money. Lots and lots of money. Tanman, you know what I mean, don't you? The boy muttered eerily. Looking at his friend, hearing such unexpected words, the blue-haired guy stands in a stupor for a few more seconds, trying to understand what Yun means. He wants to take money from me. Tanman realized with horror, looking at his friend with fear. Could it be that this extortionist hadn't even bothered to think of a pretext for it this time? Tanman grew up in an affluent environment. He was fed, clothed and provided with the best of everything. For every Chinese New Year, he received at least 100,000 yuan but he never thought he was living anything special, until today. Just now on the way here, the guy was bragging about how expensive his car was. He didn't pay attention to Lin Ju and the boss's feelings. Trying to hold back tears, Tanman realized something. It was perfectly reasonable to give money to help his brother. If the boss asked, he had no reason to refuse. With a surprised look at Tanman's snotty face, Lin Yun tries to figure out what's wrong with this guy. Suddenly they started talking together. Yoon said that he had a way to make money, and he wanted his friend to join him and help. At the same moment, Tanman said decisively that when he returned, he would sell the car and give the proceeds to his boss. Yoon clearly didn't expect such words. What was going on in that dude's head all this time? Boss, didn't you want to take the money from me? Noticing his friend's surprised face. The blue-haired guy inquired, how did you even come to such a thing? Would I do such a shameful act? Yun asked in surprise, well, isn't that all he's been doing the last few days? Tangman wonders to his boss what kind of method he came up with. Lin Yun reminds his friend that he is known at school as the little god of gambling. Leaning over to the blue-haired lad, the young man suggests that this time they play big. At the same moment Tanman is strongly fired up about the idea. He asks his friend what he wants to open bets on. Next month is the fall sports festival. No, take bets on whether I can get into university, which university I can get into, and how many points I can score. Slyly looking at the boy, Yun said, friend can't understand what the point of betting on this is. Everyone already knows that Yun won't get in. The next second, a good fist bump landed on Tanman's head. While he's holding his head, an angry Ling Yun tells the man that he doesn't know anything. In the end, the young man is sure to get into Yanjing University. A concerned Tanman grabs his boss by the shoulders. Of course he knows Yun is cool and all. But he suggests we be realistic. It's Yanjing University. You can't get in by cramming alone. It's much better if he sells the car and gives the money to a friend. For his part. Lin Yun reminds the excited boy of the time he ran on the school's sports field. The dumbfounded Tanman, remembering this, was petrified. Yes, he thought it would be impossible for the boss to run 11 laps with a bag of sand. But in the end he did it. If this is the case, then enrolling in Yanjing University may not just be a dream either. Okay, I'll take my chances. The blue-haired boy replied decisively, 
looking at his boss, placing his hand on his friend's shoulder. Ling Yun asked him not to worry, with him, the guy was in safe hands. As he approached Tanmen, the young man said something in his ear, whatever you need is, boss, this is so mean, isn't this how we're going to rip off Jun Yang, Junfa, and the others, the blue-haired boy shouted admiringly, inquiring, when his sister came up behind him, Yoon explained to his friend that there was simply no other way to get a lot of money, except by cheating them, standing nearby with a pot in hand, Linju asks her brother and Tanmen to finish thinking about deceiving people and sit down to dinner. After a while, when the mother and daughter had set the table, everyone sat down to eat dinner together. Kin asks Tanmen not to be shy and to make himself at home. The blue-haired guy reached for a piece of meat with his chopsticks before bringing it to his mouth and eating it. The taste of real home-cooked food struck the young man hard. While Auntie Kin asks the guy how he likes her cooking, Tanman can't figure out where she got her skill from, surely she's just a doctor at a street clinic. To be frank, Tanman could be called a foodie to some extent, but Auntie's culinary skills would have made her a goddess in any restaurant. Why does a man of this caliber live in this shabby clinic? Looking back in the past, the guy never felt embarrassed even in front of a girl, but in front of Auntie Kin, he somehow felt uncomfortable. She has a special aura about her, her gaze makes you feel like you're being seen through. Noticing the strange expression on his friend's face, Ling Yun asked him why he was suddenly so petrified. Kin asks Tanmen if the food was not to his liking. The blue-haired guy was ready to talk about the splendor of this food and praise Yun's mom in all colors, but when he noticed the boss's stern gaze on him, he was scared and changed his mind abruptly. No, no, it's all delicious. Tanmen shouted as he gorged on the rice, glancing at the satisfied Ling Yun, taking her eyes away. The mother asked her son to eat a little more too. She noticed that he seemed to have lost weight. Yoon in turn asked his mom not to worry. He explained to her that he was on a diet. You can't always be fat. Indeed, clothes look better on a slender body too. Hearing this, Kin said excitedly. Ling Yun is surprised that mom took it all so easily. He thought he would have had to explain it a lot more. Today, he had bought a bunch of things and even took the initiative to teach Tian Bado a lesson. The guy was a completely different person now compared to the former, weak and incompetent Ling Yun. But why was mom not surprised in the least, but took it for granted? After thinking about it all for a bit, Yun came to an obvious conclusion. Of course she did. Mom single-handedly raised two kids. She obviously has abilities and insight that no one can match. After dinner, Yoon sees Tang Man off. When he says goodbye, the blue-haired guy tells his boss that it's time for him to go and that he'll visit them some other time. If you're going to dine with us again, do us one favor. Ling Yun said with a menacing look at him. The young man explains that he would like to rent an apartment near the school and asks his friend to find a suitable option. Why would the boss suddenly want to rent a place? Is he really planning to have a relationship with Shan Shan? After thinking about it, Lin Yun adds that he needs the apartment to be not too far from school, but preferably in a quiet neighborhood. He doesn't want to run into too many people. Walking over to him and tapping his boss on the shoulder, Tanmen laughed and said he understood. What did that asshole figure out there? Yun thought with shame as he looked at his friend's confident look. The young man tells a delighted Tanmen that he would like to move in no later than Monday evening and asks him to get on with it as soon as possible. It's still the same night. Somewhere in the city, Tanman drives his car back to the dormitory. Sitting behind the wheel and exhaling, the blue-haired guy ponders everything that happened during dinner. There are three people in the boss's family, and they all have a different last name. In addition, although Aunt Kin is dressed in ordinary clothes, her demeanor is far beyond that of ordinary people. A, the boss's family has more secrets than he could ever imagine. Some time later that evening, Lin Yun informs his mom and sister that he went for a run. The drive from his house to the Seven Luminaries Grass takes about 50 minutes by car. Returning home too late would arouse unnecessary suspicion, so Yun decides to speed up a bit. Only he didn't think about the suspicions that his supersonic speed would arouse in the driver of a passing truck. Fortunately the man never realized it had flown past him, not bad, the guy reached the river in only 40 minutes. When he ran up to the water body, he immediately undressed and threw his clothes on the bank. 
He still had some strength left, and so he set about exhausting himself by swimming for speed. After swimming for a bit, he made his way back to shore. Phew, I've finally used up all the spiritual energy in my body. Ling Yun muttered, sitting down in the lotus posture on the ground, sitting next to the grass of seven luminaries. The guy began the process of moving to the second level of body hardening. After reaching the second level of body hardening, all aspects of the body will be perfected. The amount of spiritual energy that could be absorbed would also increase. The second level has been successfully achieved. It's immortal spiritual energy. She was the one who protected his original spirit while traveling through time and crossing the tribulation. The young man's body began to fill with an incredible amount of spiritual energy. After completing the process, Ling Yun slowly opened his eyes. I thought that my spiritual energy was completely depleted after crossing time, but it turns out that it was hidden in my body. The cultivator spoke happily. Great, although he wouldn't be able to use it now, this immortal spiritual energy would be very useful to his cultivation. Gosh, you're good to me after all, Yun said, looking up at the starry sky. Strike while the iron is hot. A guy decides to practice the valuable technique of 50 multiple stars. At this moment, a tremendous energy of stars rained down from the sky on him. It was early the next morning. Ling Yun, standing up on his feet, can't believe that he had been practicing until the wee hours of the morning. He'd better get home before Lin Ju and mom worry about him. A few minutes later, not far from Lin Yun's mom's clinic, a mob of hooligans stomp on the vegetables with their feet, while a woman tearfully asks them to stop. Trying to stop them, the pregnant woman explains to the guys that these vegetables she just brought in. While she calls for help, the bandits explain to Liu Li that this is their territory, and they didn't allow her to sell vegetables here. Standing nearby, Lin Yun watches with shame as a group of men abuse a pregnant woman right in the middle of the street. As gets close to Liu Li, one of the bandits explains to her that even if she screams at the top of her voice, no one will help her. He tells her that if she wants to stay, she must pay. The woman explains to him that she gave all her money to her husband to pay his medical bills, and she really has nothing else left. No money. Then you can pay in other ways. With a nasty look at her, the bandit said, leaning close to her. He suggests she come to the bar tonight and chat with him, and then Liu Li can sell anything she wants. Holding her stomach, the woman explains that she has been going to the hospital since the evening to care for her husband, and has no time. Oh, then I'll come with you to the hospital too. We'll make those movies right in front of him. I'm a famous director by the way. Grabbing the frightened Liu Li by the chin and looking into her eyes, the man shouted, calling the scum a bastard. The woman tried to slap him, but the thug easily dodged. Oh, you stupid scum. Did you decide to fight me? The extortionist looked at Liu Li with a smirk. Swinging around, he decides to teach the woman a lesson and add some color to her sullen appearance. Out of hopelessness, Liu Li turned away and squeezed her eyes shut. After a few seconds, surprised at the fact that her face still hasn't been blown off, the woman opens her eyes to look at what's going on. While Ling Yun is holding the bandit's hand, an irritated man, not realizing who it is, demands to let him go now. He introduces himself as Chian Badao's nephew. There's that stooge again, thought the young man, looking at the angry bandit. In the next second, Yun squeezed that bastard's hand with all his might, groaning in unbearable pain. The man screamed at the top of his voice, grabbing his arm and screaming. The bandit bounced away from the guy to a safe distance. Looking at the agitated Liu Li, the young man asked her if she was okay. The woman in turn, without answering his question, asks the guy to run away quickly. These people are not to be trifled with, calming her down. Lin Yun explains that it's fine. He had just finished practicing, so he didn't mind stretching his arms. This dude swears like a cobbler here, but I'll write it softer, so YouTube doesn't kick my ass. Bastard. He's going for a workout. Guys, let's beat him to death. Pointing his finger at Yun, Badao's nephew shouted angrily. At the same moment, pulling out knives and rebar, the bandits pounced on the motionless young man. Turning around, Lin Yun simply grabbed one of the bandits by the wrist and with all his might, squeezed and knocked the knife out of his hand. In his next move, he swings his leg straight into the chest of his second opponent. A frightened woman, screaming, warns the guy about the danger behind him. 
I'll kill you fatty. The gang leader shouted angrily, swinging the rebar, turning around on him and grinning eerily. Ling Yun realized that this was a good chance to test how much the 50-fold star technique had transformed his body. Not dodging the attack, the young man slammed his fist into his opponent's armature. With all his might in response, from such a powerful blow, the weapon jumped out of the enemy's hands and flew straight into his head. Badao's nephew immediately fell off his feet, collapsing onto the cold ground, gently blowing on his fist. Ling Yun feels that although there are no injuries, it still hurts a bit. He really needs to keep practicing. A concerned Liu Li approaches the guy and asks if he is hurt. In response, the young man says that he is fine, and he was just having fun with them. The surprised woman doesn't understand what he means, is that really what you call it, just having fun? Suddenly, the pregnant woman had a severe headache and grabbed her head with her hand. Liu Li loses her balance and falls into the guy's arms. Lin Yun asks her aunt how often she's been feeling sick lately. She's been having headaches and palpitations for some reason. The young man fears that if the woman keeps this up, she and her child will be in danger. The frightened woman, trying to hold back tears, asks what she should do then. Lin Yun, putting his hand on her shoulder, tells his aunt not to worry, he tells her that his family has a clinic, the guy invites Liu Li to go there tonight, so he can check her out, the woman asks the young man admiringly if he can really cure her, absolutely, Yun said, digging around and looking for something in his pocket, taking money out of his pocket, the guy holds it out to the woman, saying that he noticed the fact that she was having money problems, I can't, I can't take your money, trying to wave it away, the dumbfounded Liu Li shouted, grasping her hand firmly. The young man placed the bills directly into her palm. Since the vegetables the woman wanted to sell have spoiled those awful, Lin Yun asks to take the money and pay her husband's medical bills. After crying and clutching the money to her chest, Liu Li thanks the guy. She doesn't even know how she can repay him for such a kind deed. The young man, smiling warmly, says there is no need for that, and asks the woman to go home. He warns her not to open the stall for at least a couple of days. For the sake of herself and her child, she should take some rest at home. Looking after her, Lin Yun feels that good deeds are even somehow refreshing. Suddenly, cosplaying an ancient Greek sage with tears in his eyes, the guy realizes that he gave away all the money he had with him. Somehow too much payment for a good deed. Damn, that hurts. Badao's nephew said quietly as he opened his eyes. I wish I hadn't said anything, just pretend to be unconscious and everything would have been fine. However, Ling Yun, because of those sighs, remembered him. Walking up to the bandit leader trying to pretend like he was passed out, the guy glared at him with disdain. Don't pretend, I know you're conscious, muttered the young man. Looking up at the man, lifting himself up, the man asked fearfully what the boy wanted, showing his victim his red fist of his right hand which he used to smack away the rebar, Yoon asked the man if he could see it. The dumbfounded bandit of course doesn't understand what this is all about, or what the young man needs, pointing his finger at his fist and smiling grimly. Ling Yun explains that Badao's nephew hurt his hand. He asks him to pay for the medical expenses. The man stared at him uncomprehendingly and fell into a stupor. Then he shouted to the whole alley that he was much more hurt, grabbing the bastard by the scruff of the neck and threatening him with his fist. Yun realized that since he still had the strength to scream, he hadn't been hit enough. Realizing what the guy was getting at, the bandit immediately agreed to pay. While the enthusiastic young man counts out the money, Badao's nephew sitting nearby, angrily promises the bastard that this isn't the end. At the same time, sitting in her house, Liu Li is pondering everything that happened. She feels that it would be unconscionable for her to do nothing after this guy helped her so much. She recalls the last time she visited her husband. The man offered to sell her an item that had been passed down in their family for hundreds of years. After all, it is too difficult for a wife without him. Liu Li naturally refused to sell this item, it's their family heirloom, grinning. The ailing husband asks if she can be called that, it's just an object stolen from the tomb, how can it be more important than family? The woman believes that this kid's kindness can't just be left behind, she pulls out a large suitcase and sets it on the table. Opening this suitcase, Liu Li takes out a small wooden box from there, 
The woman hopes very much that this young man will not refuse to accept this gift. Walking into the alley where his apartment is located, Ling Yun slowly rambles home. A worried sister is already waiting for him at the entrance. Running up to her brother she hugs him and asks him why it took him so long to come back. Luckily the young man has come up with an excuse beforehand. Scratching the back of his head, he apologizes to his sister and explains that he was a little tired after his run and fell asleep on the grass by the side of the road. Lin Ju, looking into his eyes, says that her brother doesn't need to train so hard. She thinks the guy is handsome just the way he is. In response, Ling Yun clarifies that it's not enough. He's the older brother and he needs to protect his sister and mom. Running into the apartment, Lin Ju happily informs her mother, who is reading a book, that Yoon is back. The girl, holding her brother's hand, leads him inside as well. Seeing her son, Kin looked at him strangely. Looking at the woman, Yoon, smiling lovingly, apologizes to his mother. But as soon as the young man was about to give the reason why he came back so late, the woman immediately turned back to her book. She's glad her son is back but she asks him to warn his little sister next time he's going to be late so she won't worry. The son can't find the words to say anything in response. You're reacting too calmly, mom, as if you're not at all interested in what I've been up to. Lin Yun thought worriedly. Lin Ju knocks on the door to her brother's room, saying she brought him clothes. Wiping his wet head after a shower, the guy thanks his sister and asks to pass. After going inside and handing him his clothes, Lin Ju, blushing the slightest bit, noticed that her brother seemed to have actually lost a bit of weight. Surely, there must be results from my training, Yun exclaimed as he put on his t-shirt, fully putting on his t-shirt. The guy found his sister's chest in front of him, wondering from him what kind of wooden box he had brought here yesterday. As the young man coughs up what he's seen, the girl worriedly asks him what happened to him. Unfortunately for him, Lin Ju didn't understand the reason for such a harsh reaction and clung to him even tighter. Lin Yun says he's fine and asks him to just go and open that box if she's interested. The surprised girl asks if she can watch. Of course, anything that belongs to me, you can consider it yours. Look all you want. With a brotherly loving look at his sister, Yun explained to her. Hearing such words, Lin Ju was greatly relieved and thanked the guy. Taking a seat next to him, she pulled that wooden box toward her and slowly opened it. Looking at his sister, Ling Yun notices that Lin Ju is very good looking. If she didn't wear such modern clothes, she would be no different from an immortal from the cultivation world. There's no telling what kind of brat she'll like in the future, but it's not a pleasant thought for a guy to think about. Opening the wooden box, the girl saw that box that holds the golden needles. What a beautiful jade box. Lin Ju shrieked in admiration. At this moment, something incomprehensible began to happen. Spiritual energy from the girl began to move into this jade box. Pressing her hands against the box, Ling Yun asked her sister to keep her palms on it. This jade box really sucks the spiritual energy out of Lin Ju's body. A cultivator would never have thought that this thing could be so amazing, capable of storing energy. A confused Lin Ju can't figure out what it is her brother is going to do. While the blushing sister is trying to realize what is happening, Ling Yun is mesmerized by the process of absorbing spiritual energy. Indeed, the closer her hand got, the more energy the box gathered. That's great. So the guy was worried for nothing that the seven luminaries' grass energy would just dissipate. Now, thanks to this jade box, he will be able to store spiritual energy and access it whenever he wants. Isn't that the same as having an energy gathering talisman that can be used indefinitely? Hugging his tomato red sister, the boy thanked her profusely. If Lin Ju hadn't insisted on looking at this box, the young man would have just sold it soon. The girl, still not understanding anything, looked at her brother anxiously. Sitting at the table and having dinner with his family, Yoon thinks he should take the opportunity to explain to his mom and sister how he suddenly got rich. Otherwise, he feels guilty in front of them every time he sees them. With the hope that his mom will ask him where he learned it, the guy offers to help her with the clinic this afternoon. He explains to her that he knows how to treat all the usual ailments. His plan was, when she inquired, to use Master Xu's name. All right. Then Lin Ju and I will go buy you some clothes. Putting food on her plate, Kin replied. 
Such an indifferent answer struck the young man hard, sweating with nerves. Yoon says he already has a lot of clothes and asks him to better buy something for his sister. Smiling, the mom calls her son a fool and explains that he needs to get a new suit after his weight loss. Such a statement made the guy cough and Lin Ji wondered if he was okay. After lunch, Yoon sees his mom and sister off. He wishes them good luck of the journey and asked them not to feel bad about wasting money on shopping. He also asked them to take their time. The young man then walked back into the clinic and slammed the door behind him. Once inside, the guy sat down at the work table and laid out a set of gold needles in front of him. While waiting for the customers, the young man sat back in his chair. It was a rare opportunity to be treated by an immortal doctor like him, so I wondered which of the lucky ones would be able to take advantage of it today. It's been hours. No one ever stopped by the clinic. Coughing and remembering his ridiculous words about the immortal doctor, Yun decided to find something else to do. Taking one golden needle out of the set, the guy remembered that he hadn't practiced in a while and wasn't sure how accurate he was now. Taking five needles in his hand, Ling Yun immediately threw them without looking at the target. All the needles stuck exactly where the guy was aiming. The peak of the second level of body hardening is a different matter. I easily stuck needles into the wall too. The guy muttered admiringly as he approached the target. At that moment, he felt something strange. An incredible amount of spiritual energy began to accumulate in his brain and body. Lin Yun can't understand what's going on. Why did the immortal energy in my body activate on its own? This feeling is great. It felt as if his spirit and body had become lighter but at the same time several times stronger. The immortal spiritual energy helped him directly break through to the third level of body hardening. Yoon immediately decides to take this great opportunity to try and break for fourth. Trying to concentrate his energy, the guy concentrates and stands in place and closes his eyes. In this position he stood for several minutes to no avail. Where did the immortal spiritual energy go? Why did he stop feeling it? Immortal spiritual energy. Immortal spiritual energy, where are you? shouted Lin Yun, standing on one arm. At this moment, the door of the clinic opened and after saying hello, Liu Li walked inside. From such a surprise, Yun standing on one arm was unable to keep his balance and collapsed to the floor. A concerned woman standing at the doorstep asks the fallen guy if he's okay. Rising to his feet, Lin Yun shook off his knees and awkwardly explained to his aunt, that he was fine and was just exercising. Liu Li reminded the young man how he had said that this clinic would be able to cure her illness, so she decided to come. With her hand on her shoulder bag, she wondered if she was disturbing him. In turn, Ling Yan asked her not to worry. After all, there were no patients anyway, so he would take care of her right away. Pointing a finger at the corner of the room, he motioned for the woman to go there and lie down on the bunk. When the visitor decided to ask the guy why she should lie down, he explained that he was a doctor of Chinese medicine and therefore could not help her if she did not lie down. As Liu Li lay down, she noticed the young man crouched next to her laying out a set of needles. When she saw this, she trembled with fear. Taking the golden needle in his hand, Lin Yun advised his aunt to close her eyes if she was nervous. Trusting him, the woman closed her eyes, consoling herself that this guy was no ordinary man, and he could definitely cure her. The third level of the body hairpin was indeed different. The spiritual energy had no problem enveloping the needle in his hand. In this way, Lin Yun will not only be able to normalize the fetus, but also improve her aunt's health, so that she almost never gets sick. After half an hour of treatments, the guy asked the woman how she was feeling now. Sitting down on her knees, Liu Li revealed that the agitation has disappeared. Her whole body is so light, as if she had inexhaustible strength. Smiling, Ling Yun added that her child would also be fine now, and she didn't have to worry about it. Hearing those words, the woman looked at the guy in surprise. Great, that's the most important thing for me. Liu Li said gratefully trying to hold back tears of happiness. Going to her bag, the woman took out an object. Holding out the family heirloom to him, she explains that she doesn't even know how to thank the young man, and so she asks him to accept it. Waving it away, Ling Yun says that he can't accept what is a family heirloom. However, the moment the guy looked at this object, something started happening to his body again. 
His immortal spiritual energy had once again activated, taking the brush in his hand. Yun noticed that this time it was the other way around, looking at this object. It is still a long time before he realizes what is going on. What's wrong with this thing? Why is this brush absorbing his immortal energy? Realizing that this thing had almost completely sucked up his energy, Ling Yun tried to shake it back out, but it was all in vain, no matter how much he tried to take it all back, the brush kept taking it back. Looking at the strangely acting guy, Liu Li can't understand what's happening to him. Suddenly, when the young man grasped the object with both hands, it was over. It finally stopped, bringing the strange contraption up to his face. Yun began to examine it irritably. I'll deal with you, you bastard, and get my immortal energy back. The guy inwardly shouted, waving that stick in anger. The dumbfounded woman standing nearby at this time asks the young man to forget it if he doesn't like it. She can find another way to repay his kindness, grasping the brush. Ling Yun awkwardly replies that this thing is to his liking, after which he thanks his visitor. However, he did not tell her that this stick now contains his immortal spiritual energy. No one would be able to take it away from him even if they wanted to very badly. Smiling happily, Liu Li was very happy to hear this from him. After seeing his aunt off, the guy tells her that if she needs help in the future, she can call any time. Saying goodbye to the young man, the woman promises to remember this. After saying those words, Yun walked back into the clinic and slammed the door behind him. Let's see what you are, muttered the boy, looking at the mysterious object in his hand. The young man touched his palm with his hand to see if it worked or not. However, the tip appeared to be very sharp. Is this even a brush or a weapon? Luckily, there was some ready-made ink at home to try her out. Either way it's still not clear what makes this thing so special. It was surprising. But when Ling Yun dipped the tip into the ink, it became incredibly soft. After a while, the guy carefully wrote two characters on a white piece of paper. Not bad. It glides so smoothly across the sheet. She can be used to write maskets in the future. This brush is a real treasure. But laying back on the table, the guy doesn't know what to do with his immortal energy that she's absorbed. Abruptly jumping down, Ling Yun realizes that he can no longer remain so passive. He must reach the fourth level of body hardening as soon as possible. This will allow the guy to actively manage his body's spiritual energy and find a way to bring back the immortal spiritual energy. Suddenly, his cell phone rang in his pocket, startling Yun greatly. Who the hell called him out of the blue? Shoe mining. Pulling up to Lin Yun's house, a girl in a red Audi R8, remarks that it was damn hard to drive up here. If she had known, she wouldn't have come in that car and would have gotten another one. Yeah, you might not have come here at all. The guy who came out into the street mockingly objected to her. When Neen called the young man, she told him she was bored and decided to come to the guy's house to have some fun. Then Ling Yun replied that he was at home and very busy, but the girl didn't care and said that she would come and pick him up right away. And unfortunately, there was absolutely no chance of rejection. Walking into the disgruntled guy's home, the uninvited guest remarked that she didn't expect that Yoon's family also had their own clinic. And since they're co-workers, the girl says she can come and help out in the future. When Ling Yun asked her to cut the crap, explaining that his mom was running the place, Ning confidently said that Auntie would definitely not refuse. Because I'm your girlfriend, she shouted joyfully, throwing herself into an embrace with the young man. A dumbfounded Yoon asks Ning not to go overboard with this. After all, he's only pretending to be him. Snuggling up to him, the girl explained that this was why. The young man must pretend to be better. Otherwise, Lee King Chu simply wouldn't believe him. But looking up, she noticed Yun's displeased face. Well, Ling Yun, you have dimples on your cheeks. Let me touch it. Ning uttered admiringly, reaching her hand towards his face, tensely averting his gaze. The guy realizes that this stinker has once again found an excuse to take advantage of him. Grabbing her hand, the young man explained that the girl could do it for 100 yuan per touch. As long as enough pays, she can touch as much as she likes. Nin was not deterred by such conditions, on the contrary. She agreed willingly. Taking the phone in her hand, she started transferring money to his bank account. At that moment, a notification arrived on Yoon's phone. Looking at his balance, the guy was taken aback. 10,000 yuan had just been credited to his account, 
So, Curtison, can I touch it now? Niney asked mockingly, leaning toward the young man. Lin Yun is a man of his word, so there's no way he can refuse. She paid too much. In that case, the girl decides not to be ceremonious and proceed with his localized execution. Boss, we're back, came a familiar voice at the threshold of the clinic's front door. With a grin, the suddenly appearing Tanmin said that he met Auntie and Linju at the mall and decided to give them a ride home, but upon opening the door, he and the pink-haired girl stood dumbfounded at the threshold, looking at what was happening in front of them. Ning sits on the lap of the doomed Ling Yun, as if begging with her gaze to save him. The stunned Tangman, looking at this picture, asked what Chu Mining was doing here. Upon entering the clinic, the mom wanted to know what her son was doing here. Suddenly jumping off the guy, a radiantly happy Ning greets him, introducing herself as Lin Yun's girlfriend. Holy shit. How quickly her face changed. Taking her hand, Kaiyo Kin remarks that Lin Yun is such a child. He didn't even tell them that he has a girlfriend. Since that's the case, she suggests Ning stay for dinner. In all this friendly atmosphere, there stood Tangman who was as gloomy as night. Shu Mining's boyfriend is Ling Yun. His mind flashed back to the night he had promised brother King Chu that he would find the bastard who had been eyeing Ning and deal with him himself. Petrified by this turn of events, Tanmin realized what he had signed up for. However, the blue-haired guy wasn't the only one who was shocked. The sister was also visibly shaken. Does her brother really have a girlfriend? Badao's battered nephew lies in a hospital bed all bandaged and in a cast. A blonde-haired man stands beside him. Looking at his mangled brother in surprise, he apologizes to him for not being there to let him get hurt. He decides to kick that Ling Yun's ass today to get revenge. Then Guang asks his brother if his uncle knows about his beating. Why didn't he come to him? Dao explains that Uncle Tian has to attend a meeting at the moment and can't leave. He said to let his nephew recover, and they will take care of everything. Having said all this, the blonde-haired man walked out of his brother's room and closed the door behind him. After that, he went to the elevator and called it. Once on another floor of the hospital, Dao walked to another room and exhaled tensely. Once inside, he immediately informed the man in the chamber that he had already visited Guan. Behind this door lay the also beaten Tian Badao. Dao told his uncle that his brother had been seriously injured. He would probably have to spend the next two or three months in a hospital bed. Angry Badao promised through pain that Ling Yun would answer for everything. Concerned, Dao asked the man not to worry. He had already managed to call all his brothers. At night, they would break the bastard's legs and trash his clinic. However, Tian Badao objected. This Ling Yun is not that easy to deal with. He orders them to wait for this guy to return to the dormitory, and even then to trash the clinic at night, and kidnap his mother Kaiyokin. Hearing this, Dao can't believe that uncle means exactly what he thought he meant. The man explains that when the time comes, the blonde-haired man will just have to tell Ling Yun that he has Ki Yu Kin. In that case, he simply wouldn't dare to resist, just beating him up wouldn't be enough. Bada wants this guy in pain, on his knees like a dog with no dignity, begging him. There are many plates of freshly cooked, still hot jowsy on the table, pouring food into her boyfriend's bowl. Nine asks him to eat a few more dumplings. The sister sitting next to him also puts jowsy into the young man's bowl, noting that he must be very hungry. In the same second, the two girls' gazes cross and they look at each other with genuine hatred. Suddenly, a competition begins to see who can put the most dumplings on the plate of a dumbfounded Ling Yun sitting next to him. Is this a new kind of torture? Meanwhile, looking into his bowl, a frustrated Tanman notices that no one is putting any on for him. Here, eat Tanman. Kin spoke caringly, chopsticks pouring jowsy into his bowl. Thrilled by such attentiveness to himself, the blue-haired boy tearfully thanked his aunt for her kindness. Seeing the children off, the clinic owner thanks them for helping to wash the dishes. It is getting late. So she asks the children to be careful on their way back to school. Taking her boyfriend's hand, Ning tells her aunt not to worry. She's an experienced driver. And on top of that, Ling Yun has already ridden in her car, and nothing happened. Hearing those words, Lin Ju glanced at the couple unhappily. She turns to Tanman and asks permission to ride in his in his car. The overjoyed blue-haired boy can't believe it's just the two of them, but their conversation is interrupted by a disgruntled Ling Yun walking up to them, telling them to take their time. 
Starting to sob, a distraught Tanman asks his boss why he's being so cruel to him. Lin Yu wanted to ride in his car for the first time. However, Yoon clarifies that that's not what he's talking about at all. There's something wrong here. At the same instant, a loud stomping sound was heard not far from the clinic. Lin Yun senses a murderous aura nearby. As the sister perplexedly asks her brother what's wrong, he asks her to get into Tanman's car. The second the guy just disappears from their sight. Once near his mom, Lin Yoon grabs her shoulder and explains that someone has come to the clinic looking for trouble. The guy asks the woman to hide somewhere. Seeing the boss on the opposite side of the street, Tanman can't believe people can even move that fast. After putting his mom and sister in the car, Yoon slammed the door. A concerned Lin Yu tells her mom that they can't just leave her brother alone. Patting her daughter on the head, the woman explains that Yoon knows what he's doing, and the sister should trust her brother as much as she trusts her mom. An indignant Tanman, sitting behind the wheel, asks his boss why he can't stay too. Because you'll have to protect my mom and sister, Yun answered him, looking out the car window. Excited, the blue-haired guy says he's got it all figured out, and asks his boss to grant it to him. Running up to Yun, his girlfriend admiringly started pelting him with questions, asking about that amazing instantaneous move he had just made. Does this young man really know martial arts? How on earth is he going to deal with this group of people? Could the guy have some sort of hereditary weapon? And who are these people anyway? Looking at her with irritation, Lin Yun realized that this girl had no sense of tact at all. Couldn't she see that he was in a big hurry, pushing Nine back to her vehicle? The guy asks her to get out of here soon too. She did not disobey him and, getting into the car, immediately drove away. The clinic premises are completely deserted, not a living soul left. After a while, a crowd of armed bandits did indeed come to the front door. The thug tells Brother Dao that the lights inside are on, and the door is wide open, but no one is in the clinic right now. In turn, the leader realizes that these bastards are probably hiding somewhere in the backyard. He suggests that his charges start by trashing the clinic. The excited bandits cheered and some of them immediately ran into the room. Once inside the clinic, they began smashing everything around them, swinging bats and overturning desks and cabinets. It's all Ling Yun's fault. He just messed with the wrong people. At this point, some kid politely asks people to disperse to the sides making his way through the crowd of thugs left outside. The thing is, he wants to enter the clinic too. Suddenly, the Ambo standing next to the leader blocks the guy's path with his hand, asking this idiot where he came from. He'd better get out of here if he doesn't want to die. Looking at him incredulously, the kid explains that this is the first time he's ever seen someone break something, and so he wanted to watch. Don't you understand, humanly speaking, I told you to get out, shouted the bulky man angrily, but suddenly, Brother Dao standing in front, asked the man to let this kid pass. Thanking him, the boy immediately broke free of the bully's grasp and ran into the clinic. Looking perplexedly at the leader, the Ambo can't understand why he missed this dude. In turn, Dao recalls that Tian Guang said that Lin Yun was a overweight guy of a young age. So that idiot is Lin Yun. Dao confirmed it again. That's why he let this guy in. That way they can see what Yun will show them and what he can do. After trashing the entire clinic, the bandits decided that they were done here. And it was time to leave. Glancing at the front door, the man with dark hair asks his companions if they know the guy at the doorstep. In turn, Lin Yun excitedly asks the guests not to leave because they forgot to do one more thing. Dark-haired bandit with a bewildered look at the kid can't understand what he is talking about. As he approaches him, Yun explains that if they don't finish their work completely, they'll probably get a good beating from the boss. Looking around, the man tries to figure out what else he forgot to destroy in this damn clinic. Without thinking for long, Ling Yun pointed him to the lighted lamp hanging overhead. What the hell does that bastard think he's doing? He comes in here and dares to tell them what to do. He's giving them stupid advice like that. Are you completely brainless, you little brat? How do you think we're going to see without lights? Shouted the infuriated bandit. Oh, so you don't want to do it. Well then, I'll help you out then, Yun muttered, smiling eerily. In the same second, he took out a golden needle from his pocket and brought it up to his face. With one swing of his hand, he hurled the needle at the lamp, thus shattering it and causing a short circuit. 
Subsequently, the lights in the room went out, and the bandits inside the clinic began to panic. The bully standing outside informs his leader that the lights in the house are out and asks if he should go in and see what happened. Dao, on the other hand, asks the man to wait a little while. Suddenly, a piercing scream sounds outside the door. At the same moment, a dark-haired man flew out of the clinic, falling next to a surprised Dao. Following him, the rest of the bandits flew out as well, knocking their comrades to the ground. Realizing that things were smelling like kerosene, Dao and the remaining underlings stood back to back, waiting for the high-level boss to come out. What the hell is going on here, brother Dao, this brat is coming out, a bulky man standing next to the leader suddenly shouted, lowering his gaze and epically exiting Ling Yun appeared in the doorway of the clinic, you must be the boss of this bunch of losers, so what's your name, the guy inquired pointing a finger at Dao, the dumbfounded leader with fear in his eyes, hopes to the last that the speech is not about him, fatty, I'll kill you, the big man suddenly shouted fisting at Yun who was maddened by his toughness. At this moment, Dao asked his partner to come back now. This guy is not easy to deal with. However, it was already too late. The smile of the kid standing on the threshold of the clinic made everyone realize that he was quite ready even to kill. In the same second, Lin Yun smashed his fist into the ambulist's chest with a swing, the only thing that the bulky man realized as he flew away from such a crushing attack was that this guy was indeed incredibly strong, when he fell to the ground, he immediately lost consciousness after breaking the sidewalk beneath him, doomed looking at all of this, Dao realizes that his business is incredibly shitty, he's messed with the wrong person this time, hey, I asked you a question, angrily yelled at him as Ling Yun came closer, keeping his hands in his pockets, kneeling down in front of the boy, oi, the man crouches down and tells him that his name is Dao Yun, and he is known as Dao on the street. He admits that they were impulsive today, so he asks the boy to do him a favor and let them go. Let you go, Yun interjected, standing up in front of him. Why would I do that? Bleeding cold sweat from fear. The dumbfounded Dao realizes that if they can't quiet this guy, they'll probably all have to die here today. Something must be done. After a while, the bandits had almost completely rebuilt the clinic, and now they were busy cleaning up rubbing the furniture with rags to shine and dusting, an excited beaten thug, holding a mop on his shoulder, shouts to his comrades to get moving, and make sure everywhere is cleaned up, bowing to the young man, Dao asks him to give his QR code to pay him 100,000 for the inconvenience, irritatedly looking at him, Yun can't believe that he would pay him such an amount of money, however, Dao misunderstood this reaction, wasn't that money enough for him, I made a mistake. I meant to say 300,000. The man said, raising his head and looking awkwardly at the boy. But when he saw this boy, he noticed that he was yawning as if expressing his displeasure. In fact, nothing of the sort was implied in that yawn. However, Dao didn't realize it. Half a million, yelled the man, yawning in response. 600,000, Ling Yun said in disagreement, deciding to bargain a little with his victim. Looking at his bank account in despair. Dao realizes that 600,000 is his income for two whole months, but there's nothing to do, well, he can still earn it, the main thing now is to keep himself alive, after that, the man immediately transferred the money to the guy's account, looking at the phone contentedly, Ling Yun remarks that although he had received the money, he still had something left to say, it's not enough, the young man said suddenly, Reaching out his hand towards Dao, Yun immediately made a couple touches on his body. At the same second, the man collapsed in pain, it felt as if a thousand knives were stabbing into his body. Standing up from his chair, the boy asks Dao not to worry, after all, it won't kill him, just that from now on, every midnight, he'll feel the pain of hell for half a minute. I don't care why you trashed my family's clinic, but next time, if you think of causing trouble again, you'll be dead, do you understand?" Ling Yun explained, leaning over to the man squirming in pain, looking at him fearfully, Dao confirms that he understood everything perfectly, with a disgusted look at the man, Yun advises the man to come back to him in a month if he wants to live, kicking Dao in the stomach, the guy yelled for him to get his men and get the hell out of here, the ambo who approached his exhausted leader immediately took him under his arm, helping him up from the ground, looking at Yun, 
Dao realizes that this time he was hurt because of those two from the Tian family. After a while, all the bandits left, and Ling Yun was left standing outside the clinic alone with his chair. With a relieved exhale, the guy realizes how lucky he is that Lin Ju and the others didn't see it. Otherwise, however, he wouldn't have been able to explain. Brother, are you alright? Suddenly heard his sister's concerned voice nearby. Of course, can't you see? Lin Yun reassured her, stroking her head, throwing herself into her boyfriend's arms, Ninny swept her arms around him, giving him a great beating from those assholes. Boss, you've done a hell of a thing. Your moves just dumbfounded me. Tanman, who had appeared out of nowhere, added admiringly. Of course, have you forgotten who I am? Laughed Yun, smiling contentedly. But then the guy realized it. Wait a minute. So they saw him take out those thugs. A delighted Neen explained that not only did everyone see it, but she also managed to videotape the whole thing, because she's not so easy to chase away. What did you just say? A dumbfounded Lin Yan yelled out. A surprised Lin Ju asks her brother why he's suddenly so strong. Meanwhile, a fascinated Nini wonders how many more secrets Yoon has. Emerging out of nowhere, Tanman asks his boss to confess that he is actually a martial arts master. Sweating with nerves, Ling Yun can't think of a suitable excuse. How do I explain it to him? Should he say that he's an alien from another world? But how can you say that? Actually, not too long ago, I accidentally fell down a mountain and stumbled upon a secret martial arts book. The guy suddenly said with a serious face, hoping that such an explanation would fly. A disgruntled kin, approaching them, reminds her son that she told him to never, ever reveal his power to anyone. Looking at her in surprise, Tanman asked what kind of power she was referring to. For his part, Yoon also has no idea what it was about or when his mom told him. The woman said that Ling Yun had been unusually strong since childhood and could easily carry hundreds of kilograms. She was worried that his physique would get him into trouble. So she told the guy not to show his strength. Did he really forget? Scratching his forehead awkwardly with his finger, the young man apologized to his mother explaining that he had seen the bandits trashing their clinic, which had made him angry. The woman understood her son's feelings, and that he was doing it for the sake of the family. But he asks him not to be so reckless next time. Taking out her phone, Kin notices that it's getting late, and it's time for the guys to head back to the dormitory. A worried Yoon tells his mom that it looks like someone is not happy with their clinic, and asks her to come back with them. The woman grinned and reminded him that the son had made such a fuss that no one would dare to come back and debauch the place now. Running up to her mom, Lin Ju explains that she'll be worried about her, but Kin asks her daughter not to worry and promises that everything will be fine. Then the sister decided to ask her brother to try to change their mom's mind. However, Yoon advises her to forget about it. Since mom doesn't want that, they have no choice but to leave. Sitting in Nin's car, the guy ponders why his mom just didn't ask for anything and instead backed him up. And she was too cool about her clinic being trashed. Is it true that his mom is an unusual mortal like Tanman said? But Yoon clearly doesn't feel anything. Meanwhile, looking at the brooding guy in the seat next to her, Ninj realizes that he's definitely not an ordinary person, in which case she's sure to follow him. At the same time, a tense Tanman is riding in his car. While Lin Ju stares blankly out the window, the blue-haired guy can't figure out how to be. It was such a simple chance to be alone with her. But what to say in such a situation? Not paying attention to the driver sweating with excitement, Lin Ju thought about something. Turning sharply toward him, the girl asks Tanman how long her brother and Shu Mining have known each other. The bewildered guy replies that he doesn't know that for sure, but he feels like the two met only a few days ago. Hmm, I see. Lin Ju muttered turning her head back and continuing to look out the window. Early evening of the same day, King Shui Middle School. The worried sister asks Yoon if he is sleeping outside again. Guy confirmed, explaining that Tanman had already rented a house for him. Then don't forget safety since you live alone. Lin Ju told him, smiling charmingly. She then walked over to a plant near the entrance to the school and plucked a single flower from it. Taking it in her hands, she admired it for a while longer. Holding out the flower to Yun, the sister asked him to take it. Let her brother think of her when he looked at it. Accepting the gift, the guy promised to take care of it. Thereafter, 
He walked over to Nina's car and seated himself in the passenger compartment, holding the flower in his right hand, Lingyun, do you know what pink rose means in the language of flowers? The girl asked indignantly, glancing unhappily at the young man. She wouldn't say it, but the flower in his hand is a symbol of falling in love, sympathy and admiration. Turning away, Ninga wondered to Yun if he really liked flowers that much. Without taking his eyes off the pink rose, the boy explained that his sister had given it to him, so of course he liked it. All right, the girl sitting next to her quietly muttered looking out the window indignantly. After that, she suddenly opened the door and jumped out into the street. Not realizing what had gotten into her, Yun asked her to wait, realizing that the effort was futile, the guy had nothing left but to just stare after her. After a while, Shu Mining walked over to that bush and started picking the best flower to give to her boyfriend, but in the end, she picked almost all of them and gathering the flowers into one huge bouquet, threw it to the surprised Ling Yun. This is for you from me, shouted the girl, and if you throw that away, I'll chew you to death, she added, looking into the guy's face and grabbing the seat belt with her hand, looking at those flowers. Ling Yun can't understand what Ning is so angry about, in that case, he'll have to play along. The guy holds the bouquet against him and remarks that it smells nice. The young man asks the girl not to worry, because he will take care of it. Hmm, that's better, Niney said contentedly, fixing her hair. At that time, a scream sounded somewhere nearby. Bursting into tears, Tanman can't understand why only the boss gets flowers. He actually wants one too. That's all right. Then I'll pick my own, said the blue-haired boy, wiping away his tears with his hand, but as he approached the bush, he noticed something beautiful. At the same moment, Tangman, jumping joyfully, started plucking flowers and laughing merrily. My beloved Tanman, I give you this bouquet of roses, it symbolizes my love for you, shrieked the blue-haired boy enchanted with himself. Wow, those flowers smell so good. While Tanman was hugging the bouquet he had picked and saying how happy he was, the classmates standing nearby were watching this one actor theater with shame. A few hours later, the house rented by Lin Yun. After tidying up his new place of residence, the tired guy sat down on the couch. But this is no time to relax. Now we can start studying the brush. With his current level, it's pretty hard for a guy to do damage with a normal sharp weapon. But will Yuna be able to hurt this brush? We'll have to see how sharp it is. However, just touching his finger, the tip pierced the skin until it bled. Fuck, it hurts. How did it get through the skin so easily? That thing started sucking his blood too. Starting to get nervous, Ling Yun tries to move the brush away from his hand, but it's all in vain. How do I turn it off? As he tried to find a way to turn it off, the mysterious object continued to suck his blood. What a strange brush. It can't go on like this, damn it. If it wasn't stopped, the brush would simply suck Lin Yun to death. If a normal person saw the brush suddenly start sucking blood, they would be scared half to death. Only Lin Yun had reached the level of passing through a disaster. He had seen all kinds of demons and monsters. Concern looking at the brush. The guy realizes that after this has sucked so much blood out of him, the recognition ceremony must be over. Throwing up a brush, he began to run it in space as it did his blood, which meant they had reached final synchronization. That's how it worked out. The subject is now completely under the young man's control. This thing is actually much more incredible than it seems at first glance. And now, finally, Yoon feels a connection to it. The tip of this brush can be soft or as hard as the guy wants it to be. All you have to do is think about what you need and get good at it. Not bad. This item can be used to draw amulets and engrave formations during normal times, but it can become a powerful weapon when facing an enemy. Haha, <laughs> great, my Goldie. Now you'll follow me and cultivate. Make sure you recoup the cost to yourself, Ling Yun pronounced, stretching sweetly. But suddenly he discovers that his hand can dance. What is it? Tap dance. Or ballet. At 7 o'clock in the evening a guy went speed swimming in the river with some beautiful girls. At 10 o'clock, the young man was running full speed through the school stadium. As early as 1 o'clock in the morning, he had already lit a fire and cultivated spiritual energy. While sitting by the grass of the seven luminaries, he continued this until 5 o'clock the next morning. This is it, the peak of the third level of body hardening. 
And it's time to check out the results of today's workout. Walking to the edge of the shore, Ling Yun stepped on the water with his sneakers. Standing with both feet in the water, the guy concentrated all his spiritual energy in his feet. He then pushed himself off the bottom with his feet and tore toward the opposite shore. Once on the other side, Yun can't believe that he was able to cross the river in an instant. Very good, the physical changes are more significant than he thought. All six senses have reached a new level. Although the cultivation speed here is much slower than in the cultivation world, but with every time a guy advanced to a new cultivation level on the ground, he gains more strength. And now the young man is certainly confident that he will not make the same mistake when he crosses the disaster again. Since it's almost dawn, Ling Yun decides to end his training today. After all, he had promised Lin Yu that he would never skip class again. Monday morning, King Shui School. As he walks down the school hallway, Yun hears other students gossiping behind his back. When they notice him, they say how lucky this guy is. Turning around, the delighted young man tries to figure out why they are all staring at him. Did his charisma improve after reaching the third level? The class is already discussing the recent picture of Lin Yun and Shan Shan that appeared on the school forum. In that picture, it looked like the two were kissing. However, those who were there explained that there was no kissing but they were hugging each other very gently. The feet of a goddess must be so soft. This guy is clearly a lucky guy. A furious Lin tells her friend that someone has posted a picture of her hugging Lin Yun on the internet. Now the whole school is talking about it. When the girl calmly replied that she had already seen it, the green-haired friend told her not to worry and promised that she would find whoever had posted it. These pictures are done quite well. Looking at her, the goddess remarked, Looking at her friend, Lin can't realize what that just was. What? Has Shan Shan's character changed? Glancing at the door, the green-haired girl noticed Lin Yun's classroom on the doorstep. Just upon entering the office, the guy immediately walked over to Shan Shan, trying to pretend she doesn't see him. The confused girl stares at the book all the way through. As he walked by, the guy simply wished his girlfriends a good morning. A surprised Lin immediately asked her friend why she was ignoring Ling Yun. In turn, the goddess explained that she was not so close to him to say hello. Moreover, the girl had nothing to do with him. Really? So you won't be jealous if another girl comes to ask Ling Yun out? Lin clarified to her. The calm and confident Shan Chan explained that it was simply not possible. After all, except for his sister, Lin Ju, this guy didn't socialize with any other girls. At this moment, a stranger appears on the doorstep of the classroom, asking the guys if she can talk to Ling Yun. This stranger turned out to be that girl named Lin Mengen, who was saved by Yun after pulling her out of the river. All the classmates can't believe such a pretty girl showed up at their school. Maybe she's some kind of star. Walking into the classroom, Manhan looked at the girl sitting at the desk. Looking at her, Lin can't believe that she needs Lin Yun. Standing up from behind his desk, the guy called out to the girl, telling her he was here. When they went out into the hallway to talk away from prying ears, all the classmates peeked out from behind the door to overhear their conversation. Handing him the bag, Manhan explained that when she washed his jacket, she found his ID card there. Smiling charmingly, Ling Yun thanked the girl for taking such care. With a confused look, she realized that she had been very wrong about him. That night, she'd thought the guy was just a regular fat guy. But looking at the young man now, she thinks he'd be a real looker if he lost some more weight. Realizing that now is the best time to extort money, Ling Yun asks the girl if she has anything else for him. He saved her life. Wasn't she going to thank him just for that? The boy didn't say anything like that out loud, but held out his hand to her, grabbing the young man's hand. Menhen thanked him once more, promising that she would never forget his kindness. Yoon, squeezing tears out of his eyes, reminds the girl how she stepped on his glasses that he left on the beach. In his head, however, he realizes that she was wasted that day. So she probably doesn't remember that he wore glasses at all. Cranking up his acting skills to the max, the young man adds that it was his mom's birthday present, and it was his favorite pair of glasses. In turn, Menhin apologizes saying that she didn't do it on purpose. After all, she was drunk that night and doesn't remember anything at all. Hurry up and give the money by transfer or cash. That was exactly what Lin Yun's concern look said for him. 
However, not understanding his innuendo, Manhan explains that she is busy today, asking for the guy's contact information, she promises to take him to get a new pair of glasses when she's free. When the young man gave her his phone number, the girl immediately left, the classmates watching can't believe that such a star took Lin Yun's phone number, he must be overjoyed, however, this guy doesn't care about that sort of thing, what's wrong with this woman, Yoon doesn't want her to pay him for new glasses, he just wants money for saving her life. At the same time, Lin is wondering from her friend who she thinks this beautiful girl is. Where could Lin Yun have met her? Trying to make an indifferent expression on her face, Shan Chan replies that she doesn't know that. It's just meeting a girl, isn't it? What's there to be proud of? Excuse me. May I ask if Lin Yun is in this class? Suddenly heard the female voice at the door again. Why is there another one here? Has Lin Yun's luck been a little too good lately? I'm here, why did you want to meet me? The boy asked, walking up to his classroom and seeing the stranger. Approaching the young man, the girl introduced herself as Mujin Fixu, and she wanted to thank him for saving her grandfather on the pedestrian street. The thing is, she is his granddaughter. With a sly look at Fixu, Yun realizes that his last attempt to extort money failed because he wasn't ready, but now he will definitely not let this opportunity go to waste. While a classmate is thinking up a plan to become her husband, a friend asks him to forget about it. This beautiful girl drove a Maserati. The cheapest one of these costs 2 million. The green-haired kid dreams of having such a car in the future. Unfortunately for Fixu, Lin Yun heard the conversation of the gossiping classmates behind him. So this woman has such an expensive car. Then it's definitely his client. There are too many people here. Why don't we get in your car and talk in private? The guy suggested to her. What did he just say? Shall we get in the car? Alone. Meanwhile, Fixu did not oppose him in this and asked the young man to follow her. As Ling Yun walks down the hallway, the other students can't understand why this guy is so different from how they imagined him to be. There is indeed an expensive yellow Maserati in the parking lot at the school. It's a good one? Lin Yun indifferently muttered as he approached her car together with the girl. Good one, shouted the guy longingly with admiration, sitting in the interior of the Maserati and palming the windows with his palms. Turning around to Fixu, the young man remarked that she had a very nice car. After his words, the disgruntled girl asked Yun if he had seen enough. When the guy explained that it was so beautiful that it could hardly be admired, Fixu irritably grabbed his tie. The girl once again reminded him that she had come here just to thank the young man for saving her grandfather's life. Well, how could it be otherwise? His life wouldn't have been saved without my help. He was very lucky. Usually people have to pay a lot of money to get my treatment. Yun explained as he continued to look around the car admiringly. Fixu agrees to pay. Whatever the price is, she will be able to cover it. Then I want you to, the boy started to say, looking at her with a lustful gaze, but Fixu sitting next to him politely asked the young man not to be under any illusions. In the next second, the power of her all-destroying impact sent the car flying several meters above the ground, jumping back to the door in fear. Ling Yun asked the girl why she was being so aggressive, I mean, he didn't even say anything. The guy just wants her to pay him a million yuan, and this car to go with it. Dream on. Do you even know how much it costs? Fixu shrieked, angered by such insolence. Disappointedly closing her eyes, Yun realized everything. So her grandfather's life wasn't as valuable as this car. That's sad. The angry girl asks the guy to risk doing it again. Opening the passenger door of the Maserati, the young man added that Fixu didn't seem to love his grandfather that much. But as soon as Ling Yun decided to leave, the woman grabbed his hand and asked him to wait. What does that mean? Did she really take that cheap bait? The indignant girl explained that her grandfather's life was more important to her than anything else in the world. Here's a check for a million. Take the car too. After saying that, after getting out of the Maserati and slamming the door behind her, Fixu adds to make sure Yoon remembers that she paid for saving her grandfather, and now they don't owe each other anything. Deal, take care of yourself, beautiful. Lin Yun shouted after her in a friendly manner. As the driver's seat door slammed shut, the guy looked surprised at the check in his hands. This beauty is very respectful. That old man was very lucky to have a granddaughter. Yun just blurted that out, but he didn't even expect to get a car. 
Haha. <laughs> the delighted guy decides to give this car to his sister when he gets home. However, looking at the driver's seat, the young man realized something. He doesn't even know how to operate this thing. How's he supposed to move it out of the school parking lot? After a while, an unknown force lifted the vehicles by the rear of the hull. People who have watched this cannot believe that an ordinary person, much less a high school student, can create something like this. If I had known about this earlier, I would have learned how to drive beforehand. Ling Yun unhappily muttered, sipping iced tea from a straw with one hand and dragging the Maserati to another place with the other. A dumbfounded Lin looked out the window and screamed, informing her friend that Lin Yun had single-handedly lifted the Maserati. Still pretending not to care, Shan Shan notes that this guy has nothing but brute strength. However, the green-haired girl notices that Mujin Fixu has arrived in this car. Did she really give it to Lin Yun? Hearing this, the goddess looked at her friend in surprise, but then she pretended she wasn't interested and it didn't matter. A concern Lin tells her friend that if she continues to act so arrogant, Lin Yun will be taken away by another girl. Shan Shan replies that she had seen them looking for him herself. These women had obviously only seen him once and didn't know him at all. How could they be in love with him? Actually, the goddess used to say that no one could even come to Yun at all. May I know if Lin Yun is in this class? An unfamiliar male voice came from the doorway. What the hell is going on? Why are guys looking for him too? Li Qingchu, didn't he study at the Capital University? What does he want with Lin Yun? Seeing Qingchu, Lin can't believe that such a handsome man came to their school. A classmate at the back of the desk, seeing Lin Yun passing by, told him that someone was looking for the guy. Who are you? Do you owe me money too? Inquired the young man, approaching the stranger. Suddenly, an angry shoe mining burst through the crowd of disciples. Running out in front of her boyfriend, she irritably asked Li Qingchu what he was doing here. Came to see who the hell Lin Yun is that dared to steal you away from me. The guy explained while adjusting his collar. When the angry girl demanded him to watch his mouth, Qingchu asked Ning why she was always so cold to him. He had refused so many people for her sake. The guy suggests she look back if she doesn't believe him. Pointing a finger behind her back, he reveals to her eyes a bunch of suitors eager to get his hand and heart. King Chu had never lied to her and always cared. After listening to him, Yun realizes that this is the stalker Ninj was talking about. In that case, he shouldn't stand by either. So, you're the one chasing my girlfriend all the time. I'm warning you to stay away from her, or you'll be admiring the bruises under your eyes. The young man said threateningly, hugging the surprised Naini. Holy shit. What do you mean? Shu Mining is Ling Yun's girlfriend. When did they start dating? Laughing, King Chu praised the boy for his courage. However, he would not believe in this theater. Ning is not blind. How could she give up on him and choose Yun? Then the girl wondered what would happen if it was really true. After saying that, she suddenly stood up on her toes. What happened next came as a surprise even to the wise Ling Yun. Seeing this, Li Qingchu's face instantly poured despair and anger all at once. Xu Mining hugged her boyfriend and kissed him in front of everyone. Well, Ning was the first to take the initiative. After realizing this, Yun held her tightly against him. They stood like that for a few more seconds without looking away from each other. Lin Yun, you rascal, this is my first kiss. Realize the girl at this moment. He used to cuddle with Kao Shan Chan and now he's making out with Chu Mining. One of the classmates remarked that this guy had dumped the goddess so quickly that it was a pity. What did you say? Growled an unknown monster, sneaking up on her from behind. Turning around, the classmate realized that this was the end of her beautiful and interesting life. The angry devilus yelled at her, promising the girl to sew her mouth shut right now. Placing a hand on her shoulder, her classmate asked Shan Chan to forgive her friend for saying something unnecessary. In fact, she should have taken her anger out on Ling Yun. Why take it out on her at all? However, her anger was not even close to Li Qingchu's rising anger. Ling Yun, how dare you? I'll kill you. The dumbfounded guy yelled, looking at his enemy with a doomed look. But suddenly all the anger in his eyes was gone. Turning around at the young man, Ningda immediately realized what was going on. This is very bad. With small steps approaching Ling Yun. Juan grabbed his chest with his hand and his face contorted in pain. In the same second, his weak heart stopped. Because of this, 
The guy immediately fell face down on the floor dead. A worried Yun asked his girlfriend what had happened to him, did he faint because of his anger? Sitting down next to her, Ning told her that Li Qingju had a congenital heart defect, it was her fault, the girl didn't expect him to be so shocked. At this moment, a dumbfounded Tanman ran out from the crowd of high school students. A blue-haired guy runs up to Ling Yun and asks him to save Li Qingchu. This dude has been his best friend since childhood. Suddenly, haughty applause erupted behind them. I didn't think I'd see such an interesting display upon arrival. The familiar man mockingly muttered as he looked at Yun. The man's name is Tugan. After spotting him, Tanmen warns the boss to be careful. Tugan hasn't calmed down after that beating at Juanyuan restaurant. The people behind him now belong to the Green Dragon Gang. This gang is made up of a bunch of hooligans who are desperate for a fight. So there's probably not going to be a fight without a fight. The tense Ling Yun doesn't know what they should do in such a case. This is a school. If things take too big a turn, they'll be expelled. Okay, I'll take care of it, the guy said confidently, glaring at the malcontents. Tanman can't believe that the boss wants to settle this all by himself. What about brother Kingju? We can't delay his treatment. Grabbing his friend's hand, Yoon explains that he was just about to save him. He then asked him to stay away, because they can't reveal their relationship yet, or else the bets would be forgotten. How can you even think about betting in such a situation, as expected from a boss who always prioritizes making money and cheating people? Taking the blue-haired guy's hand, Ning offers him to leave. He trusts Ling Yun completely. While Tangman holds Shan Shan indignant that they left Ling Yun in this situation, the guy himself has already taken out a golden needle, preparing to cure King Ju. It was the boss's will, and Tanman trusts him completely. When they stepped back, the Green Dragon Gang with Tugan at the head immediately surrounded Ling Yun, carefully injecting a needle into the injured man. Yo, you're all alone now. What are you gonna do now? Tugan inquired, looking at the boy haughtily. Do what? You'll find out. Then you'll come over, Yun muttered, smiling eerily. As soon as the bandits decided to pounce on him, they immediately scattered in different directions from the unseen force. These people couldn't even get close to the guy. Some of them just fell to the floor, and some of them slammed into the wall with all their speed. How is that possible? What just happened? Wiping her eyes. A delighted Lin can't realize what happened. She didn't even have time to look at it. Lin Yun didn't even seem to move, and those guys flew off into the air, paying no attention to anyone. The young man continued the treatment, taking out the needle. He realizes that after this action the victim will wake up. At the same instant, Li Qingchu woke up and opened his eyes. Did he just have a heart attack? Holding his head, the elevated guy is trying to figure out who saved him. It's a bunch of delegates from the Green Dragon Gang. Why are they lying around? Running up to brother Qingchu, a worried Tanman asks if he's okay. Also crouching down beside him, Shu Mining apologizes to the guy. She didn't mean to make him angry. Mean, thank you for saving me. I will repay you all my life. King Chu shouted gratefully, grabbing the girl's hand. However, a stunned Ning clarified that it wasn't her who saved him, but Ling Yun. Hearing this, King Chu was stunned. What did she mean by that? You say you're going to pay me back. The guy coming up behind me asked, catching his eye. Rising to his feet with the help of his friends, King Chu can't understand how this is possible. He just doesn't want to believe it. Meanwhile, Yun asked Tanman to hold on to this young man. He needs to lie down for another 20 minutes to recover. At that very second, the two of them pinned King Chu to the floor with all their might. The blue-haired guy asked his friend not to resist. It was indeed that Ling Yun had saved him. He had seen it with his own eyes. Ning, on the other hand, added, asking the young man to stay still and obey the doctor. No longer holding back tears, Li Qingchu realizes in despair that he has been saved by his love rival. What kind of public drama is this? How can he stand in front of Ning now? Get out of the way, came an aggressive and gruff male voice from behind. A large bulky man with bandaged hands and fingers burst through the crowd of high school students. There's another one, he's not like the other attackers, though, Tanman informs the boss that he should be careful with this man. He is Ti Xiaohu. One of the celebrities of the Green Dragon Gang. He has a very strong body and has exceptional talent in all kinds of martial arts. While he was saying this, 
Lin Yun pushed his blue-haired friend away from him with one hand. In the same second, the fist of an enraged Xiaohu swept through the place where Tangmen had just stood with lightning speed. The speed of his punches is quite fast. This T Xiaohu is really good at something. You're good, worthy to fight me. The man who clenched his fists shouted contentedly as he prepared to fight. You're okay too. Not like these scum who can only bully others. Yun replied in solidarity, jumping aside. The guy told his opponent that he wasn't going to attack back just yet. So he could show his full strength. Lin Yun, have you lost your mind? Shan Shan shrieked worriedly. His conditions offended Xiao Hu. Is this kid really looking down on him? Smirking. Yun picked up on the fact that the man had just been so aggressive. Did he only have enough for one punch? Don't regret it. The enraged Xiao Hu yelled, striking at the guy who dodged with difficulty. Looking at this powerful spread, Lin Yun explains to his opponent that using the same attack twice is a sure way to fail. But even such presumptuous remarks did not embarrass the confident opponent. Then how about this? He inquired, at the same second making a sweeping motion with his hand behind his back. Seeing such an intimidating technique, the frightened Lin realized that there was no way Yun could resist such a fast attack. However, contrary to her expectations, the guy still manages to dodge the blow. In turn, Xiao Hu doesn't stop attacking, praising his opponent's excellent feint in the heat of battle. When he attempted a knee strike, Lin Yun jumped into the air and pushed off his opponent's leg with one hand, but unfortunately, that was his fatal mistake, being in the air. The guy was perfectly positioned to be hit. Since Xiao Hu's body was positioned in such a way that it was impossible for him to act quickly with his hands, he decided to take advantage of the situation and kick the young man. I guess that's enough, Lin Yun said coldly, grabbing the man's knee. This was actually his plan, and the fact that his opponent tried to attack with his foot played to his advantage. Xiao Hu has a unique bone structure and talent that can be developed. It has the potential to cultivate immortality. You're done now, right? Yun inquired, taking his opponent's hand. After this rhetorical question, the guy gave Xiao Hu a punch in the chest with all his might, throwing him a few meters away from himself, facing Tugan, who was lying on the floor. The man accidentally elbowed him in the face. After being hit with such a terrifying force, Tugan immediately fell unconscious. You're really strong but I won't admit defeat. One more time, Xiao Hu persisted, wiping his mouth from the blood. Lin Yun, on the other hand, is not going to deny him such a pleasure, but only on one condition. If I lose, I'll be all yours. But if you lose, you'll leave the Green Dragon Gang and follow me wholeheartedly. At that second, without a second thought, Tu Xiao Hu agreed to the boy's terms. If he could defeat him, he would recognize him as the boss. In that case, Lin Yun proposes to proceed to the second round of their exciting battle. However, what the opponent did next was a surprise even for such a gifted fellow. Sprawling around, the distraught opponent grabbed him with his arms wrapped around his entire body. Boy, did you decide to play games like this with me? Lin Yun asked in surprise, wondering how he could get out of such a predicament. At the same moment, the guy rested his elbow on Tu Xiaohu's back. And then with a single leap, he broke free of his grip, jumping out behind his opponent's back. Dumbfounded, the man turned around and realized that things were crappy. With a backward glance, Xiao Hu immediately received a powerful kick to the chin with his foot. The man fell to the floor, and hitting his head, seemed to pass out immediately. One more time, Xiao Hu suddenly yelled, opening his eyes and trying his best to stay conscious. After this reprimand, he immediately rose to his feet and swung around, instantly striking his fist at his opponent. This guy is really strong in body and spirit. However, it's still not enough to defeat him. After dodging the blow, Lin Yun manages to launch a killing attack, even from an extremely awkward position right into the face of his still desperate opponent. Xiao Hu falls back to the floor again after another missed punch. So, can't you have enough already? Yun said confidently, continuing to stand with his arm outstretched. No way! The furious Tu Xiao who roared, pounding his fist on the floor with all his might. However, no matter how strong this man was, he wasn't even close to being equal to a cultivator who had reached the third level of body hardening. The guy just walked over and grabbed him by the scruff of the neck. In one move, the cold-blooded Ling Yun lifted a huge opponent. 
weighing at least 100 kilograms, directly above his head on his outstretched arm. After that, he threw Xiao Hu to the opposite side of the corridor with a powerful swing. After flying more than 10 meters across the room, the man crashed into the door with tremendous force. What the hell is this? Had Ling Yun finally defeated that beast? But looking at Xiao Hu, the guy realizes that it's too early to talk about it. Apart from that, there is another matter that needs to be resolved right now. A surprised King Chu with golden needles in his chest was still lying on the floor. Yun leaned over to the guy and, kneading his fists, explained that it was time to pull out the needles. A dumbfounded King Chu asks the young man if he is going to do something terrible to him. Maybe, Yun said bloodily, kneading his arm. Jumping back to Ninja out of fear and hugging her, a terrified King Chu asks to be saved. I've already done everything. Lin Yun suddenly spoke out, holding the golden needles taken out from the guy's chest. Afterward, he allows the young man to rise to his feet. After helping him up Tanman asked brother King Chu how he was feeling. He said that he felt as if his whole body was relaxed. When Grandpa Xu had given him acupuncture, it didn't seem to be like that. But seeing Naini standing next to him, he realized what he had said. Scratching the back of his head awkwardly, the young man tells the worried girl that he didn't mean to say anything bad about her grandfather. He will definitely be treated by him in the future. Li Qingqiu, I guess you won't have to be treated anymore. Xu Mining suddenly said happily, because your heart disease was completely cured by Ling Yun. What do you mean cured? Even Master Xu couldn't help him with his heart. He had to avoid irritation, strenuous exercise and injury. Tanman was precisely the person who carefully protected him from all of this. King Chu thought he would have to live like this for the rest of his life, but now he is told that his illness has been cured by Ling Yun. How is that possible? Running up to his savior, the boy asked him to do one more small favor. Hit me hard. Well, you asked for it. Yun replied, not wanting to refuse such a strange request from a persistent patient. After saying those words, Without hesitation, he immediately slapped Li Qingzu's face with great force. The blow was so powerful that the guy flew off the ground doing a few graceful somersaults in the air. As the freaking cloud covers the most interesting moment of this frame, King Chu has already managed to land with a thud on the floor. Concerned Tanman immediately rushed to the aid of his mangled friend. However, the young man doesn't even pay attention to the unbearable pain in his cheek. Placing his hands on his chest, he realizes that there is indeed nothing wrong with his heart. Now it works like any other human being. This guy can live life to the fullest from now on. Lin Yun. I. Li King Chu. Oh you my life. Gratefully shouted the guy, pushing his annoying friend away from him. Holding his head, Tanman realizes that it turns out that what the boss said earlier is true. He can even cure a congenital heart defect. That's a lot of money to make. Not only did he subdue Ti Xiaohu. He also cured Li Qingchu's heart disease with acupuncture. Ling Yun must have met people from mysterious clans and gained knowledge from them. He could be said to have been completely reborn, and his future was now limitless. That said, Shan Chan kept her distance with this guy, thinking he wasn't good enough for her. That's when the girl realized what a fool she'd been. Meanwhile, while the upset goddess is running away, Tu Xiaohu has already managed to wake up. After Ling Yun threw him across the hallway, taking a knee, the man looked at his opponent with hatred. The guy approached the maimed Xiaohu and wondered if he was still going to resist. The boy suggested that his rival finally surrender. With a hand wiping the blood from his chin, the man replied to Yun, not to even dream that he would be able to subdue him. Still not convinced. Then let's continue. The guy spoke coldly, glaring at his opponent. The very next second, the boy kicked the man in the stomach with tremendous force. No. Tu Xiaohu shouted in rage, trying to stay conscious. Slamming into the wall again, he kept saying he would never submit. I'll never give up. The man yelled in desperation. As he fell to the floor, Ling Yun who came closer, asked his opponent why he didn't admit defeat. The guy was already tired of beating him up. Well, in that case, the boy will have to use something more exciting. As Yun lifted the man into his arms, the man lying on his shoulder irritably asked the guy what he was going to do. You'll see for yourself soon. Lin Yun muttered as he opened the window. The very next moment, holding his opponent on his shoulder, the guy jumped out of the fourth floor window. 
Scared for him, Ning looked outside to see if Yun was okay. Meanwhile, the guy had already landed, wondering the frightened Xiaohu if he was having fun. Was the man still unwilling to submit? Are you crazy? Tu Xiaohu yelled in tears, then added that there was no way he would give up even if he was beaten to a pulp. Hearing these words, Lin Yun offered his opponent a little jog and then, suddenly, took off at full speed. Li Qingchu, who had accepted reality, came up to the surprised Xu Mining and asked her what her boyfriend was doing there. Looking at the fleeing Yun, Ning replied that she had no idea what was going on. Meanwhile, the boy with Xiaohu on his shoulder had already managed to run a few dozen meters around the school stadium. Holding onto the guy's back with his last strength, the man asked what the hell the guy wanted from him. I'm going to destroy you completely. Lin Yun coldly spoke as he continued to run through the stadium. Some time passed and the fleeing Tu Xiaohu was already in tears, shouting that he was giving up and swearing that he would follow the boss, asking him to spare his life. Too late, Lin Yun uttered, snatching the golden needles from his pocket. After that, the guy immediately threw his cold weapon at the back of the man running away from him in despair. It's over. I'm destroyed. Xiaohu shrieked as he felt the sharp needles in his back. That's right. The martial arts in it are now completely destroyed. In the same instant, Lin Yun's spiritual energy began to overflow all over the man's body. Running up to him, the guy punched his opponent in the back with his fist. He used his own spiritual energy to purify the man's essence. Now he's not the two Xiaohu he used to be. Lifting his opponent with one hand above his head, the boy took his time approaching the basketball hoop. Screaming hysterically, Xiaohu asked the boss what he was going to do again. Without listening to the indignation of his subordinate crying in despair, Lin Yun threw him like a basketball into the ring. After hitting the basketball backboard, Xiaohu's head was stuck in the ring. Meanwhile, walking away from the helpless man, Yun waved goodbye and added that when he had rested enough, he would find his own way down from there. The battered members of the Green Dragon Gang, trying to recover from their recent beating, rose to their feet. Have you finally woken up? The Lin Yun standing behind them eerily said, glaring bloodthirstily at them. Well, it's about time we made amends. Hearing these strange words, the beaten bandits in awe perplexedly asked the guy what kind of compensation he was talking about. Money. Give him money quickly or we won't be able to leave here today, explained the already experienced Tugan. Hugging his bro, clinging to him, the dazed bandit reminded him that they were the ones who had been beaten. So why should they give him money? Isn't that extortion? What did you say there? Lin Yun who approached him inquired. Seeing the furious face of this bloodthirsty monster, the two poor men screamed in fear. At the same second having snatched the phone from his pocket, one of the bandits asked the guy to show him the QR code so that he could immediately transfer the money. Of course, Lin Yun said contentedly, taking out his phone as well. We're ready too, shouted the other members of the Green Dragon Gang, hoping that they could escape. Li has transferred 8,000 yuan to you. Zhang has transferred 3,000 yuan to you. Shang has transferred 5,000 yuan to you. Chu has transferred 12,000 yuan to you. Well, since these guys are so sincere. Lin Yun decided to forget about what happened today. However, they must tell their boss Kun two things when they return. First, Lin Yun would soon go to him personally to discuss the real issue of compensation. Secondly, Tu Xiaohu is now one of Yun's men. He no longer has anything to do with the Green Dragon Gang. Realizing the seriousness of the situation, the gangsters began to discuss the words the guy had just said. Tu Xiaohu is the future successor of their gang and this dude wants to take him for himself, but there's nothing they can do. This kid is out of their league, so all they can do is just accept it. Then, glancing angrily at the still sitting on the floor Tugan, the guys gushed that all of this had happened, because they had provoked Ling Yun. It was because of Tugan that they had gotten hurt, and he also dared to lie to them about this boy being an ordinary high school student. Does he really think there are high school students like that on every corner? In so many years, this was the first time the Green Dragon Gang had lost such an important person. Trying not to burst into tears, Tugan mentally realized that at that time, Ling Yun really wasn't that strong. Meanwhile, four police cars with their flashers on are speeding towards the school. Looking out the window with her surprised friend, Lin can't figure out what the police are doing here. 
As they stared dumbfoundedly into the street, one of the police cars stopped, and a woman stepped out of the driver's door that opened. That's her! The green-haired girl shrieked even more surprised. That's the same Hatai who came to see Ling Yun this morning. Lin Manhin. A short time later, the woman was already sitting at her school desk. As she and her partner were listening to teacher Wu's explanation, Li Qingchu, who was standing in the hallway, told his friend that his dad had said that an influential policewoman had been sent from the capital to work on an important case. In turn, Tanman, not listening to him, pressed himself against the glass and fascinatedly began drooling over this incredible woman. Is that really her? So beautiful, King Chu remarked, understanding the blue-haired boy's admiration. Hey, why are you frozen? Lin Yun inquired, abruptly grabbing his shoulder. The guy reminded King Chu that he had saved his life somehow. Therefore, Yun asked him to buy him some food. In turn, the young man standing next to him, awkwardly scratching the back of his head, did not refuse him. Brother, a worried shout was heard from Lin Ju nearby. Running up to him, the sister asked the boy if he was all right. The boy put his hand on her shoulder and reassured her that he was fine, and then offered to go out to eat together. Guys in my class, today is my treat. Let's go to Zhuanyuan. Lin Yun announced happily, looking at his classmates. With a perplexed look at Tang Min, Li Qingchu asked if it was possible that Yun wanted him to pay for lunch for the entire class. Ahem, I'm afraid that's exactly what he meant. The blue-haired boy awkwardly muttered, sympathizing with his friend. Meanwhile, Tu Xiaohu, who was still hanging in the basketball hoop, noticed something amazing. His body was stronger than ever. Tu Xiaohu, what a look you have. Tanman, who had come up to him, said mockingly. For his part, the man not paying attention to his words, continues to hang in the ring, staring into the void. Realizing that he was ignoring him, the blue-haired guy turned around, annoyed to say that apparently the Ambo didn't want to go to the boss's lunch. Asking him to stop, Xiaohu asked if it was Ling Yun who sent Tangman here to summon him. Do you think I would lie to you? Tanman muttered, casting a confident glance at the man. After his words, Tu Xiaohu grabbed the basketball hoop with his hands. Then he climbed out of there in one sharp movement holding onto the metal frame with both hands. Seeing this gruesome sight, Tangman was scared out of his wits. When the man jumped to the ground, the blue-haired boy collapsed under his pressure out of fear. Let's go, Xiaohu said, lifting the frightened Tangman off the ground by the scruff of his neck. Looking at him, the blue-haired guy noticed that Tu Xiaohu seemed to have gotten stronger after being beaten by the boss. After gathering together, the boys left the school and headed to a restaurant located in Zhuanyuan. But, all of a sudden, their road was blocked by Lin Mengen and his partners, demanding Lin Yun to stop. With a suspicious glance at her, the boy wondered what was wrong. The woman then explained that today's incident required his cooperation in the investigation. The police then asked the boy to accompany them to the station. I'm not going. Everyone knows it's not my fault. Lin Yun indifferently muttered as he walked past the uniformed girl. But suddenly she grabbed the guy's arm tightly. Mencken explained that she was not here to arrest the boy. The girl once again asked him to cooperate with the investigation and testify. She promised that after that the boy would be released. Realizing the seriousness of the situation, the classmates standing nearby realized that their friend would not be able to get away with it so easily. Lin Mengen, on the other hand, began to wait for a reasonable answer from the guy, hoping that he wouldn't create some nonsense just need to testify, right? Lin Yun was curious, looking at the policeman, then come with me to Zhuanyuan, we'll settle this over a meal. The boy grabbed her hand and pulled her close to him. A couple hours later, a restaurant in Zhuanyuan, admiring the sumptuous food on his plate, one of his classmates remarked that he never thought that someday in his life, he would be able to afford to eat in Zhuanyuan. Who would have thought that an unassuming fatty from a former time would become so powerful? Yes, it's all thanks to Ling Yun's fame. Even the popular personalities of the King Shui school had gathered around him. Meanwhile, while the beautiful policewoman asks Lin Yun to finally let her go, the guy holding her in his arms asks the girl to hold still, saying he's afraid she'll fall. While one of the four King Shui school bullies, Tanman, is trying to get to know Officer Lin, the green dragon bandit, Tu Xiaohu, is tantalizingly eyeing the food on the table. 
Not far away sits the number one rich man in King Shui, and next to him is the best friend of one of the beauties of the school, Lin, looking at this guy, cannot believe that she was lucky enough to sit next to Li Qingxu, waving her hand happily at Ning, the second beauty of King Shui school. Lin Ju invited the girl to sit down beside her, grinning, the purple-haired girl pushed back her chair and remarked that it was the right choice. In turn, when Xu Mining took a seat next to her, the school's first beauty, Shan Shan, wondered why, when Ning met Ling Yun, she hadn't heard about it. Hearing this strange claim to herself, Nin glanced suspiciously at the goddess. The purple-haired girl narrated that they met the very next day after the guy ran with a sandbag on his back. Looking at Xu Mining, Shan Chan smirked at the fact that it was only a couple of days ago, so how did the two of them manage to get this far in their relationship? Throwing a glance at the goddess, Ning realized that something wasn't right here. Shan Chan seemed to like Ling Yun as well. The love rival probe has been activated. Xu Mining moved closer and said that it was her and Yun's secret, and she couldn't tell her. Smiling, the goddess replied that in that case, she should keep a closer eye on her boyfriend. He was hugging the policewoman in front of everyone. Shan Shan understands. And so, no matter who Ninga is to Ling Yun, she will pursue her own interests to the end. Xu Mining, on the other hand, is not afraid of the goddess, and she's sure that Yun will definitely be her. But suddenly their argument was interrupted by Ling Yun putting food on his sister, saying that he would have a present for Lin Ju after lunch. After that, Lin Mengen decided to ask Tu Xiaohu why he was hanging on the basketball board. Was it really Lin Yun's doing? She then added, asking the man to consider that this was a police interrogation, and therefore he should answer honestly. After listening to her, Xiaohu looked at the Tangman sitting next to him, who was telling him not to talk nonsense with his facial expression. Meanwhile, the boss behind the policeman's back showed his underling a fist, crunching his fingers. After realizing what this meant, a stunned to Xiaohu, while Ling Yun was trying to hold back his laughter, said that he thought it was cool, so he climbed up there to get some fresh air. After saying that, the man asked Officer Lin if she was satisfied with that answer. Is it really that simple? Mengkin wondered pointing a finger at him. Xiaohu, eating a piece of meat, swore that every last word was true. After returning to her seat, the pensive woman calmed down. Since Tu Xiaohu had said it himself, she had no more questions. Not bad bro, the boss just got you down, and you're still covering for him, Tanman said, nudging his comrade with his elbow. The red-haired man, on the other hand, explained that someone not strong enough should bow down to such a powerful man. The blue-haired guy then asked if bro was really going to follow the boss in the future. Isn't he afraid of revenge from the green dragon? Taking a bite of meat Tu Xiaohu explained that the green dragon was no match for Ling Yun. However, Tanman recalled that the man was the receiver of that gang. Isn't it a shame for him to leave like that? Xiaohu replied that he was convinced that he would get more by following the boss. Meanwhile, looking at him, Li Qingchu can't understand how they made this walking deadly weapon willingly follow them. This Ling Yun is really unusual. He also cured a sick heart. The boy must repay him and become his good friend. Looking at Qingchu suspiciously, Ling Yun can't understand why this guy keeps looking at him. He doesn't want to give a backhand from paying the table, does he? Why is there thunder? The weather forecast didn't say it was going to rain. A concerned voice suddenly sounded, shocking Yun. No. Is that what he thought it was? At that moment thunder erupted and bright lightning struck. The people on the street can't understand what has happened when they see this strange sight. Why did everything suddenly go dark? A bright discharge of electricity cuts across the sky, heading towards the earth through the clouds. Walking over to the restaurant window, Ling Yun looked at this strange phenomenon thoughtfully. Holy shit. Why is it so dark? Is it the end of the world today? Tanman yelled hysterically, materializing next to the boy. Looking at the bright lightning behind the glass above them, classmates fearfully ask what's going on here. Some began shouting that they would not eat and would go home now. Yun then turned to Kao Shan Chan and her friend and asked them to tell the students in the dining hall to stop panicking. Let them eat what they want and soon everything will be back to normal. Lin Ju and Tu Xiaohu were told by the guy to follow him. We'll go out to look around, Lin Yun added, glancing at them confidently. Boss, don't leave me. I want to go with you too. I'm your true friend, cried Tanman in despair, grabbing the boy. 
Abruptly Ninj ran up, poking her finger at the guy who had accidentally elbowed Tanman, asking if he was going to leave his girlfriend here. Realizing that he couldn't get rid of them so easily, Yun decided to think about what these two could do for him. Looking at Tanman who was trying to recover from the merciless elbow strike on his face, the boy asked what the tallest mountain around King Shui Lake was. The blue-haired guy who had cheered up said that on the highest point of Mount Lunpan, there was a tiger cliff facing King Shui Lake. In turn, Yoon asked if it was possible to get there by car. Not understanding why he needed this information, Tanman replied that it was only possible to get to the foot of the mountain by vehicle. In that case, Ling Yun decided to take the three of them to the tiger cliff. The blue hair guy should go to a place where he could see the entire King Shui Lake, the higher the better. There is no time to lose, and therefore it is worthwhile to act now. Once outside, the boy instructed Xiaohu to go to Mount Lunpan. When he got up there, he should find Yun there. The man didn't refuse and said he would go up there. It might be a little shaky. So hold on tight, Lin Yun warned grabbing his sister and his girlfriend by their waists. After those words, he began the countdown. Three, two, one guy flew into the air at breakneck speed like a rocket, holding the two screaming girls tightly in his arms. However, for some reason, Shu Mining didn't care much about this unusual situation. Looking at Lin Ju, she wondered why her boyfriend always took his little sister with him wherever he went. For her part, Lin Ji wasn't far behind in her inadequacy as her rival, in her thoughts. She thought it would have been better if she had been alone with her brother. Meanwhile, Lin Yun realized that he should hurry up. This was a great cultivation opportunity granted by the heavens. In a matter of seconds, the guy started flying kilometer after kilometer. After a while, he flew up to Mount Lunpan. Here comes the tiger cliff. Placing the girls on the ground, the boy reported that they were in position. Stepping back a bit, Yun pointed into the distance and told them to look over there. Seeing what he pointed to, the girls gasped in surprise. On the cliff beneath them, an energy they had never seen before began to gather. The foliage of the trees around us began to snap from the increasing flow of the wind. It's coming, Lin Yun said tensely as he looked down. Meanwhile, a huge tornado had already formed on the tiger cliff. After realizing what it was, the dumbfounded Shu Mining narrated that it was a dragon whirlwind. Lin Ju who ran closer cried out in surprise that this was her first time seeing such an incredible natural spectacle. Tornadoes are usually a natural phenomenon. The so-called dragon vortex, which periodically appears over warm water, with its upper end associated with thunderstorm clouds and its lower end extending directly to the water, is a rapidly rotating vortex filled with water vapor. But this one is so big, there was definitely no dragon involved. At that moment, the hurricane began to take a strange shape, expanding slightly to the sides. The head of a white dragon appeared out of the streams of wind, casting a glance at Ling Yun. It's coming, the lad thought admiringly as he looked at this majestic creature. But suddenly, the dragon's head disappeared, and the tornado returned to its previous state. In a second, this mysterious phenomenon was back to being a regular hurricane. Not understanding why this was the case, Ling Yun realized that he had just clearly seen the outline of a dragon. There certainly can't be any mistake here. At the same instant, an incredibly strong wind blew. While the fellas were trying to stay on their feet, Ninj, who was covering herself with her hands, asked where such a powerful flow of wind had come from. That was when, grabbing that very brush from his pocket, Ling Yun realized that this was not just a hurricane. When the guy pulled the object in front of him, it began to gather itself an incredible amount of spiritual energy. You feel it too thought the boy, looking at the brush in his hand, seeing the flow of strange energy, Lin Ju and Ninger, realized that something inexplicable was about to happen, then they jumped away. In the same second, Ling Yun began to absorb a colossal amount of spiritual energy. This was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. The ability to use the dragon's spiritual energy to re-cleanse the sinew and marrow and completely transform the body. Luckily, Yun has this brush that can drain all that dragon energy out of his body by absorbing it. Otherwise, if such a huge amount of spiritual energy simultaneously rushed into a guy's body, he would definitely explode and die. 
but there are things more disgusting to the sky than this brush. The innate spiritual body is really strong. It absorbs a bunch of dragon energy without any discomfort. Cultivation with this type of physique is advancing by leaps and bounds. But because of this frantic speed, it's not really safe. Lin Yu only had to wait a little longer. When Lin Yun's cultivation becomes strong enough to protect her from all threats, he would immediately teach his sister the cultivation method. After a while, the incredible hurricane of energy subsided. It finally stopped. I was already thinking that I was about to be blown away by the wind. The exhausted Chu Mining muttered, holding onto the tree trunk to avoid falling, glancing at her boyfriend. Naini wondered if he was alright, but seeing the state he was now in, the girl was taken aback. Brother, your face, dumbfoundedly said Lin Ju as she looked at the boy. Hmm, what's wrong with my face? Lin Yun asked perplexedly, feeling his cheek, pointing her finger at her brother. Lin Ju shouted admiringly that he had lost weight, and as if he had become a completely different person. Looking at his hands, the boy was surprised to notice that his sister wasn't lying. What a surprise. The dragon's spiritual energy was able to completely transform his body and burn all the fat in an instant. But the boy can't tell the others. We have to come up with another explanation. Awkwardly scratching the back of his head, Yun explained that he didn't know what had happened. But when the guy decided to move on to excuses, Chu Mining ran up to him and lovingly hugged him tightly. Due to the surprise, the boy couldn't keep his feet, and they both fell to the ground right in front of Lin Ju's eyes. Looking closely into his eyes, Ning explained that it didn't matter to her how Yun had changed. What mattered was that her boyfriend was so handsome now. Lin Yun, I think, the girl started to say, placing a hand on the perplexed boy's shoulder. But at that moment, she was interrupted by Lin Ju, asking Mining what she was going to do. Trying to kiss her boyfriend. What's the big deal? Ning muttered, not taking her eyes off the startled Ling Yun. Then the pink-haired girl shrieked that that wasn't what she was talking about at all. Ninj hadn't even asked her brother, after all. What if he doesn't want to do it? Meanwhile, such words only spurred Shu Mining into action. Lifting her boyfriend's chin, the girl asked him to tell her if he wanted it or not. Brother, Lin Ju yelled indignantly when she saw that Ninger was already reaching out to kiss. The only thing the desperate Ling Yun was thinking about at this moment was, help, how should I respond to this? But suddenly a rather familiar voice was heard calling out to his boss. A panting Tu Xiaohu finally climbed up the mountain. There he is, his savior. In the same second, Ling Yun disappeared, successfully escaping from Ning's embrace. Friendly punching Xiaohu's chest with his fist, the guy praised him and asked his subordinate to walk beside him from now on. Damn, that's some power, thought the red-haired man, feeling the full force of his boss's punch. Anyway, is that person Ling Yun for sure? With a thumbs up, Yun explained that Xiaohu had better ignore him. If he was late, it would all be over. Therefore, he should look at the sky first of all. Looking in front of him, the dazed man noticed a raging tornado. Is water being sucked into the sky? Are there really gods in the sky? Hearing such ridiculous words, Ninger remarked that Tu Xiaohu didn't seem to have learned anything at school. This is just a natural phenomenon, a tornado curling the water and lifting it up. But when the man inquired where the rising water went and why it didn't make its way back, Ling Yun remarked that it was unlikely that such an impressive dragon vortex would disappear as water vapor in the blink of an eye. In the same second, the tornado simply disappeared before their eyes. Seeing this, Ninger wondered why the sky had suddenly cleared up. How could it be like that? Not understanding what was going on, Lin Ju looked at her brother and asked him if he had anything to say to them. Lin Yun, who had come closer to the cliff, looked up into the sky and explained that he could only say that there were still many things in this world that science could not explain. There are mysterious powers that some people cannot see or touch. This does not mean that it does not exist. So, brother you, have you changed so much because you came into contact with these mysterious powers? Lin Ju inquired pointing a finger at the guy, surprised that his little sister was so smart and understood everything at once. Lin Yun awkwardly replied that it could be said that way. The reason he brought them to the dragon vortex today is to make them realize this truth. So in the future, they will. Without letting him finish his wise truth, Shu Mining once again threw herself into the boy's arms, 
shrieking at how strong he was. From now on, wherever the boy went, she would follow him. Looking at the girl, Yun realized that he had almost forgotten about her and his smugness. After that, the guy shoved Ningo away from him, explaining that he needed to save someone, and then asked the girl to go back to school with Linju. Looking at him perplexed, the two asked what it meant to save someone. Yes, save and pay for kindness, Lin Yun uttered, showing them the spiritual energy-filled brush. After all, without this item, he would probably die. Meanwhile, looking down from the cliff, the red-haired man wondered what had happened. Why did the water in the sky disappear? Then Yun ran up and gave him a friendly hug and asked Tu Xiaohu not to dwell on it. Then the guy suggested him to run a race to the foot of the mountain. Lose at your own risk, the guy shouted, abruptly leaping out of his seat and rushing in the opposite direction. The dazed Xiaohu shouted after him that it was unfair to start so suddenly. At the same second, the red-haired man rushed to catch up with his boss. In turn, Linju and Ning cast disdainful glances at each other, realizing that if it wasn't for the other, they would have been alone with Ling Yun this time. Realizing this the offended girls turned away from each other unhappily. Meanwhile, Ling Yun and his subordinate were already at the foot of the mountain. While Xiaohu was trying to catch his breath while lying on the ground, his boss noticed that the man had done quite well. He had even managed to keep up with him. Although, in truth, Yun had intentionally slowed down his speed. After all, the guy actually runs 10 times faster than normal people. Boss, if there are any more tests, start. You don't need to worry about my injuries. Tu Xiaohu muttered, still unable to rise to his feet. Placing a hand on his shoulder, Yun inquired about what kind of injuries his subordinate was talking about. Abruptly rising to his feet, the surprised red-haired man looked down at his hands. How come? Dazedly he shouted, not understanding how it happened. When Tu Xiaohu had climbed the mountain earlier, he had fallen a bunch of times and received bruises all over his body. But why is it all healed now? Not only that, he could even feel the strength filling his body. No wonder boss Ling Yun had told him to climb the mountain, this guy definitely did it to train him. While Xiaohu with tears of happiness in his eyes, gratefully hugged his boss. Yun asked the man to get ready, as his suffering was just beginning. A few hours later, King Shui Hospital. Looking at the man hooked up to a ventilator, the nurse said that the doctor had already alerted that his condition was critical, and the patient would not last long. Leaning over the man in tears, Liu Li begs the doctors not to give up on her husband and save him. Trying to calm the woman down, the nurse apologized, adding that they did their best and really tried to save him. Then let me try. A familiar voice was heard at the entrance to the chamber. After realizing that she had indeed heard that voice somewhere, the crying Liu Li turned around in surprise, hoping that it was the person she was thinking of. It's good to see you again, Aunt Liu Li. The guy spoke out, confidently keeping his hands in his pockets. Walking over to the dying patient, Yun crouched down beside him and took his hand to check his condition. After that, the guy smiled and explained that there would be no problem, and it was possible to save this man. Smiling happily, Liu Li can't believe his happiness. In the meantime, the boy who had taken the needles out of his pocket, asked everyone to go out and wait in the corridor. This would go quickly. When the guy took out the golden needle, Liu Li who saw this was overjoyed, while the nurse standing next to him was greatly surprised. Running up to Yun, the medical worker asked what he was going to do with the patient. Obviously, heal him and save his life, uttered the boy, glancing confidently at the girl. Holding up the indignant nurse, Liu Li explained to her that this boy is a good doctor of Chinese medicine, and he can really cure her husband. The red-haired bulky man didn't stay away either. He confirmed that there was no man the boss couldn't save and asked the employee to stay out of his way. Then, taking the woman's hand, the nurse said she understood how she felt. But there are no miracles in this world. Don't fall for obvious deception. Smiling contentedly, Ling Yun realized that he had been mistaken for a rogue. Well, then he'd have to let this girl expand her horizons this time. Still not understanding what this boy was going to do, the medical officer looked at him suspiciously. Meanwhile, Lin Yun had already been staring thoughtfully at the nurse's boom box for several seconds. Covering her breasts with her hands, the puzzled girl asked the guy what it was he was staring at. Yao Zhu, right, 
since you think I'm a liar, stay here and watch, the boy who peeked at the nurse's name on the namatag said confidently, then, looking at his subordinate, Yun asked Tu Xiaohu to escort Aunt Liu Li into the corridor and wait outside. The next moment the ward door slammed shut and the guy and the nurse were alone with the patient. The girl then shouted at the young man, warning him that this was a hospital. If he came any closer, she would call security. Hearing those words, Yun walked over to her and covered the nurse's mouth with his hand. The guy asked the girl not to worry. He explained that he only needed to inject a few needles. Taking the woman by the shoulders, the boy gently set her down on a nearby chair. He recalls that the patient's family agrees to his intervention. For his part, Lin Yun promises that nothing bad will happen. You can also always call the police if anything goes wrong, added the guy letting the girl go. But, anyway, she has nothing to worry about. The boy corrected his tie and explained that he was not a crook. He had previously cured Aunt Liu Li of her illness, that's why he's so trustworthy. Looking at this strange young man in surprise, the nurse asked how this was possible. Twenty minutes later, the man lying dying opened his eyes again for the first time in hours. When he woke up, he stared puzzledly at the ceiling for a while longer, trying to realize what was happening. Rising abruptly from his hospital bed, he asked what was wrong. When Liu Li, who took his hand, was glad that he was finally awake, the man apologized to his dear wife for making her worry. At this moment, a nurse sitting nearby was watching them. The doctor was clearly reporting Li Yunsen's critical condition. How could he wake up? Moreover, how does he have the strength to sit and talk to someone? Is this a dream? Liu Li immediately thanked Ling Yun for saving her husband. The man sitting next to her promised to make sure to pay for the guy's treatment as soon as possible. The boy calmed them down by saying that he didn't need the money. He had already made a lot of money in the last two days. And I'm talking about tens of thousands. Yun explained with a satisfied smirk. The nurse who looked at him in surprise wondered how it was possible to earn tens of thousands in a couple of days. Smirking, Xiaohu standing nearby remarked that naturally, his boss was extraordinary. Meanwhile, a puzzled Liu Li asked what they could give the guy in that case, if he was making so much money. At that instant, a notification came to the phone on the table. Taking the devices in her hands, the woman looked thoughtfully at the message that had arrived. When Liu Li saw this, she still couldn't move in surprise for a while. Her bank card received a transfer of 30,000 yuan. Lin Yun asked Liu Li's aunt to keep this 30,000 yuan. Let the woman buy her husband some good recovery tonics. Meanwhile, the nurse who looked at him dumbfounded couldn't understand how this guy could transfer such a huge amount of money so easily. Boss, this is the money you fought for, shouted Tu Xiaohu indignantly as he ran up to Yun. Scratching his head smugly, Lin Yun explained that money meant nothing to him. Especially since this dude doesn't even realize that compared to the cost of that brush, that amount is nothing. While he was thinking about it, Liu Li had already started sending the money back, explaining that the guy had already helped her family a lot already, and so they couldn't accept it. However, as he approached her, Yun firmly grabbed the woman's hand, snatching the phone from the girl's hand, the boy noticed that although her husband had recovered from his illness, as she could see for herself, the man was still emaciated and weak. Although his appearance is not as bad as before, he is actually suffering from the effects of his illness. If she doesn't provide her husband with a VIP comprehensive meal of tens of thousands of yuan now, perhaps if Liu Li wants to do so later, even the best nutritionists won't be able to help her. After giving the woman back her phone, Lin Yun asked her again to keep the money. In turn, the man sitting on the bunk said they couldn't afford such a huge help. Believe me, you get used to it when you suffer. Lin Yun reassured the patient, while the others in the hospital room looked at him puzzledly. As they left the room, the guy who turned around on them said he had to go and hoped they would see each other again someday. The next second the door slammed shut. After hugging her husband, Liu Li sat in tears that Lin Yun's great kindness to their family was something that could not be paid for in a lifetime. Li Yunsen agreed, suggesting that he would then go back and set up a longevity tablet for this guy to worship day after day. The astonished nurse can't understand how this boy could leave so easily. She's still here. At that time, on the same floor of the hospital, walking beside Yun, Xiaohu remarked that the boss was incredibly cool. The smiling guy agreed with him, 
Suddenly, a woman's cry sounded behind their backs, calling out to Ling Yun and asking him to stop. Not sure what that meant, the puzzled boy turned to the girl running behind him. Running up to him, the girl pinned the guy against the wall with her hand. From such an unexpected movement, the dumbfounded guy went into a stupor. Hey, what are you doing? Tu Xiaohu indignantly inquired, walking closer to the girl. The also perplexed Ling Yun reminded Nurse Yao that he had impressed her. So what was it that she didn't like? My shift ends soon. Do you want to hang out together? The girl asked sharply, shyly fixing her hair. Such a statement was incredibly startling to both Ling Yun and Tu Xiaohu. They immediately pictured this beautiful girl splashing in the water in a swimsuit. Meanwhile, Yao Zhu noticed that Yun seemed to like this outfit, didn't she? She can wear it all the time, no matter what for or where. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Wait a minute, isn't that nurse a little fast? She was looking at Ling Yun with displeasure just a little while ago, wasn't she? The girl, on the other hand, noticed that this guy is handsome, good at medicine, kind-hearted, and knows how to make money. Hey, any way you can get him. Still surprised by her behavior, Ling Yun tells Nurse Yao that he'd love to go along with it, but he has something to do later. The guy really doesn't have time. I see, Yao Zhu said disappointedly, hugging the young man. Since that was the case, the girl asked the boy to tell her his phone number. Then she could ask him out later trying to dodge her piercing gaze. Yun had to agree to it. Taking out her phone, Yao Zhu immediately wrote down the guy's number. Great, I got the contact info. The girl shrieked happily, pressing the phone to her cheek. Then, standing next to Tu Xiaohu also asked Nurse Yao to take his cell phone number. And why should I? The girl inquired indifferently, looking at the red-haired man, walking away in the opposite direction. Yao Zhu advised him not to get too deceived at someone else's expense. Hearing such cruel words against him, Xiao Hu rushed into his boss's arms in tears, patting his upset friend on the back. Ling Yun asked him not to be so sad. After all, Yun is here. It's normal for her not to look at Xiao Hu. But boss, why did you lie to Nurse Yao? You don't have anything else to do, do you? The puzzled red-haired man asked. I don't have any, Yun replied, looking at him slyly, but at least you got one, he added as the petrified Xiaohu began to collapse from shock. After a while, the two were already standing outside the street food tent. Sipping a coke, Ling Yun decided to clarify something with his subordinate. So you're saying that Guo Junfa paid you to give me a good beating? The guy asked him nonchalantly. When Tu Xiaohu confirmed this, the boy asked how much that dude had paid him. The red-haired man said that so far he had only given a deposit of 10,000. After the job was done, the customer had to pay another 10. Fine, then go now and get the second installment of payment. Ling Yun said as he looked at his friend. However, Xiaohu objected. After all, the boss had beaten him up himself, and he hadn't completed the assignment. Therefore, it would be more reasonable for him to return the deposit himself. With a chagrined exhale, Yun noted that he seemed to be too used to Tanman, who understood him half-heartedly. Anyway, when the time comes, the subordinate has to do what the guy tells him to do now. After listening to the boss, Xiaohu warned that if they did so, they would be breaking the law. After continuing to sip his coke, Ling Yun asked the man what the man cared about the laws, now that he was with him, he should just forget about it and follow his boss's rules. Leaning over to the boy, Xiaohu asked what the boy's rules were. Never put yourself at a disadvantage, and always try to draw out as much as possible. Lin Yun replied, looking confidently at the sub-king. The time was nearing evening. The man standing in front of the hospital bed Junfa was sitting on told him that Tu Xiaohu was first sent flying by Ling Yun, then thrown back 8 meters again. After all, Ling Yun had thrown Tu Xiaohu into a basketball hoop. He also extorted tens of thousands from the green dragon people. Damn fool, Junfa shouted in rage, slamming his fists on the tray. But at that moment there was a knock on the door. Guo Junfa, it's me Tu Xiaohu came a familiar voice from outside the door. Come to return the deposit. About time. The guy in bed mumbled, waiting for the intruder to enter. The door opened and Tu Xiaohu appeared on the threshold. After saying hello to Brother Hu, Junfa remarked that he didn't need to come in person to return the money. He could keep it for himself. 
Sighing, the red-haired man gathered his thoughts. This is just extortion, no big deal. At the same instant he took a step, entering the chamber. In a matter of seconds he reached the bunk on which the mangled fellow lay, holding out his hand. Xiaohu said that he had dealt with Ling Yun, and so Junfa should hurry up and give the rest. You think I'm that stupid? Everyone at school saw you get beaten up by Lin Yun. You still have the nerve to ask me for money, shouted the angry guy, resenting this behavior. In turn, a creepy looking Xiaohu explained that he had lost to that dude the first time just to expose his weaknesses. Then he followed the boy, attacked him before he was ready, and made him beg for mercy on his knees after three blows. After realizing that it was bullshit, Junfa looked angrily at the red-haired man, on his knees begging for mercy. How the hell does he have the nerve to make such a thing up? Shame on him. What, you don't believe it? Xiaohu shrieked irritably, grabbing the boy by the scruff of his neck. He then suggested Junfa to go with him to see Ling Yun in person right now, and see for himself, if he could even get up a little bit after the beating the man had given him. Is he kidding me by saying to go with him to see Ling Yun? Does he really want Junfa to get beaten up himself? Asking brother Hu to calm down, the guy pointed out that it was only 10,000. Taking the phone in his hand, he irritably agreed to give the rest of the money right away. Not 10,000, but 20. Xiaohu suddenly corrected him, making a creepy face. Junfa then suggested that perhaps brother Hu had forgotten but he had already given him a deposit of 10,000. All that was left to pay was another 10. With a menacing glance at the guy, Xiaohu reminded him that he had been hurt by Ling Yun, and on top of that, he had to make a big mess, which almost got him into the police. His employer should reimburse him for his medical expenses and expenses for moral damages. The guy in the hospital bed could not believe that there were such shameless people in this world. With an irritated snicker, he told brother Hu that he shouldn't do that. It's unpleasant to even hear such a thing. Xiaohu reminded him that Ling Yun still didn't know that Junfa was the one behind the case. So the man could go and tell him at any time. Do you think you'll be able to get out of the hospital for once then? The bulky man asked his opinion, threatening the guy on the bunk. I got it. I'll give you this 20,000. A dumbfounded Junfa yelled, poking something on his phone. Soon Xiaohu received a notice from the bank. That's fine. If you need to beat Lin Yun again, call me anytime. The red-haired man said happily as he noticed that the money had been deposited into his account. Junfa asked brother Hu not to worry, explaining that it was all in the past. He was going to go and make amends to Ling Yun in a few days and explain all the misunderstandings. The red-haired man came to the door and told the guy to do what he wanted. He doesn't care, but if Ling Yun hits Xiaohu again in the future, Junfa will still have to pay the medical expenses. What? I said dumbfoundedly, looking at the man in his wake. The next instant the chamber door slammed shut. The man standing next to him asked the boss if he would just let this dude go. After saying that, Junfa shouted irritably. What else could he do? Even his men altogether would not be able to defeat Tu Xiaohu. But here's the strange thing. For some reason, the way this man extorted money seemed very familiar to the guy. Evening of the same day, city hospital. Walking towards the exit, Tu Xiaohu called the boss and narrated that he had followed his method and actually got the money. Lin Yun, on the other hand, praised him, asking the sub Chain how he felt about it. This is so much better than beating someone up. I'll do it again and next time. The red-haired man agreed admiringly. The next day, normal urban neighborhood, on his way to school, Lin Yun got caught in a very heavy rain. If it hadn't been for a promise to my sister, there's no way I'd be going to school on a day like this. He shouted. The boy shouted, trying to hold on to his umbrella as it flew away from a strong gust of wind, but suddenly the boy notices the silhouette of a familiar man nearby. Hmm, isn't that Zhuang Maifeng? Shivering from the cold, the woman can't understand why she chose this particular day to find Ling Yun. At the same second, she accidentally slipped. Did you want something? Yun was curious after catching the girl. Feeling the warmth of the guy hugging her, Maifeng realized everything. Who are you? Let me go. She screamed, kicking the bloodthirsty maniac trying to kill her in the stomach. But when the dumbfounded boy tried to explain who he was, Maifeng said it was a lie. Ling Yun is a fat guy, plus he's not that handsome at all. The young man, blushing with embarrassment, looked at her and mentally forgave the woman for the compliment. Walking closer to the girl, 
The guy again said that he was really Ling Yun and offered to call him if she didn't believe him. Then Zhuang Meifeng burst into tears and said that she didn't have a phone. They took all her things. The girl had almost nothing left. Tensing up, the boy asked what happened. At that moment, lightning struck amidst the torrential downpour. Yoon remarked that it was raining too hard and suggested that the woman talk about it elsewhere. When he and his guest arrived at his house, the guy showed her his ID. So you really are Ling Yun? Meifeng said in surprise as she held his ID card in her hand. In turn, the boy explained that he simply had no reason to lie to her. Okay, now that your identity is confirmed, take off your clothes, muttered the maniac with a bloodthirsty glance at his victim. Not expecting such words from her savior, the confused girl asked the guy what he was going to do with her. Leaning over to the woman, Yun explained that her clothes were soaked. Or is she going to wait until she gets sick? When Meifeng reminded the guy that she would have nothing to wear in that case, the young man pointed out that there was a bed here for such situations, and the girl could just get under the covers. Then I guess you can, the woman replied shyly, carefully fixing her drenched hair. Five minutes later, standing outside the door, Ling Yun asked the girl if she had undressed and if he could come in. After entering the room, the guy suggested that Meifeng finally tell him why she was looking for him, covering herself with a blanket. The woman narrated that after Yun had beaten Sun Xin that night, his family had started looking for the boy to get revenge. The boy, on the other hand, implied that there were quite a few people who wanted revenge on him, and they were hardly any different. Be that as it may, Yun is no match for them. Abruptly rising from the bed, Meifeng tried to explain to the boy that he didn't understand anything. The Sun family had sent trained fighters after him. An ordinary high school student wouldn't be able to handle them. However, Ling Yun did not pay attention to her words anymore. Something beautiful appeared before his eyes. It was something he hadn't seen up close since his rebirth in this world. From what he saw, blood rushed from his nose in a powerful stream, covering herself with the blanket again. The agitated Zhuang Meifeng explained that in any case, the guy should be careful. The young man with a bloody nose replied that it was wonderful that they had deigned to send trained fighters after him. Yun was just short of normal opponents. The only thing the guy is afraid of is that these people won't get to him. Meanwhile, a group of fighters in professional uniforms had already arrived at Lin Yun's house. The person sitting in the car reported to the higher-ups that they had found Lin Yun and then asked for directions. Meanwhile, Meifeng warned Ling Yun again that this matter was not as simple as he thought. The Sun family is so powerful that one casual word against them could ruin a whole life. The boy looked at the girl with a puzzled look and asked her why. Since the Sun family was so powerful, she didn't want to marry Sun Xing. Yes, because Sun Xing is a pervert with nothing but debauchery in his head. I will not marry him even in the face of death. The woman suddenly shrieked, jumping off the bed abruptly. Meanwhile, with another awkward movement, the girl showed Yoon all her charms again. I'm beginning to doubt that she's not doing it on purpose. When Meifeng awkwardly covered herself with the blanket, the young man asked what she was going to do next. With a disappointed look, the girl replied that she didn't know. She had to run away from home. If they find her, they'll kidnap her and take her to Sun's family right away. Since that was the case, Ling Yun suggested that the woman hide at his house for the time being. The guy can easily protect her. Embarrassedly averting her gaze, Meifeng thought. Wouldn't it be cohabitation if she hid at his house? On the other hand, this boy would rather fight the Sun family than protect the girl. It's not impossible. The woman muttered, looking shyly at the boy. All right, then let's do the following. Ling Yun answered her while trimming her nails. The guy immediately stood in front of her, and Meifeng, not realizing what he was going to do, covered herself with the blanket. Looking down awkwardly, the girl asked him if it was too fast. What do you mean fast? You're not going to live here and eat on me. You're in charge of the housework now. Ling Yun shouted happily. Realizing that he finally had a hired housewife in his house. Realizing what he wanted from her, Meifeng looked at the boy perplexed. She, a beautiful woman, is lying naked in front of him. And Yun really only wants her to do housework. Looking under the blanket, the girl spent some time trying to figure out what the reason for this behavior was. Was it because she wasn't attractive enough? It's just impossible. While Zhuang Meifeng, 
who was dissatisfied with him looking down on her, was getting dressed. Lin Yun asked if there was anything else she could do besides washing, cleaning and cooking. The girl, however, said that she had graduated from the capital's University of Finance and Economics and already had certificates as an accountant and financial actuary. So you can make money, the guy said contentedly, rubbing his hands together in anticipation of making a profit. In turn, the woman confirmed this, saying that if the young man would just give her a computer and capital, she would double that in no time. Holding out the check to her, Ling Yun asked if this would be enough as capital, and if my thing could make a few million quickly. Not understanding what millions he was talking about, the girl asked how much money an ordinary high school student could have, but when the girl took the check in her hand, the guy explained that his capital was now 1 million yuan. Dazedly looking at the piece of paper in her hand, the woman asked the young man where he got so much money. Obviously earned it. So, is it enough or not? Coughing, Ling Yun narrated, without stopping to stare at the check in surprise, Mai Feng remarked that it was enough. She immediately promised the boy to double the amount within a month. Cheering up, the lad bemused himself by saying that he was obliged for buying two large villas with the best view when he made enough money. The girl behind him, however, dashed his hopes by telling him that the best villas in King Shui City cost from 20 million. To earn two of them in a month, one million in capital would not be enough. In the same second, Ling Yun said goodbye to Mai Feng, saying that he had to go. Then the puzzled woman asked the lad where he was going. The young man briefly replied that it was time for him to go to earn money. A man sitting behind the wheel of a nearby parked car called out to Sister Kai. He immediately reported that Ling Yun had come out of the house. The woman, however, warned that if they followed him in a car, the guy would definitely spot them. In a moment of analyzing the situation, Xu and Kai from the Condemned Sky Organization radioed Xu and Ju to investigate behind the target on foot. The man on the other side of the street took instructions. Look at this, here is an opportunity to make money. Ling Yun thought as he noticed a tail of three pursuers behind him. Noticing that the target had abruptly taken off, the man chasing the guy, radioed that Ling Yun was heading to the southwest, still trying to maintain stealth. Ju and his subordinates stood behind the wall and began to watch the boy. He relayed to higher-ups that the target had entered Lunpan Park. Great opportunity. Let's eliminate him today. Shu and Kai sitting in the car pronounced, smoking a cigarette. She immediately ordered Ju to send two snipers into an ambush on the hill opposite Mount Lunpan, and let two more get stuck on the mountain trail. The man himself was instructed to keep an eye on Ling Yun for the time being. In turn, the woman would soon join him. After waiting for her to finish talking, the driver sitting behind the wheel turned to Sister Kai and asked why mobilize so much strength for the sake of just a high school student. The girl, on the other hand, explained that this so-called high school student had single-handedly defeated over 30 people from the Green Dragon Gang. His strength is at least at the yellow level. The client originally offered 8 million, but now the price has risen to as much as 50 million. Shrieking in surprise, the driver could not immediately believe that this boy's life was worth as much as 50 million. Yes. That's why we have to kill him no matter what. Shu and Kai muttered, stepping out of the vehicle. Meanwhile, Ju was already standing at the foot of Mount Lunpan, continuing to follow Ling Yun. A woman who approached him inquired if the target had climbed the mountain, tensely looking at her. The man immediately confirmed it and said that Ling Yun tried to stay in plain sight, moving quickly but slowing down at times, as if he was afraid that the pursuer would fall behind him. How can one behave so arrogantly even in front of death? I don't know what hidden sect he trained in, but he's extremely stupid and clearly doesn't know how high the sky is and how vast the earth is. Kai confidently spoke out, smiling arrogantly. It's been a while. The top of the tiger cliff, waving his brush from side to side, Ling Yun observed that the world appeared to be exactly as he had imagined it to be. A hidden cult, interesting, pronounced the boy, looking down from the cliff, and there were really a lot of people here. Incredibly exciting. Is this the so-called rifle? It looks like Yoon really needs to be careful. All this the boy said in the presence of the two men who were pursuing him. 
Looking at them, the guy noticed that these two were way too slow. How are they going to kill him at that speed? Letting his words pass their ears, Kai and her partner looked amongst themselves. After that, Ju immediately kicked a huge boulder at Ling Yun. While the stone flew the guy at great speed, the woman, who had abruptly torn toward him, snatched a dagger from her pocket. Surprised to realize the coolness with which these two were capable of killing a human, Yun dodged the stone flying at him without much trouble. Meanwhile, Shu and Kai had already run behind the boy's back and prepared to stab the knife into his neck. But suddenly something happened that she hadn't expected. The boy turned around in a flash and jumped back to a safe distance, dodging the attack, not realizing what had happened. The woman looked dazedly at the spot where the target had recently stood. Upon landing, the surprised girl asked her opponent how he managed to dodge in such a desperate situation. Haha, is there something you don't like? Lin Yun asked, looking haughtily at the woman. But at that moment, Ju already ran up behind the guy, preparing to stab him in the back. Go to hell. The man shouted furiously, preparing to thrust his blade into the boy's body. Not expecting such a sudden lunge, Lin Yun turned around at the enemy attacking from behind. However, it was already too late. At that moment, the dagger finally made contact with the boy's back. But surprisingly, nothing more than a casual touch. The blade was unable to do anything to the boy's body. What? Why couldn't I pierce him? Ju muttered in exasperation, noticing that the dagger had just rested on his opponent's back. In the same second, Lin Yun turned around and grabbed the enemy's knife by the blade with his hand. Then the guy, looking at the man with a smirk, remarked that sneaking up from the back was only for amateurs. While the guy gloatingly stared at the helpless Ju, Kai had already pounced on him from behind, preparing to finish off the target. Realizing that this boy's normal attack wasn't taking, the frightened man shouted for his partners to stay away from him, but it was already too late. Yun immediately grabbed Ju by the scruff of the neck, after which, in one swift movement, he threw the man at Shu and Kai, who had swooped down on him from behind. The two flew a few meters and crashed into the opposite cliff with a rumble. As he approached them, Ling Yun pointed his knife at the attackers and remarked that he felt like they had fought enough already. Now it's my turn. The guy ruthlessly muttered as he continued to aim the knife at the two men. That's when Kai and Ju realized what was about to happen if they sat meekly in place. The next moment when Yun threw a dagger at them, the two of them scattered to avoid being attacked. However, dodging the blow completely failed. Shu and Kai received a shallow wound in her left arm. Looking at the blood, the woman can't figure out where the hell this guy came from. While she was trying to realize this, Ling Yun suddenly disappeared. Where did he disappear to? I'm quite close, came an eerie voice from above. Then the woman heard the swipe of a knife blade near her ear. With a deft swing, without even showing her face, Ling Yun cut one of the straps on Shu and Kai's uniform, seeing her breasts thanks to this method. The guy who landed noticed that the girl has a great figure. You scum, I will fight to the end, the woman shouted in rage, pouncing on her opponent again. With a smirk at the woman's fist approaching his face, the boy said she couldn't even touch him. In the next instant, Lin Yun punched the girl who had pounced on him in the stomach with a lightning-fast attack. From the power of such a blow, Shu and Kai felt as if all of her organs had turned to mush. After dealing with one of the enemies, Yun immediately looked at the remaining enemy. Realizing that this bastard was about to attack him, Ju made the decision to run away from here. He's too strong. There is no way a man can handle him. Turning around, he raced at full speed in the opposite direction, hoping to get away from this monster. Where are you going? Inquired the guy suddenly in front of him, grinning eerily. He then abruptly grabbed the dumbfounded man by the throat and squeezed him tightly. No need to be afraid. Your death will be quick. The boy said coldly, swinging the knife. A split second later, Shu and Ju's face was impaled by Ling Yun with a dagger. The guy grabbed the instantly dead man by the scruff of the neck and started dragging him somewhere. Looking at this, the injured girl sitting nearby can't believe that this kid killed Shu and Ju so easily. His strength clearly exceeds the previously stated yellow level. The organization has underestimated him. Since you have decided to take the path of killing, Ling Yun said as he walked to the edge of the cliff, 
You should have been prepared to get yourself killed. After these words, the guy threw the man's corpse into the cliff without a second thought. Turning around, the boy headed towards the frightened Shuen Kai who was nearby. What about you? Do you want to die or will you choose to live? He asked, approaching the dumbfounded woman, resigned to her fate. The girl said that if the guy was going to kill her, then let him just do it without too much talk. Taking a seat beside her, Ling Yun asked Kai if she wasn't afraid of death. In that case, the guy might change the rules a bit. The boy who put the dagger to the woman's throat and explained that he could use this knife to slash and mutilate her face, saying that, Yun immediately scooped the blade across the stunned girl's cheek. That was when Shu and Kai realized that this guy wasn't joking and grabbing her face, she asked him to stop, scared, then honestly answer my questions. Lin Yun spoke out, coldly looking at the frightened girl. The boy asked what the woman's name was other than her codename. She replied that her name was Xiao Mai Mei. The boy then decided to ask her who sent her here. Mai Mei in turn said that it was the heavens condemned. What the hell is that? Yun said, looking at the girl perplexed. The woman said that it was one of the three largest international assassin organizations. The assassins were divided into four levels. Heavenly, earthly, black and yellow, and she and the late Xu and Jai were black level assassins. No one knows where the headquarters of the Heavens Condemned are located, but they have branches all over the world. Each branch is run by three to nine sky level assassins, who also take on assassination missions. After listening to the girl, Ling Yun, who was sitting across from her, asked with a smirk who she thought was better, him or the celestial assassins. Xiao Mai Mei only laughed from this ridiculous question. Unwilling to tolerate such treatment, the guy sharply pinned the woman to the ground, grabbing her by the throat, the boy asked what she was laughing at, and ordered her to answer the question now, looking at him disdainfully. Mai Mei explained that Yun's strength should be at the peak of the black level, which wasn't worth mentioning in front of a heavenly level assassin. Even after she answered him, the guy didn't let go of the girl and asked the next question. In which realm are those at the peak of the black level? In the fourth layer of the spatial realm, the woman spoke in a trembling voice as she began to gasp for breath. This meant that the third level of hardening of Ling Yun's body corresponded to the fourth layer after the heaven realm in this world. Well, the guy had learned a lot of useful things. Letting go of the girl's throat, the boy rose to his feet and decided to ask the last, but no less important, question. How much money do you have? I don't know who ordered you. Machine replied Mai Mei lowering her gaze. But it wasn't until a couple seconds later that it dawned on the girl what the guy had just asked, sitting on her knees. The woman looked at Ling Yun in a puzzled manner and told him that she had about 17 million yuan. Okay, I'm offering you two options. The guy said, giving Mai Mei a sly look. One, I will mutilate you and throw you off the mountain to your fate. Two, you will unwaveringly follow me. Your money your life, everything you have will be mine. Ling Yun could have easily killed her, but it was better to keep her alive to learn more secrets of this world. In the end out of desperation, Mai Mei chose the second option. Good, then you're mine from now on, I'll heal your wounds, and then we'll go deal with the others. The boy said, snapping his fingers. However, the girl still on the ground, said that the boy didn't need to try, and she had already figured out how to deal with the remaining assassins. After a while, several armed mercenaries climbed to the top of the cliff. Once on the mountain, the crowd of fighters can't understand why Xu and Kai suddenly asked them to gather here. Meanwhile, holding her hand, the wounded girl called out to them for help. The mercenaries immediately ran up to her and asked the woman why she was alone and where Xu and Ju was. How are things going with that little brat? I'm fine. Suddenly an intimidating voice came from behind me. After that, Ling Yun took all the opponents to the ground in a matter of seconds with a few punches. When Mai Mei got up off the ground and walked over to him, the guy praised her for a good plan that saved him a lot of time. The woman agreed with him, remarking that she wouldn't have suggested it otherwise. Xu and Kai, you have betrayed us. The organization won't let you go alive. Stupid bitch, traitor, shouted the indignant fighters as they looked at the girl standing in front of them. Xiao Mai Mei, on the other hand, reminded them that failing the task would result in death after returning to the organization, and so she was just looking for a way to survive. Taking out a pistol from his subordinate's holster, 
Ling Yun asked how to use the thing. Meanwhile, the mercenaries lying on the ground, upon seeing this, were dumbfounded with fear. The woman, on the other hand, told me that the gun has to be unlocked first, then the bullet will fly out when the guy pulls the trigger. Like this, clarified the boy, taking aim at one of his opponents. As the man in the yellow hat bowed at his feet, Ling Yun looked at the weapon in his hand with interest. Noting that this thing was quite interesting. I take it you're all courageous and not afraid of death, right? The guy said, putting his gun to the head of the mercenary kneeling in front of him. Facing death, the man began bowing intensely to the boy, saying that he was willing to do anything, as long as Yun didn't kill him. Coward, you are a disgrace to our organization, shouted his partners, seeing their comrade's shameless behavior. Lin Yun, on the other hand, noticed that the organization had made such a fuss here, and so he wondered how much his life was worth. Mai Mei standing behind him immediately told him that 50 million yuan was being offered for the guy. Laughing quietly, the boy holding the gun in his hand, can't believe that such a huge amount of money even exists. In turn, the man with the yellow hat under his feet, said he had 6 million, and could give the guy all the money in exchange for sparing his life. Taking a seat beside him, Lin Yun wondered if the mercenary thought he was so superficial. However, for the sake of money, the boy reluctantly agreed. People's hearts are bought with money. Sounds about right. All the other members of the Condemned by Heaven organization also asked the guy to trade their lives for money. Some said he had 8 million, another decided to give 3 million. Somewhere in the crowd there was an exclamation that he only had four. Grabbing his partners by the heads and jumping out of the crowd, one of the mercenaries shouted that he could give as much as 12 million yuan and asked to be released. Punching his comrade under the breath, the man in the orange hat reminded him that the dude himself had just said they should be willing to die for the organization. After approaching them, Ling Yun asked his victims to take their time and give the money one by one. He realizes that they were just doing their job, and since they will pay, the guy is willing to forgive them. Looking at our new boss in surprise, Mai Mei can't believe that this guy is really so charitable. Or maybe he was originally going to beg for money. It's been a few minutes. While all the mercenaries were bowing to Ling Yun, the girl informed the master that all of these people's money had been transferred to her offshore account. The total amount amounted to almost 50 million. Thanking his subordinate, the guy walked over to the man in the yellow hat and touched his back with two fingers. He then did this to each of his opponents, giving them a painful shock. The boy explained that half of the restraints had been removed and they would be able to move freely in only 10 minutes. However, the mercenaries had better not rejoice before then. They would have to find Yun in King Shui City in three months or else each of them would die. This way, these people wouldn't dare to bother the boy's mom and his little sister. In three months, he would reach the Kai Tempering Realm, and then he would hardly be threatened by anything. The deed is done, come with me. We need to think about how to use the money we received today. Lin Yun spoke, turning to Mai Mei. Immediately after these words, he grabbed the girl and lifted her above the ground. With a confused look at the master, the surprised girl asked what he was going to do. You're my money pot now, how can I let you go on your own? Yun explained, looking at the blushing woman. Zhuang Maifeng sits in Ling Yang's house at his desk. A drunk girl says out loud that this guy saved her and let her live in his house. Which can only mean one thing, he definitely likes her, right? If it's true, I don't mind it either, whispered the woman joyfully, hugging the bottle of champagne. Zhuang Maifeng. It's me, open the door. A familiar voice was heard outside the front door. Opening the door, the drunken girl cheerfully greeted Ling Yun. Meanwhile, on the doorstep of the apartment stood a guy with an unknown woman in a strange uniform and a cut bra, holding her in his arms. Not understanding what was going on here, the perplexed Meifeng looked questioningly at the boy. When Yun placed the injured stranger on the couch, she immediately thanked the master for his care. Master, what kind of weird role-playing is this? Thought the dumbfounded Maifeng, looking at the bulging watermelons of the girl lying on the sofa. Having also seen a stranger in the apartment, Xiao Maimei also looked at the guy in a puzzled manner. Lin Yun, who is that woman? The devastated Zhuang Maifeng shrieked, poking her finger at the stranger lying on the sofa. Moving closer to her, the boy explained to her in a whisper that it was the assassin who wanted to finish him off today. 
grabbing the guy by the tie, the perplexed girl asked him why he had dragged her to his place in such a case, she belongs to me now, so I can leave her to protect you, isn't that wise, Lin Yun smugly explained, taking the woman by the shoulder, not at all, a furious Mai Feng yelled, shaking the walls of the entire house with her scream, looking at her puzzled, Yun with disheveled hair, can't understand why she's so angry over nothing, at the same moment, Mai Feng grabbed the guy's arm and led him into another room, slamming the door behind her, when she threw him on the bed, the dumbfounded boy asked the girl what she was going to do, in the same second, the woman pounced on Ling Yun and kissed him passionately on the lips, what the hell, that Zhuang Mai Feng is too fierce, sitting down on her knees, the girl asked the guy to memorize it, still dumbfounded, Ling Yun asked in a panic what she meant, you're mine, the woman shrieked, beginning to remove her clothes, holding up her shirt, the boy asked Mei Feng not to do that, but the girl was unwilling to stop and, grabbing the guy's arm, only looked at him unhappily, then you take it off, the woman shrieked fiercely, trying to pull off the doomed Ling Yun's jacket, however, the boy explained that he wasn't allowed to, you could kiss, but something more serious, no, pulling off his pants, an excited Mei Feng asked him what was wrong, it's not time yet, yelled the guy, unable to find a better excuse, he actually didn't have enough cultivation to destroy pure Yun's body right now, but he certainly didn't say that, pulling his leg up, the girl asked hopefully when that time would come, Ling Yun, who was convulsing in unbearable pain, said that it would be soon, at that moment, he received a call on his phone, putting his cell phone to his ear, the guy asked who was there calling so late, hearing the familiar voice, the worried boy abruptly raised himself from the bed, running out of the room he explained that he had to run, but why did he run away again, the frustrated Mai Feng muttered unsatisfactorily, fixing her hair, okay, whatever, as long as he doesn't bring another woman, at the same time, deep in the night, a tall residential building somewhere in the center of King Shui City, there is a light on in the restroom, and strange noises are heard, Lin Yun, Lin Mingan said quietly, covering her mouth with her hand, Lin Yun, hurry up and save me, half an hour ago, Hotel Lido, Manhan, I didn't know you could drink so well, said the man surprised, sitting next to the girl in the nightclub, he then remarked that this woman was a true nugget who would definitely become a big star in the future, meanwhile, Menhin poured another bottle of expensive alcohol into herself, fortunately, she learned to stay sober, no matter how much she drank, it's all thanks to her work, this movie and television company King Yun, has lured and tortured many girls, under the pretext of raising stars, Mencken's task is to get evidence of their crimes today, at that moment, a girl, also sitting nearby, slipped some substance into a glass of champagne, then she handed it to a man with a small beard, he also held out the champagne to Mangan and asked her to drink the last glass before going to the audition, the girl looked at the man in surprise and asked if she was the right person for them, the boss replied that they were just looking for such a marvelous beauty and therefore they could not refuse her for anything, they finally took the bait, thought the woman as she sipped her champagne, the next second she felt something strange, looking at the people in front of her, Mencken can't understand why she suddenly felt dizzy, the girl leaned back against the table and, apologizing, said she needed to go to the restroom, as the woman, holding her head, ran to the bathroom, the two men sitting on the couch behind her abruptly jumped off, the red-shirted supervisor immediately walked over to Mencken and grabbed her hands, telling her not to worry about it, the listening room has everything you need, right, no need to drag out the audition, the man with the mustache agreed with his companion, also approaching the girl, that's when Manhen realized that something had been slipped into that glass of champagne, a few minutes later, number 1688, Manhen lies unconscious at the entrance to the room, the two bosses standing on the doorstep, knew that this girl was really hard to get drunk, unfortunately, they were prepared for it, then, the mustachioed man asked his partner to go to Mr. Guo and inform him that everything was ready, this girl is lying in room 1688, 1688, 1688, pronounced Mankin, who heard the door close, to try to stay sane, taking the phone in her hand, the girl realized that it was too late, the only person who could save her was Ling Yun, upon entering the bathroom, the woman turned on the water in the shower, 
She began to wash herself and prayed to all the gods that Ling Yun would hurry up and come here and save her. Ms. Lin, a male voice was suddenly heard at the entrance of the restroom. Turning around, a startled Mencken saw an unknown man with a cigarette in his hand. So you like to have fun in the bathroom, Mr. Guo said, putting out his cigarette and throwing it on the floor. Meanwhile, Lin Yun had already entered the main hall of the hotel. When the boy approached one of the staff members, he greeted the guest and asked how he could help. Yoon immediately asked for directions to room 1688. With a perplexed look at the guy, the doorman asked why he wanted to go there. Don't ask stupid questions, just guide me, Lin Yun shouted angrily, grabbing the employee by the throat and lifting him above the floor. Soon the guy was already on the floor he needed. The doorman, whom the boy was still holding hostage, holding back tears, explained that number 1688 was directly ahead. At that moment, a hotel security guard approached them, wondering what the schoolboy was doing here. The man pointed his finger at Yoon and demanded that he get out of here. Unwilling to listen to idle chatter, Ling Yun immediately grabbed the guard's wrist and squeezed tightly. In one swift motion, he stamped the stout man's face into the floor. Lin Mengen, I've come to save you, Yun yelled, kicking the front door of the room with his foot. The door rattled open and banged against the wall. Hearing this, Mr. Guo, standing by the bed, asked who was there. At this time, Lin Mengen was already lying unconscious. As soon as Yun saw this, he immediately snapped out of his seat and rushed towards the criminal. While the man was trying to figure out what was going on, the guy had already run up to him and slammed his fist into his chest with tremendous force. As his opponent fell to the floor, the boy pinned him to the ground and immediately delivered a second lightning-fast attack to the face. After that, Ling Yun approached the exhausted girl, who immediately hugged him. The guy asked her not to move, adding that he would now apply acupuncture to help the woman suppress the effects of the drug. At this point two of the battered man's underlings entered the room with some sort of bag, asking what was going on. Noticing director Zhang beaten up, they asked who this guy was and what he was doing here. The mustachioed man asked his boss not to get upset and explained that it was an accident. He immediately promised that they would sort it out now. So your accomplices and tried to harm her. Lin Yun clarified, turning around at the two of them. Since it's so hard for you to control your lower body, then I'll help you with that. Hearing these words, a dumbfounded principal Zhang asked the guy what he was going to do. The next few minutes were filled with pain screams of pain throughout the hotel. After finishing his business, the boy gently placed Lin Mengen on his shoulder and headed towards the exit. On the way, he picked up that black suitcase that two of Mr. Cho's subordinates had brought with them. I'll count this money as today's interest until I finish the rescue. Ling Yun explained as he looked at the three men he had beaten, walking to the door. He finally added that he would come back later for basic compensation. Damn, that hurts so bad, shouted Principal Zhang taking up the bells as the guy walked out of the room. Meanwhile, Mai Feng, sitting on the same couch as Mai Mei, stares unhappily at her love rival. You definitely don't have any intentions about Ling Yun, she inquired finally interrupting this sepulchral silence. The mercenary confirmed it again, explaining that this guy was just her master. After saying that, Mai Feng still calmed down after all, deciding to trust the woman, she could still get along with an outsider girl. At this moment, Ling Yun appeared on the doorstep of the apartment, holding the passed out Mengen on his shoulder. Ling Yun, you're back, Mai Feng said joyfully when she saw her lover at the front door. But seeing the burden on the boy's shoulder, she asked why he had brought another girl here. However, as soon as the guy put Mengen on the bed, she cried out in pain. Concerned at this, Mai Feng asked what was wrong with her. Mai Mei, who had also entered the room, explained that this woman was drugged. If left like this, she would die very soon. Lin Yun in turn immediately flipped the injured woman onto her back. Grabbing the boy by the shoulder, a jealous Mai Feng asked him what he was doing. Saving her. The guy replied, looking at Lin Mengen. Are you going to rescue? The girl interjected excitedly, thinking of something else entirely. Lin Yun, on the other hand, reminded him that there was no one else to do it, as he was the only one here with the skills to help with this. All right, we'll go for a walk then, said the indignant Mai Feng, gesturing for the mercenary standing next to her to come along. But, suddenly, Yun was in the doorway and asked them to stay and help him. 
Does that pervert really want the four of them to do it? I didn't know you had such fetishes. The embarrassed Mifing shouted, trying to punch the dumbfounded guy. But the boy paid no attention to her antics, and, pointing his finger at the victim, asked his assistants if they were ready. Yun is going to perform acupuncture on the main channels. He then asked the two to come over here and help him with it. It was then that the petrified Mifing realized that he was actually talking about ordinary acupuncture. Meanwhile, Mencken, who was lying on the bed, had already started to have a high fever. Sitting on top of her, the housewife grabbed both her hands and pressed them firmly against the bunk. Trying not to look at the patient, the girl turned away. It was too tempting, she found it very difficult to restrain herself in such a situation. Meanwhile, after noticing Mengen's terrible suffering, Ling Yun realized that the drug was more unpleasant than he had anticipated. The guy asked Mai Mei standing behind him to wrap her arms around the victim from behind. The girl didn't object and immediately obeyed the master. A few minutes have passed. A woman's moans echoed throughout the nighttime neighborhood. Approaching Mankin, the mercenary grabbed her from behind and turned her toward the master. While the mesmerized Mifing is watching this, the boy is already bringing the golden needle to the victim's chest asking his subordinate to hold her tighter and not let her move. At this moment, there was a loud moan from the sweating and hot Lin Mengen. Those moans continued the entire time Yun was sticking needles into her body. Turning away, unable to watch it anymore, Mai Feng asks someone to help her in her mind. The sound is so arousing that she really can't listen to it anymore. Suddenly, the victim woke up and asked Yun what he was doing. Then, feeling someone holding her from behind, she asked him to let her go. Lin Yun lifted her chin and asked the woman not to move, adding that he was trying to save her. Before passing out again, Mencken looked at the young man with a lifeless look, unable to say anything in response. And so, after only an hour, the guy still managed to cure the patient. Well, she's fine now, Lin Yun said with a satisfied expression as he stretched in relief. After that, he asked the mercenary to go fetch some warm water and then rub Mankin's face on all sides. Standing in front of the victim at this time, Mifing can't believe that this young man, even in the face of such a stunning sight, didn't try to do something disgusting. After thinking about it, the woman looked admiringly at Ling Yun crouched on the bed, who had decided to drink some tea. He's really not like the other dorks. Of course, this guy is the perfect match Mifing was looking for. At this moment, noticing the girl staring at himself strangely, Yun couldn't understand what the hell had happened to this woman. Leaving the room, the two left the injured woman alone with Mai Mei. When Mai Feng sat on his lap, the still sipping tea Lin Yun asked her what she was doing. Lin Yun, I like you, the girl said embarrassedly, averting her gaze. Not understanding what she meant, the surprised guy asked the woman again what she had just said. I said I like you. I want you to be my husband, Mai Feng repeated grabbing the dazed boy by the shoulders. Looking at her in embarrassment, Yun realized that this was the first time someone had said such a thing to him since he came to this world. While he was thinking about it, the girl hugged him tightly, not holding back her emotions. Looking at her puzzled, the guy reminded the woman that she used to keep her distance from him. Why had things changed now? Punching the young man with a pillow so hard that his tea flew out of his hand. Mai Feng explained that she didn't know him then. Now that she knew him, of course she should take the initiative. In short, this girl had her heart set on Yoon. Turning away, she warned the boy not to even think about chasing her away. When did I ever say that I was going to chase you away? Lin Yun suddenly asked, surprising the woman with this. I knew you were the best. Mai Feng shrieked happily, hugging the boy tightly. The young man asked her not to throw herself at him so crazily, reminding her that he was still a high school student. I mean, this pose doesn't seem right. She's not going to eat him right here, is she? But it seemed to the girl on the contrary that this situation was just the right time to do something. Since you're my husband now, then there's no need to delay, said the woman, placing his palm on her Bidens. Meanwhile, Mai Mei approached them from the back and grudgingly called out to the two. The mercenary told the master that the woman in the bedroom was awake and wanted to speak to him alone. Hearing this, a delighted Ling Yun immediately jumped off the sofa, toppling it over with Mai Feng sitting there. Looking at the guy fleeing into the other room, the fallen girl slammed her fist on the overturned couch in frustration, vowing that she wouldn't let him slip away again. Meanwhile, 
Yun had already entered the room and saw a flushed Mengen waking up on the bed, taking a seat next to her. The guy said he was here and asked the woman why she was calling him. Lin Yun, you don't like me, could it be that you despise me? The worried girl asked, looking at the boy. The young man, however, replied that he hoped that in the future, Mencken would become smarter and stop going to such dirty places wearing such clothes. However, the outraged girl reminded the guy that she was a police officer. She went there to find evidence of their crimes. A policeman, you think you're worthy of being one? Yun asked sternly, glancing at the injured woman. How can a person who is unable to protect even himself protect others? Lin Mengen, do you realize that if I didn't know how to use the nine kinds of needles technique, I would have to use a more intimate method to save you, and then you would have lost the innocence you so desperately guarded. The young man explained pointing a finger at the girl. But to this the embarrassed woman only replied that she wouldn't mind. After saying that, Ling Yun looked at her perplexedly, asking what she meant. If it's you, I don't mind, Lin Mengen repeated, grabbing the guy's shoulders. In fact, once the girl realized she had been drugged, she realized there was nothing she could do to fix it. Then she called Lin Yun, she only had one thought in her mind, if she's sure to spank with a man tonight. What she hoped was that it would be Lin Yun. Mengen immediately pounced on the guy and hugged him tightly. I actually like you, the dyed woman muttered, looking the boy in the face. At this moment, the door to the room rattled open, and an angry mifing appeared on the threshold. Continuing to stand on the threshold, the girl looked irritably at the frightened Yun. She said that she suddenly felt like talking to Ms. Lin. So the woman asked the boy to leave the room for the time being. Hearing this, the boy didn't object and immediately vanished. Looking at the stranger perplexed, Mankin tried to understand the relationship between the two of them. At this time, Yun had already run out of the room and immediately slammed the door behind him, standing nearby. Mai Mei explained to the master that these girls might fight over him. The boy stepped back from the door and, scratching the back of his head, replied that he knew it perfectly well. Then he rather remarked that being too charming was also very difficult. Meanwhile, a woman's voice was heard in the room. Covering the injured with a blanket, Mifing reminded the girl that her body was still very weak, and so she'd better get some more rest. When Mengen thanked her, the housewife said that it took her husband a lot of effort to save the patient. Therefore, as his wife, she should of course take care of the guest. Your husband, questioned the policeman in surprise, glancing at the woman. That's right, Ling Yun is my husband, Mifing confirmed, but Menhen immediately pointed out that this guy is in high school and legally can't get married at all. The girl sitting next to her in turn, explained that they had already recognized each other, or else Lin Yun wouldn't have let her live in his house. Disappointed at what she heard, the policewoman turned away, noting that her interlocutor was right. Then she lay down on the bed and apologized, saying that she was a little tired and wanted to sleep. After getting up from the bunk, Mai Feng, pleased with herself, asked the girl to rest well and headed for the exit. Lin Mengen, I hope that you can retreat. Despite the hardship, Lin Yun is mine. No one can take him away from me, thought the woman, walking towards the door. The next morning came, sipping water, Lin Yun had just returned home after a night's training. It wasn't until he entered the apartment that he noticed something interesting. On the table in the living room lay some note addressed to him. Taking the leaf in his hands and unfolding it, the boy read what was written there. Mengen informed the boy that she was going to leave King Shui City. She left the matter to him and decided to take care of other things herself. The young man was right. The girl was indeed too naive. She will come back when she has sorted herself out. In addition to that, the woman hopes that Yoon won't forget about her by then. Lin Mengen, how can I forget you? Thought the boy, clutching the note in his hand. He can't forget her. After all, she's the first girl Yun met after coming to this earth. At that second, Mai Feng ran out of the room, informing the boy that the policewoman had left. Unexpectedly there was a knock on the front door. Walking to the door, Mai Mei opened it and looked at the people standing on the threshold. Boss, you finally remembered me, shouted Tanman joyfully, running into the apartment. But suddenly he was stopped by some girl putting a finger to his forehead. A dumbfounded blue-haired guy raised his forehead and asked where a strange woman had come from in the boss's house. Meanwhile, Tu Xiaohu, who had also come inside, 
leaned towards his friend and asked him to be careful, this girl is very strong, hello, my name is Zhuang Maifeng, another stranger said a friendly hello as she approached the guests, glancing at her perplexed, Tanmin noticed that her name sounded familiar to him, but after a moment, he remembered, isn't Zhuang Maifeng Zhuang Mina's sister, the number one beauty in town, known as the King Shui Flower, meanwhile, Lin Yun standing nearby, asked the guests to stop getting lost at the door, and go inside to talk business, yes, boss, the two immediately said after looking at him, then, glancing at Xiaohu, the blue-haired guy asked why he wasn't surprised at all, to see these two beauties, in response, the man explained that the boss was so strong, and so it was normal that he and naturally liked many beautiful women, Hearing those words, Tanman burst into tears at his stupidity. They are both the boss's brothers, but his awareness is so low. Sitting down with his friends at the same couch, Yun asked if they knew where King Yun's movie and TV company was located. Xiao Hu replied that he knew. He told how the Green Dragon wanted to start taking money to start roofing them, but they were yelled at by Brother Kun at the time. He warned the gang that they shouldn't even dawdle about King Yun's film and TV company which can only mean one thing, it means someone's already running them, Tanmen, on the other hand, remembered something too, he had heard his father mention that this movie and TV company was based in the capital, they're under the banner of nurturing stars, but they're actually supplying women to the capital's bigwigs, after he said that, Xiaohu remarked, this is too crazy, are the law enforcement agencies not interested in them, but the blue-haired guy reminded me that the capital was behind those bastards, so no one would dare to mess with them, I dare you, Lin Yun corrected him with a sly smirk, whether you dare to come with me to King Yun film and TV company for their debt is up to you, fortunately, it didn't take the friends any time to think it over, they immediately agreed, shouting that this garbage shouldn't exist, where the boss goes, they go, Soon, they had already gotten into Tanman's car and headed towards the main building of the movie and television company in King Shui City. After reaching their destination, they and the exasperated Xiaohu in front headed towards the entrance. The blue-haired guy noticed his friend's incredible attitude, and so he wondered why he suddenly looked like a different person. The angry Xiaohu, on the other hand, explained that they had come here to collect debts, the first thing to do in such a situation was to suppress the enemy with his intimidating aura, satisfied with this, Ling Yun, standing behind the two, praised the man, and remarked that Tangmen should learn more from Xiaohu in this area, agreeing with him, the puzzled blue-haired guy asked the boss, shouldn't they have an excuse to collect the debt, otherwise people might say they were engaging in ordinary robbery, but Xiaohu reassured his friend, telling him that he already had experience in such matters, so the partners would just have to stand by and watch him work. The elevator opened, and the three of them found themselves on the 15th floor of the building, where King Yun Film and Television Company's office was based. Stepping out of the elevator, they headed straight for the main office door. I want the man in charge, Tu Xiaohu yelled, kicking the door with his foot. Walking over to the reception desk, the man pointed his finger at the man sitting there and cried out that this company had kidnapped his girlfriend and ruined her life. I'll make you pay today. After realizing the insanity of his plan, Lin Yun and Tanmen standing behind him incredibly dumbfounded. Who's causing trouble in the company? An indignant male voice was heard at the main entrance. Looking at the man with disdain, Tu Xiaohu asked who he was. The stranger introduced himself, identifying himself as Huang Fiang, the general manager of King Yun Film TV Company. He then said that they were an ordinary and legal movie company, after which he asked the rioters to stop this outrage immediately. Concernedly looking at his boss, Tanman asked what they should do. It seems that this Huang doesn't want to admit his guilt, but Yun asked his friend not to worry and suggested that they just see what Tu Xiaohu would do. The usual company, you say. The red-haired man muttered with a smirk. As he approached the CEO closely, he pointed out that a normal company wouldn't force his girlfriend into intimate photos. There's no way a regular company would have his girlfriend accompany any old people. Do you take me for an idiot? Shrieked an enraged Xiaohu grabbing the man's shoulder. Huan asked the guest to calm down, explaining that it was probably just a misunderstanding. He then invited all three of them to go to his office and talk there. He would ask the secretary to prepare tea for them. 
Running up to his female coworker, the man whispered to her to get more people here, director, do you want me to call the police? The woman clarified loudly, not understanding what the supervisor was saying, what police, are you trying to kill us? Juan shrieked, seeing that the guys behind him were getting ready to tear the office apart, approaching the guests, the man bowed to them and promised to check the contract now, if there was really something wrong there. It must be the personal shenanigans of those below him. Then he asked them not to worry and vowed, as the CEO, to take the matter seriously. Don't mess with my head. You said you'll sign a contract with my girlfriend if she behaves well. Tu Xiaohu yelled, pushing the general manager. The extortionist then grabbed Juan by the scruff of his neck and pulled him up to him. The red-haired man added that even after his girlfriend was finally sold by this company. She never saw the money she was promised, looking at him fearfully. Juan remembered that this was indeed a common practice of his company. Everything this guy says about his girlfriend is most likely true. The incident at the Lido Hotel could not be covered up. If this case were to go public, the capital side would definitely shift the blame to Juan. In that case, his life would be completely over. Calm down, little brother. Better tell me how we can work this out, uttered the hopelessly smiling CEO in tears, looking at the much admired guest. Throwing it to the floor with one hand, Tu Xiaohu swept it up, saying that he was glad that they had finally managed to get to the bottom of it. Running up to her boss, the secretary picked him up off the floor, asking if he was okay. Meanwhile, Tu Xiaohu has already made a huge number of conditions. The red-haired man promised that as long as the company was willing to compensate his girlfriend for moral damages, physical injury, loss of youth, tuition fees, extra class fees, utility bills and so on, he would not come back here again. After realizing that this dude had absolutely come here to blackmail him, the frightened Huang asked what he wanted from him. At the same moment, Tu Xiaohu showed him the number 30 with his fingers. 30,000, no problem. I'll have my secretary give it to you, said the CEO, realizing that the man's intentions were not as serious as he thought. Not 30,000, but 30 million, Xiaohu clarified, killing the secretary and her boss with those words, hopelessly lying on the floor. Huang can't believe the amount of money. That's a lot of money. You little assholes, they've gone completely crazy, wanting easy money. A disgruntled voice was heard, accompanied by the footsteps of several people, leaning on the bench he had picked up earlier to trash the office. Ling Yun turned around and noticed that it appeared that Principal Huang was waiting to help. Looking admiringly at the uninvited guests, Tanman wondered if a fight was coming. Of course not, we'll just greet them, Yun explained, bloodily hugging his friend. Don't miss a single one. At the same second, the main entrance leading to the office of the movie television company opened, and a crowd of stout men appeared on the threshold. Come on in, we've been waiting for you, Lin Yun and Tangman eerily said after looking at them. In turn, one of the subordinates standing behind the ringleader's back told Brother Biao that he thought something was wrong here. The man then decided to ask his boss what they should do. Biao looked suspiciously at the brats and asked his subordinate if he was afraid of them. When the armed men entered the office, their boss asked who dared to bully his brother. Meanwhile, Yoon and Tanman quietly blended in with the crowd and slipped out. Immediately afterward, they slammed the door shut from prying eyes, while chuckling mockingly. The resolved CEO started waving his hand at Biao, beckoning him over. Seeing him, the man leisurely approached Juan. He immediately apologized to brother Juan for being late. It seemed the principal had been badly frightened. The man then asked him to wait here while he sorted things out. Hey you, boy, you came to King Yun Film and TV Company to cause trouble, thinking you were capable of doing something. So why didn't you open your eyes and see who's roofing this place? Shrieked the enraged thug, pointing his finger at his opponent. In response to Xiaohu only yawned in boredom, asking him to stop talking nonsense. If anyone wants a fight, it's about time to start one. Hearing such insolent words, Biao only looked at him with hatred. Meanwhile, Lin Yun had implied that most likely, just by seeing the blood, the enemies would most likely be willing to pay money. Then, looking at the blue-haired boy standing next to him, Yun asked him not to worry, promising that he would have plenty of opportunities to prove himself in the future. Tang Min, on the other hand, remarked that the boss was right, but he was still bored with Tu Xiaohu taking all the attention. 
in turn, Juan, who has been watching this, can't understand why the two guys at the door didn't panic at all. Let's get to it, cried out the irritated Biao, deciding to start the battle. In the same second, one of his subordinates flew past and slammed into the wall next to the CEO. Not realizing what the hell had just happened, Juan turned around fearfully and looked at the battlefield. That same instant, a whole bunch of bandits flew past him, once again sealing themselves into the wall beside him. When they all fell to the floor unconscious, the dumbfounded CEO looking on couldn't realize what had happened for a while longer. While he was sitting there dumbfounded, Biao had already managed to grab a piece of wood from somewhere and hit Xiaohu with it. But the red-haired man didn't hesitate and blocked the attack with his hand. He then grabbed his opponent's weapon and was ready to counterattack. Let brother Biao go. The voice of a rank-and-file bandit was heard from behind, who also took a stick and pounced on Xiaohu from the back. However, the red-haired guy didn't seem to be embarrassed by this situation at all. Grabbing Biao's shoulder, he simply put him in his place, causing the attacker from the back to hit his own boss with a stick with tremendous force. This rather strong attack came right in the face, causing the gang leader to instantly lose consciousness. Such an incredible movement received 100 points of audience sympathy out of 100, surprising and penetrating to the most remote parts of the soul of every person in the office. Realizing that this toy had already served its purpose, Xiaohu simply threw away the man of his own subordinate. Then he sprinted and flew at breakneck speed into the people standing at the entrance, scattering them like bowling pins, taking each one by the scruff of the neck. The red-haired guy placed them on top of each other, making a huge human sandwich. Quite observing this, Ling Yun noticed that in the few days that he hadn't seen Tu Xiaohu, he had already become much stronger. The guy had indeed chosen the right person. No more fights. I've had enough. One of the bandits wailed in fear, heading for the exit but it was too late. Tanman was blocking the door, asking the man where he was going. Come back. The blue-haired boy said, kicking his opponent in the jaw. But it wasn't really just a kick. It was a perfectly practiced flank pass of the ball. When the victim flew to Xiaohu, he grabbed it with his hand around his entire face. Now it's your turn. The red-haired man uttered bloodily, looking the bandits eerily in the eye. For the next few minutes, there were piteous cries for help throughout the office. Looking at this horrible picture, Principal Juan realized that this man was simply a devil in the flesh. Soon all the opponents were defeated or lying unconscious on top of each other. You all fell before I had a chance to exert my strength. Tu Xiaohu uttered, standing on top of the crowd of passed out bandits. The CEO and his secretary, huddled in a corner, looked at the man, trembling with fear. Turning around to look at him, Xiaohu remarked that he had spoken politely to Huang, but the latter had sent people to beat him up. The frightened principal sitting on the ground asked his brother to calm down and offered to talk calmly. Who the hell is this here? Your brother. I'm going to call the police right now and tell them everything you've done. The red-haired man yelled angrily, further frightening the secretary and her boss, bowing at his feet. Juan asked him not to call the police. If the guy did, he would be finished. The director promised to settle the matter privately. He was willing to pay him compensation. Tensely looking at his female employee, Juan asked what level of liquidity the company currently had, whispering in his ear. The girl told him that the liquidity level was more than 13 million. Then, trying to hold back tears, the director raised his head and looked at Xiaohu, remarking that as best as he could hear. This money was all the company had. Realizing the difficulty of the situation, the red-haired guy scratched his head, trying to decide what he should do in such a case. At this moment, Yun standing behind him asked his blue-haired friend if he had money in his account. Tainman immediately reacted and replied that of course he did. Everyone has some savings these days. Hearing their conversation, Xiaohu had a great idea in his head. Grabbing Huan by the vest, the man asked what about his bank accounts. The frightened director replied that he had no money and was just an ordinary employee. Say that again. The red-haired guy said, threatening Juan with his fist. That's when the tearful CEO shouted that he was wrong and he had the money. He could give all his five million. After his words, Xiaohu carelessly threw the man on the floor. Then, pointing a finger at the director, he ordered all the money to be transferred to him right now. A few minutes had passed and Juan was already sitting at his computer, checking his bank accounts and those of his company. 
Concernedly clicking on the keys of his laptop keyboard, the director wondered if the Raiders could just forget about the whole incident, if he settled up right now. Of course not, Lin Yun said, disagreeably waving a finger in front of his face. After hugging Huang, the guy asked the man to write a promissory note. If he couldn't pay the remaining money within the agreed time, this King Yun movie television company would become the property of Yun and his friends. Hearing these words, the CEO looked dumbfoundedly at the boy, asking what he was even talking about. But Xiao Hu, who approached him, asked the man if he wanted to refuse. Not at all. Huan spoke in a trembling voice, looking at him fearfully. When the man started to write the promissory note, poking his finger on the paper, Xiao Hu demanded that he write more carefully. Tangman added that the director should also make sure that the official seal was not forgotten. Meanwhile, Lin Yun also decided to put in a word. He warned Huang that if he found out that the man was still doing these bad things, he wouldn't be able to get away with a simple monetary compensation. Saying that he understood, the headmaster continued writing the promissory note, himself not knowing why he was beginning to feel that this boy was scarier than Tu Xiaohu standing next to him. After a while, the three of them were already walking down the street. Xiaohu remarked that he didn't think he could scare King Yun's movie television company so much. This is so cool. Tang Min, on the other hand, advised his friend not to get deceived. After all, they were more afraid of what the boss did last night. Finally gathered enough, Lin Yun suddenly said, looking at the blue-haired guy. Not sure what that meant, Tan Min asked his boss what he meant. What's enough? Obviously, money to buy a villa, Yun explained, scratching the back of his head. King Si Cottage Village. After coming here with the boss, Tan Min had a hint that if the boss really wanted to buy the villa, he'd better change his mind. Walking beside him, an indignant Xiao Hu asked his friend what he was carrying. It's just buying a house, and the boss now has the money to do it. But the blue-haired guy told the bulky guy that he doesn't understand anything. This is an unusual cottage village, and the money in the boss's pocket might not be enough. A green-haired woman in a suit met the three at the entrance and told them that unfortunately the villas required proof of assets. She could not accept clients who did not meet these criteria. Lin Yun then inquired about the proof of assets. For example, you must have at least 50 million in savings, explained the girl, glancing suspiciously at the strange fellow. Taking his head in panic, Tainman shouted out that he was talking about this. The small amount of money that the boss had gotten from King Yun Film and TV Company was simply not enough. However, Yun did not leave and held out his card and asked the woman to check everything herself. The woman did not refuse and asked the boy to wait for a while. Taking the card from him, the girl turned around and went somewhere, leaving Tanmin and Xiaohu puzzled. Boss, you didn't miss here. It's 50 million, not 5 million, shouted the blue-haired guy, grabbing the surprised Yun by the shoulder. But the boy who looked at him only replied that he knew it perfectly well. Just 10 minutes afterward, several women returned to the Minheels. Looking at them perplexedly, Lin Yun's two friends can't understand what's going on here. Meanwhile, the girls came up to them and, after greeting them told them that they were now at their service. Still not catching on to what was even going on here, Tanman looked at them with a loving gaze, and the red-haired man standing next to him asked what that meant. After a while, as they walked deep into the cottage village, beautiful waitresses brought them gourmet food on a tray. Calling out to his blue-haired friend sipping a coke, Xiaohu gushed that he had grown so much. The man had never felt this way before. Tanman asked his friend not to look at him, explaining that he had never felt this way either. All of them were separately accompanied by several beautiful girls, holding umbrellas over the guys from the scorching sun, while the waitress is carrying a tray next to Yun. A green-haired woman in a suit, holding an umbrella in her hand, is busily explaining something to him. The main question that plagued Yun's two subordinates was how their boss had so much money. Meanwhile the employee had already led the lad to the first villa, showing it to the gentleman from all sides. It is one of the best configured mansions in the Cincy neighborhood, now priced at 36 million. Yun then remarked that this house was quite nice, and then decided to take it. When the green-haired girl heard this, she praised his choice and promised to prepare a contract right away. Wait a minute, the guy said, giving the woman a stern look, then walking over to Tanman standing next to him, 
He hugged him and reminded his friend that the latter had said earlier that Li Qingxu's family had connections and they could get a discount when buying a house. When the guy confirmed it, he asked him to approach that dude. Even though Yun has money, it would be better if it was possible to save money. As expected of the boss, he's always so thrifty. Than Man thought admiringly. However, after pushing the blue-haired guy away, Yun realized that only an idiot wouldn't take such an opportunity. Let's go, the next destination is King Shui Day, said the boy, hurrying his friends along. Looking at him perplexed, Tu Xiaohu asked his boss why he would go there, was it to collect someone's debts too? But Lin Yun said that the man was wrong, obviously, he needs to buy a second villa. Looking at him dumbfounded, the two subordinates didn't realize what their boss was talking about. Running up to him Tanman explained to the guy that it would take an unbelievably huge amount of money for two villas, and then asked how much the boss had in his account right now. Not that many. It's only about 70 or 80 million, Yun pronounced after looking at him. After saying that, the guy turned around and headed for the exit of the mansion, leaving his friends staring stunned at his back. A cool breeze blew, and Tangman and Xiaohu realized that this was to be expected from their great and mighty boss. Although 80 million was already too much. King Shui City Center, poor neighborhood. Kayao King's neighbor asked her if she had read the recent announcement. It was confirmed that the buildings would soon be demolished. Then the girl told me that fortunately her son is quite independent, and so he bought a three-room apartment in the city, and said that she could live with him. After saying that, taking Kayao's hands, the woman said that she felt sorry for her. After all, the girl still has both her children in school. Once the clinic is demolished, her only income will be gone. Looking at her neighbor puzzled, she immediately asked what she would do in such a case. I have arms and legs, and as long as I work hard, I can survive. Kayao King explained, looking at her. Looking at her with envy, the neighbor cannot understand how this woman has the strength to raise two children alone. The neighbor herself does not even have a home now, and she does not know how much suffering she will have to endure. At that moment, a yellow Maserati pulled into the poor neighborhood. As the vehicle approached the clinic, it came to an abrupt stop. Standing nearby, Kayao King and her neighbor looked at the vehicle puzzled. Three people immediately came out of there. Hey, mom, Lin Yun said, closing the car and heading towards the girls outside the clinic. Meanwhile, looking at him, the neighbor can't understand why this guy is back. He's not going to cause trouble again, is he? When Kayao approached her son, she asked him why he didn't tell her in advance that he was going home. The boy replied that he just wanted to prepare a surprise. Mom, I remember that you know how to drive. So I brought you this Maserati. Lin Yun explained pointing to the yellow car behind him. Seeing this expensive vehicle, the neighbor looked at it admiringly. A Maserati. I think she saw one on a TV program. This car is worth several million. Okay, thank you. Now I'll be more comfortable if I want to go somewhere. Is this your surprise? The pink-haired woman inquired, looking at her son. But Yun replied to his mom that that wasn't all. Snapping his fingers. He called Tanman over to him and explained that he had recently bought villas by King Shui Bay and King Si Cottage Village. Handing his mother two keys on a tray, the boy asked her to choose the mansion she would like to live in. Upon seeing the two keys, the neighbor cried out in surprise, asking how this was possible. Yun in turn said it was a sales contract and suggested the girl check it out if she doubted. The woman, however, awkwardly declined. Then I'll take the one by King Shui Bay. It's quiet and peaceful there, Kaya King said, taking one of the keys in her hand. Meanwhile, walking over to his blue-haired friend, Xiaohu asked him why the boss's mom wasn't surprised at all when she heard the luxury cars and villas. There's a woman standing there, dumbfounded, isn't that how normal people are supposed to react? However, after hugging his short-sighted partner, Tang Ming pointed out that Aunt King's knowledge and vision was not comparable to that of ordinary people. As she approached the front door of the clinic, the mother asked her son to come in for a moment. She had something to tell him. Ling Yun didn't refuse her. Then, looking at his mother, the boy wondered if she had finally realized that there was something wrong with him. When her son sat down next to her workstation, the woman told him that whatever he was doing outside, she would not interfere with it. But if a boy is serious about making money, 
he still needs to have a constant source of income, that way, he won't have to worry about anything, and he will always be in control, that's what you'd expect from mom, in retrospect, Yoon didn't even think about it himself, after thinking it over, the boy told his mother that he was actually planning to open a clinic in the center of town, that way, as long as there were patients, he could earn money, the girl supported his idea, but then reminded her son that he should not forget about his studies, and the clinic should be supervised by a professional nurse, after these words, she asked if the boy had found a suitable person, don't worry mom, I've already found it, Ling Yun replied to her, raising his hand, at this time, leaning against the wall of the city hospital, Yao Zhu is still waiting for Yun's call, what boss, you're going to open a clinic, Tanman shouted out in surprise after hearing this from his friend, looking at him puzzled, Yun confirmed it, and asked what the problem was, in turn, Tanman remembered how the boss was able to cure even brother King Chu's heart disease, with his medical skills, he would definitely make a profit, however, the blue-haired guy still doubts the idea, after all, Yoon doesn't have a license to provide medical services, a license to provide medical services, in fact, Lin Yun doesn't even know what it is, Tanman, on the other hand, kindly explained that it was a certificate without which it was illegal to open a clinic, after listening to him, Yun remarked that it was too troublesome, in that case, if Ning's grandfather made arrangements, would he be able to get this license for the guy? Rubbing his hands together, Tanman confirmed this hunch. After all, this is the number one miracle doctor in China. It would be easy for him to do something like this. Then the boss suggested that we split up. He asked the blue-haired guy to take Yao Zhu. While Yun decided to go back to the school and find Xu Mining, Tanman agreed to run the errand, but then he wondered who this Yao Zhu was. Meanwhile, Xiao Hu entered the conversation, asking the boss what about him, and you go back to practicing and train hard, only in this way will you become stronger, Lin Yun said, placing a hand on the man's shoulder, yes, boss, Tu Xiao Hu shrieked, saluting, a few hours later, King Shui city center, holding the phone in his hand, Tanman can't understand when it was that the boss had time to meet the nurse, and why the guy himself knows nothing about it, it has to be an experienced aunt or grandmother who can help the boss, right? Ah, there she is. The blue-haired guy muttered as he saw Yao Zhu in front of him. But when he noticed the pretty nurse in front of him, his jaw literally dropped in surprise. Good afternoon. Are you Yao Zhu? Greeted the girl with a blue-haired guy, walking up to her. When she surprisingly asked who he was, Tanman replied that he was Lin Yun's best bro. Then, looking around, Yao Zhu wondered if Yun himself was not coming. Tangman explained that the boss had some urgent business to attend to, so he asked his best friend to come and pick up his girlfriend. Is that so? muttered the nurse, turning around to the boy in surprise. Then let's go quickly. I want to see Ling Yun as soon as possible, she added coldly, driving Tanman into a stupor. Bursting into tears, the blue-haired boy realized how good the boss was at communicating with the opposite gender. Fortunately, there's only room in Tanman's heart for Linju. Some more time passed. The blue-haired guy brought Yao Zhu to the school and explained that the boss had asked them to wait for him here. Noon. King Shui Middle School. At that moment, the nurse spotted the person ahead who she had been waiting for all this time. Hugging Yun's arm, Ninga gave him a condition to go out with her first or else he might forget about his request. Smiling awkwardly, the guy asked the girl where she wanted to go. At the same second, the boy noticed Yao Zhu standing nearby. He was greatly relieved that the nurse had not refused him the honor of appearing here. But in that instant, a new storm began to brew. Nine can't understand why there is another girl here. The nurse, on the other hand, looks at the two trying to figure out their relationship with each other. Pet the cat! Uh, 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 uh.